Good morning, everybody. My name is Cameron, and I'm playing Genshin Impact with my buddy Final Rhapsody. Good morning, Matt. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Cameron? I'm doing rather wonderfully. I mean, things could absolutely be better if I had perhaps more things to do, but I'm trying to keep myself busy with things at the, as best as I possibly can. So 1.6 is out in Genshin Impact. And there's apparently a quite a few new things that I am just not aware of, including an archipelago. Yep, entirely new area. Um, that's only around until the end of the update. Oh, so it's it's only here for a little while. Forty days. Forty days. Do you know when the last day of that is supposed to be? Um, because I think I saw something time. somewhere, but. So it's not that archipelago. I gotta search for this archipelago. Do you know like where on the map that is? So <clears throat> when you go to the map, there should be a spot that says uh Tevat. Yeah. Right in the bottom right corner. Bottom right down there. Yeah. Alright. Um click on that. Specifically Tevat. Oh. I don't yeah, see. It should, have a, it should pull up um other maps. Or uh, it might actually say Starfell Valley or wherever you are at the moment. But okay, so is it around? Important. Is it around the Starfell Valley? I'm currently in Leewet right now, actually. Okay, so in the bottom right of the screen, there's going to be something. It's going to say Leeway, Exploration Progress, whatever percent. And yes, I see that. Chemo gems are. Yeah. Click on that. Does Click that on. Anything for you? Uh. I see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I see that now. Hold on. A uh, a graphics update just popped up on my screen. Okay. I see Tivat current, and all I can do is cancel it. Okay, so you haven't finished the uh, oh. necessary um, quests to get the golden arc. Okay, so I gotta. Okay, yeah. I gotta figure so what I that is then. Well, you should. It should be in your uh, journal. So sit J. J, -j, 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 -j journal, adventure handbook. Is that not the adventure handbook? It's not the adventure handbook. Not the adventure handbook? Is that in the events? You can also thing? get it by uh, the little banner in the left corner of your screen. Ooh. I'm trying to look for something called journal. Would it be under. I don't know. Would it be the quest journal, right? Uh, Maybe? Yes. Okay. The quest journal. So, which one might this be? Some mysterious islands, journey to unknown. Oh, that yep, one. That's, it. that's probably it. Okay, I'll just navigate over there. Perfect. That seems to be not very close by, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna warp over there. I'm gonna go to where I need to go. By the way, good morning to you, Meatball Girl. I see you over in chat. And the consumption is real. I gotta find my way to Mondstadt. There we go. I'll just teleport on top of this building over here. Excuse me. A lot of teleport waypoints are just in weird places. I know, right? I didn't even realize that one teleport waypoint was up on top of, like, the Mondstadtian, like, equivalent of skyscrapers. Until yeah. I was just climbing around. Like, I think one of the first things I did in this game was just fly around like a maniac because I was like, Oh my god, I, did I can't do this in other games. <laughs> I have to do yeah. it now. <laughs> Consumption. Matt, do you have something to drink this morning? I have water. Water is perfect. I've got me some, uh, got me some tea. Nice. Black what tea. Kind? Just some black tea. It's got some the caffeine that I need. I've been feeling, like, very, very tired in the morning this past week. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying not to just res revort, uh, resort to coffee. Because mm -hmm. coffee, can, sometimes I crash with coffee. And it can be a little unpleasant. Uh -huh. But tea, I'm usually very, very good with. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello there, Klee. What's up, Klee? I wonder if Klee has gotten over her uh, PTSD of blowing up the Abyss Mage. Or, or apparently, Matt, you were telling me before, apparently uh, Kea messes with the kids in Mondstadt, and Klee kind of fell for it. Yeah, so Klee, um, Kaya told Klee that at night there were, um, evil monsters who look like the Knights of Favonius who would go around terrorizing people. Oh my god. So he was just messing with her, but 
Clee took him seriously, it broke out at night, and started bombing all the nights. Oh my god! <laughs> That's what you and get, Kaya. She, she, she wrote a picture book of it. <laughs> find it. Is the picture book something that we can you can like see in game? Um, it's part of a. Uh, it was part of an official. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> part of the official lore of the land. Yeah. Got that right. Pyromaniac Lolly with a lack of alignment awareness. I was I was saying I think I think Clea is definitely chaotic neutral. Or perhaps perhaps chaotic good, but just not just just ignorant enough to make to to, to warrant that chaoticness. Cause I gotta wonder, like she's a kid. It's true. Cause I gotta wonder, in terms of alignment, is it necessarily your actions that determine whether you're good or evil is or is it your intent? Cause like what if you do something absolutely terrible but have no idea that it's wrong? I think it's generally intense. Okay. So the uh, chaotic good sounds about right. That feels good. She's also good friends with Fiona. But Fiona knows better than to bring her around the bar. Oh my god, I loved... I, the last time I played Genshin, I was able to do like the... Uh, with a companion quest or something like that for, for Diona, because I grabbed her during the last event. I think what I had done was I went on just to play a little bit, and I noticed that if I had gotten a certain number of whatever points it was for the event, that I could get Diona, the little bartending character. And I was like, I am playing all night so I can snag this character. I'm very happy that I was able to. <laughs> She's great. very fun and one of the best supports out there. No kidding. Because she just does so much. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that little cat bartender. You gotta love that. Mm -hmm. The story, uh, the, like, the, the quest itself was kind of like trying to find like the ingredients for a special drink or whatever and apparently her dad's like a bit of an alcoholic so no he's very <laughs> much an alcoholic everyone's got like, their he almost got stories. him killed when he was wasted in a storm <laughs> straight up let's go out hunting and have a couple of drinks together wait where'd my friend go we're all only a little drunk he on the other hand very very drunk Mm -hmm. Bad decisions. Don't go hunting while drunk. Especially if you're using firearms or like a bow and arrow, I guess. You wouldn't want to shoot your friend. I don't know. It suddenly appeared on my I wouldn't want to shoot my friend. That'd be unfortunate. What are you working on right now? Uh, I'm just running around doing commissions. Nice, nice. It took me so long to realize that the, like, the commission quests like when you do those every day not only do you get like your increase in uh, uh adventure rank experience but you can also like unlock those like companion quests and um other story quests as well which i didn't realize for a while i'm enlightened now though Clee believes in me oh boy <laughs> What's that? So, drink more vodka? Got it? <laughs> no, don't drink more vodka while, uh, while hunting. Unless, unless they, like, play hunting, I guess. Drink vodka while playing Monster Hunter. That might be a fun time. Or Call oh, of Duty, I, I guess. You the, uh, the new board game. <gasps> you got a new board game? Oh, we yep. got... It's called Shadows in the Forest. Ooh! That sounds much more intimidating than the new board game Anna and I grabbed the other day. That was the Scooby-Doo one, right? That was the Scooby-Doo one. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Much less scary. It's actually not a scary game. It's very cute. Um, the was way it Shadows it works, of the... To play it in the dark. Shadows okay. Shadows in the forest. Shadows in the forest. The way it works is you have to play it completely in the dark. Oh. Um... Each player picks a game piece called a Shadowling mm -hmm. and hides them somewhere on the board. Oh. Um, then another player plays as the Seeker, and they get a lantern that like actually lights up. It must be so a tiny can, lantern, like, I guess. Yeah. Or else it would light up the whole board, I suppose. Yeah. But um, 
the goal is for the seeker to get all the shadow things into the light mm -hmm. and or for the shadowlings to all end up in the same place and not get caught by the seeker that turn. oh okay and whoever completes that wins interesting that's such a cool concept that it's a game that you're supposed to play in the dark so you have to use like i guess your hands to be able to feel things around Nope, you, um, the dice are glow in the dark. <gasps> oh. And the shadows. Yeah. The dice are glow in the dark. Um, again, the lantern piece actually, like, emits light. That's how you, like, tell if you catch someone, if you can see them. Okay. So this isn't, like, then, what, uh, what I originally imagined was, like, like, the seeker is a person, like, with a flashlight, and, like, the shadow things are, like, placed around but i guess it's like it's a tiny little piece that has a little bit of light coming out of it and so it's like yep. only local to where it is on the board at any particular time mm -hmm. cool shadows of the forest it's very cool i bought it next time i visit you guys i'll bring it up oh please that'd be awesome we need to have like another uh game night get together where everybody's free to come on up and just hang around yeah it's actually been quite nice like we've with everything kind of everyone getting back stuff and being able to talk a bit more with everybody back at home we've been have, able to have like people come up and play like board games and stuff we had a uh, clan pepper up the one time our friends jess and jesse come up every once in a while to play some board games which is always a pleasant time you haven't graced our present yet though matt but i'm sure you'll be I up eventually not. i know yeah, for sure time. you'll be up eventually got to play more games do we have all these board games that we just have to play and many of them have not been touched in so long also it's cool to see like what everybody else has to bring as well like you've got your you've got the game that you just mentioned the shadows of the forest or and i'm sure you've got uh, yeah. other ones that you might want to bring up as well I have a stack. has pepper played any of the uh games that she has with you like unturned or um istanbul uh. We played, um, Grace of the Galaxy. Ooh. Um, well, I think Grace of the Galaxy was the big one. These are only two of us at the time. Mm -hmm. What's that one about? Um, it's like a, uh, it's weird. It's very hmm. weird. Okay. It's kind of like Awkward a games. card game. Empire building. I, know. I don't know how to describe it. Okay. I haven't played anything similar to it. And what was that one? Race to the Stars? Generally speaking, uh, Race to the Galaxy. Race to the Galaxy. Oh, okay, okay. If it's not on a map, it doesn't Race exist. to the Galaxy. Map doesn't show any, so that shadows it does seem very fun, though. Nice. It's giving me, like, um... It's giving me vibes of... The Star Realms card game, which was pretty cool. Star Realms, like the the one where you have the the deck of all the different ships and whatnot, and you can get the different colonies to fight your opponent. Had you ever played that one with you? I don't think so. Oh, that, that was does a sound similar to uh to it. I definitely I I love that game so much. That's one of the ones that I could just play round after round after round of because like I, I don't know. I kind of I've been a little more interested in deck building games like that like like star realms or tanto kuare um technically yeah. magic is a deck building game you just build your deck before the game starts i tried to get all into magic a bit more recently but uh i really haven't and anna's doesn't play magic so i have no one to play with it right now they sell um pre-release packs at uh comic fusion Ooh. If you want, you can ask me and Anna to pick one up for you. Could be nice. Could be nice. I know, like, the thing for Magic that always did it for me was the booster packs, because I've always been a fan of cracking open a pack and seeing what it is that I got. Mm -hmm. Like, that roll of the dice, just, it, it amuses me. And the same thing was uh, when I was a lot younger with Pokemon cards as well, or Yu-Gi-Oh yep. cards, because I always thought, like, like the, the moment you get something good, you feel, like, real good about it. That's, that's, that's why I play Genshin a lot. I know, I, I feel the same way with Genshin as well. Because you never know when you might get like a really good character. Every time I get it, even if I don't, even if it's a character that I already have, like, I, I just like getting 
characters because they yeah, feel like so much rarer than the items. Plus the uh, constellations can be pretty good. They can, yeah. I think... I don't remember which character I have like two constellations of. I think it's Barbara that I have like two constellations on so far and it makes her healing ability like wonderful. Barbara's really good. Yeah. Wonderful support character. Yeah. She's one of the straight up best healers. Yeah, nice. I think the only one who beats her is, Keek, is uh, Chi Chi. And I think that's okay. only because she gets a uh, healing effectiveness as her bonus stat. Oh, okay. Does the effectiveness, like, affect the quantity of healing done? Like, more HP healed or, like, the percentage? Or how yeah, often? Yeah, more HP healed. Ah, okay, okay. Because Kiki is the uh, number one healer. Okay. Chi is number one healer. Just in, like, raw numbers. But what, the um... downside to that is, uh... She's less of like a. She's less good at everything else. Okay, so it's she's like strictly versatile. healing. Okay. Barbara's got yeah, some. Yeah, she has. It scales off attacks, so she's not like awful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But she's just like so focused on it for her support. What element is she? Cryo. Ah, okay. <laughs> I like having Barbara on the good. team. I don't have a lot of Hydro. I have the Hydro Witch, though. I don't remember what her name is, though. Mona? Yes, I believe so. Mona's fun. Uh, she's the one they use for faking numbers. Faking numbers? So, like, um, have you ever seen any of the, like, uh, oh my god, like, 200,000 damage videos? No, uh -huh. I haven't. <laughs> Is that a okay. thing? So, <clears throat> yes. So people <laughs> post these videos of them doing, like, ridiculous amounts of damage. Oh my god. And it looks like very much like, you know, oh, this character is so good that you should like use my build, watch my videos. Okay. It's like okay. A, uh, so it's like a huge promotion thing for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but the catch is that they're not um they're kind of tricking you. Oh. So what they do is they use um Well, this only works for like D Luke and Child and the other elemental infusion characters. Okay. What they'll do is they'll take Sucrose, Mona, um, and Bennett. Mm -hmm. um, they will pop Bennett's ult, which, is, which gives you extra attack. Okay. Um, they'll use Mona's ult, which increases damage. Mm -hmm. Um, especially from elemental reactions, and then they'll use Sucrose's ult, which gives bonuses to any any element that's already yeah. been in it. Um, A lover swirl ability, and then yeah, and then what they'll do is um, they'll build the characters very specifically to have um, almost no crit rate, but as much crit damage as possible. So then they'll go into they'll go into a domain or whatever. They'll pop all of that and they'll just start hitting things, recording everything, until it? they get to a uh, until they get like one of those insane crits, mm -hmm. and then they'll just like uh, flip that and right, say this right. is like how it always works. Oh, okay, so it's like it's a right. single it's a single chance of a critical attack. But they're kind of advertising it as if like, oh, well, if you have this particular convocation with my build, then you can get this damage all the time. Yeah. How dastardly. I mean, it's not technically false. It's just not the full truth there. Yeah. Unfortunate. What's like, what do you know of what the like the critical hit rate becomes at that point? Like, I, I know there are items that you can increase your critical hit rate. 5%? Okay. It's usually around 5%. I think the best crit rate you're supposed to do is uh, 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. So like for every point of crit rate you have, you're supposed to do like 3 points of crit damage. Mm -hmm. But that's like, that's never going to come up in game. That's just like super metagamey. Yeah. Like unless you're trying to get like record or something. You're not going to need to worry about it. Right, right. 
it'd be like one in some obscene number to get something that high with like the maximum chain modification to the crit damage it's like with them you're looking at like one to like 50 or something mm -hmm. Talk about mysterious and creepy. pretty incredible and you said they use this what was it a, a bennett and uh sucrose and mona bennett sucrose and mona Okay. This is especially good when you see them using, like, doing it with Child or, mm -hmm. uh, or Dilu. And you said they were a type of character that uses something in Fusion? Elemental Infusion? Yeah, so a couple of that? characters will have, um, so, what, do you have, um, let me look at the characters that do it. I don't have Dilu or Child, so. Yeah, no. Those are those are just like the biggest. Two. Those are the most recognizable two that have it. Oh, okay, okay. Like, how that do it? Um. So, Xiao, Hu Tao, um, Child, um, Catching, Ilu. I may have Catching. Huh? Oh, I I definitely have Chong Yun. Chong Yun and Catching. Chang I think I have Catching. Ooh, Catching's really fun. I love her. Um, I haven't tried her out yet, though. I'm like, I get so attached to my parties. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to change it out. I'm also like, I don't know. I'm also afraid to go out with like a character that I'm just testing out that maybe isn't up to level yet. But like, I could just test them out, like switching out one character and then take my other characters to kind of fill in the gaps for if I'm going out and fighting like hill trolls or something yeah because I'm not sure um, if like once you increase your world rank if there's an area you can go to just to just to fight the low level enemies again for testing purposes what I normally do is uh, I just go into domains oh right because you can specify what level you go into the domain at okay yeah that's a good point um, and I, I think Beto might have an infusion. <gasps> really? But basically, all the infusions yeah. are is just instead of the weapon attacks dealing normal damage, they deal elemental oh, damage. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah. And that's like the base attack. Or... Yep. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, because I think... There are other characters... I think, I think Chong Yun, I've noticed, where if... I think if you use one of the abilities... Then the attacks become infused, or perhaps I'm thinking of something different. Or is that, yeah, that what it is? Infused with cryo. Okay, okay. That becomes very useful. Especially with Barbara, who's got Hydro, which is the only... I think she's oh, yeah. the only Hydro character that I use a lot. And mostly just... Yeah. She, she does her elemental... I, I gotta become familiar with the actual terminology, because like there's the... There's the big elemental attack, which may be elemental mastery or burst. elemental burst. Okay. But then I see some items that increase elemental mastery, and I don't know exactly what that means. So elemental mastery is something you're going to want a lot of on sucrose. Mm -hmm. It basically means that any, like, elemental reactions you do... Okay, um, will be, like, increased. Vaporize. Yes. It's like vaporize, um... Melt. Uh huh. Uh, electro charge. Super conduct will all deal more damage. Crystallized mm -hmm. shields will be stronger. Ooh. Swirl will deal more damage. I cannot allow you to join and, uh, into a potentially we'll dangerous place. Oh, and frozen will last longer. Oh, okay. So that's what elemental mastery does. Okay. Yep. Is there like a particular stat that? Because I've seen other things that mention like elemental. XYZ, and the difference between those was something that was never clear to me. But I think I'm guessing one of them maybe like increases the elemental burst, like faster. I guess. That's energy recharge. Energy recharge. Okay. Yeah. So that that's also something you should put on Sucrose. Right. Right. Because her burst is amazing. It's incredible. It's one of my favorite things about Sucrose. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Thank you for giving me that information. No problem. I was totally unaware of that. It's just that, like, it's a point where I never bring myself to the point where I'm like, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to look it up. Because only in the moment am I like, oh, I don't really know what that is. And then I forget about it until it comes up again. In which case, I forget the first time that I forgot about it. 
master genius. You all know she's a I've been kind of letting me oh, use also, it. Did you see they are? Did you see they add in skins? Yes, they've added like different uh, outfits for your characters now. Like yep. Jean and Barbara get their, they're like, I suppose it's the swimsuit outfit. It's the beach outfit, or summer yeah. outfit rather. Um, everyone's upset about jeans though. Oh, oh really? Yes. <laughs> I think it because looked quite tasteful. Apparently, the um, shorts are less defined than in oh. a normal outfit. Oh well, excuse the artists. I'm just glad, like, because I got I gotta be honest. For games like, for example, Soul Worker, the skins that you get on the characters are sometimes a little, little, uh, little pandery. I think, or a little fan servicey. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid no, almost if if skins ever came to Genshin that I might get something like that. But I like, but I like to see that that's not the case. I mean, some of our characters are quite, quite clearly children. So that might be a little, uh, might be pushing over some boundaries a little bit. Barbara's actually isn't that bad. It like looks bad, but when she sees a 3D model, you're like, oh, okay, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, they, they look, they look tasteful. They look very, uh, I, I suppose, I suppose humble would be the way to put it. No, I don't know. They look more expressive. Like, I don't exactly know from like a fashionable or, uh, like from a fashionable standpoint, how much you can really portray about the character's aesthetic through like a bikini. But like with something a little more, it, it's it, there's more space to be able to represent the character, I think. Yeah. Because you've got more fabric there, you can do more frills with it. If I recall, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, they're, they're a lot more expressive outfits. Yeah. Which I personally like. Actually, what's your team look like? So my team, my main team is Noel, Beto, Zhangling, and Sucrose. Uh, but I have a, I have a secondary team as well, which I'll describe in a moment. I need to go to the, I need to wait a little bit in the square for this, for this mission thing. So I gotta wait yes. a little bit. But the other one I think also uses, the other one in, in place of Sucrose, uh, uses Venti, I think. Because mm -hmm. I, I believe Venti is Venti also is... pretty awesome. Uh, it seems though the the animo characters have like got a great advantage because of their like elemental yeah, okay. abilities. So like the there. animo and geo characters mm -hmm. are like hands down the most fun to play. Oh for sure. Because none of them are just like the straight up oh just like hit this. All of hit them this are, like, and element this, happen. Like, super special mechanic I have. Um, you have to play me in like this specific way. Mm -hmm. um, That's the and, voice like, of I somehow man. like change the rules of the game mm -hmm. to be more unique. It adds or like a make, whole like, other dimension. Play... Yes, it's like Zhang Li. It's like oh, suddenly you don't want to be like just running around dealing damage. You want to be like oh, hey, I'm gonna leave like all these geo constructs. Ooh. around the place and i have to like maneuver enemies in between them to get the most damage mm -hmm. and that's, that's cool. like that's super fun um zhao is actually very simple but he's super oh, yeah. enjoyable um he's also animal right is that... yes nice his thing is like oh okay i do punching attacks mm -hmm. And I can like set myself up yes, so I can jump higher and stuff, which is really useful when you're exploring, by the way. Nice. I'm so sad that I wasn't able to get Zhao when he was around, but then again, I really wasn't pulling much during that point in time. I just wanted to get that, get the mission out of the way, the event. So I was at least able to get to see the story of like the Archon. I'm trying to think about when he's coming back. I look forward to when like those event characters wind up gracing our presence again. Coming yeah, back to so give we us another chance. Have, uh, we have, um, In exchange, I will be we have the first four characters they released. Mm -hmm. Have as all had our rerun banners. I have entrusted them to Kaya. Nice. Work has been busy and I should um, leave, but and I it looks like 
Uh, and we just got uh, Kui with the last of four to get a rerun. Right. And it looks like Alpedo is going to get a uh, rerun banner. Perfect. I've been wanting to get a piece of Alpedo. Just because I see the interplay between, like, Sucrose and Master Alpedo. And I'm like, I want... I want the I want that character. I want to I want to see that further. Yeah, Albedo is really cool. Um, Plus, like, isn't that one of the characters that has like the elevator abilities? Yep. I love that. I, I just I want a character with an elevator ability. That amuses me so much. Nantita. Oh well, I mean, you can see that. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and to address everybody who's out there in chat, I can see you. I can see you. I have not forgotten about you. Hello to you, Arp, out there. Meepro Girl made a comment before about playing Star Realms with her. I will not forget about that. I will bring Star Realms the next time we hang out. And you're right, I think the, the expression of the character's kind of aesthetic, depending on the type of bikini, how much fabric is there to work with, might make things a little... Might, might be able to give you a like a larger canvas. I think to think of it as a canvas. I haven't forgotten about chat. I absolutely, I absolutely promise that. I just want to, want to make sure Matt gets his time of day. I haven't been able to speak to Matt in a while, so I'm, I want to make sure everybody gets with the gift. <laughs> oh boy, I've got another spam caller. It's probably because I'm calling about my warranty again. Have you oh, made yeah. a lot of calls I like that, one. by the way? Yeah. I have been getting a Just ton of them. this year, too. I, like, never got any before this year. Yeah. I started thinking that... Uh, I started thinking that perhaps because I started answering the calls, that that's why they're calling me more. But, like, my Google phone, I can just click the screen call button, and I don't have to worry about it, and then I can just block it. And like, I, don't get me wrong. Like, I will, I will absolutely play that game. I will most definitely pick up your call, screen it, and block you, no matter how many times you call me, because that takes so little effort to do. Mm -hmm. I remember that one year at a uh, Glenn's party where we had to, uh, where you just um, led one of the chatbots. Oh my god, Cherry. On Skype. The Skype yeah. chatbot, Cherry something or other. I still have, I, I have that chat log somewhere. I remember I found it, I think, a couple months ago. And I was like, ha I remember this happening. Those those were always those were always fun. I've always been, those were good I always love kind of leading them on. Because like, I mean, I've had other calls in the past where it's not just, you know, like we called a call to contact you about your car's extended warranty. It's more like, um... Like, there's currently a case with your credit card, and you're a thing of fraud, so we're gonna contact you, we're gonna patch you into the local police station. Um, oh, yeah. And, like, and I, I, I did that one time, and I, I was like, so, what, what's your badge number? And they were not able to answer those questions very well. And I'm like, well, can you give me at least what location your precinct is at? Because I'd really like to know, and weren't able to answer those questions anyway. Or um, one time my it's my internet provider called me Comcast and I don't I, I, I can't I don't I don't know why I don't just I don't trust phone calls anymore but they were asking me about my phone plan and whether I'd want to upgrade to a phone plan with that company and I was like this is the fourth time you've called me about this can you please remove me from your list and they're like okay we just need you to confirm what your phone number is. And I'm like, you just called the phone number. You can just take that off of your list. I'm like, no, 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 but you need to tell us what the phone number is so we can take it off. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I, you said the call is being monitored or recording, and I have no idea that you are who you say you are. So I'm not going to give you my name. I'm not going to give you my number. And you could just, you, you do whatever you do. And they kept on pushing with that. It was like a like a quality assurance purpose. And I just I just hung up the phone at that point. But uh, I'm, I'm, hap I'm happily with my Verizon for my phone plan. For now, I learned from my roommate to just make them as uncomfortable as possible. Yes, that works. Um, one time he got a message from like I don't remember what it was, and uh, he just picks up the phone and he just they they like starting the scam thing, mm -hmm. and he just starts like screaming <laughs> off of his lungs. I've done about that before. Where the hell his five pepperoni pizzas are? <laughs> And whenever they tried to, like, talk to him or anything, 
he'd just like keep yelling at them. Oh my god. That is pepperoni pizzas. <laughs> they make the people on the other end yeah, be like, I just I just called a crazy one. I don't I, I, I don't know if I should continue with this. <laughs> uh and another time one of his favorite lines to pick up was uh John's crematorium, you kill him, we grill him. You kill him, we grill him. No, I feel like you've definitely told us that story before. That is not a new sound to me. That phrase is not new to me. Yeah, that was nice. He was, he was a funny roommate. Nice, nice. Um, we were half right about him being dead. Wonderful. Half right. Bye. Uh, he's dating a non-binary person. Ah, all right, all right. So nice. Pride Month is in full bloom. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Sarah was going to an open mic today. Really? At, uh, somewhere. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ooh. I hope she does well there. This is as far. I don't know if she's I actually did. like, if she's just like going to listen or if she's actually talking. It'd be cool either way. I wish I knew about mm -hmm. that. I, I, it's probably in the area, I guess, but. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have been able to come up there. I'm still in Philly right now. But that's cool. Yeah. By the way, to address ARP in chat, I am liking 1.6 so far. I am so far just kind of going through the, the missions as of right now to be able to kind of uh, get to the archipelago. I want to get to the archipelago. That's, that's my goal for now. And I'm letting all the cutscenes go and do their thing and whatnot. But I've heard there are wonderful updates for, you got some new character. Uh, there's more to the housing, which I have yet to explore yet. I will eventually figure out housing. I just need to get to that point. I, I gotta do some, I gotta do some research to get myself up to speed on where everything happens. I know the housing is in the, the teapot. In the, the serendipa, whatever, teapot or something like that. Seren teapot. That make the, that's very interesting too. I, there's a book that I read about tea called serendipit tea. And then I saw seren serenity and i was like i'm getting these two things in my head a little mixed up <laughs> and you're right meatball canvas of the swimsuit tassels of extra fabric draping from the top or bottoms you can have like a really decorative one extravagant one piece as well one that connects to two different pieces together of course you would have the different like, like colors as well if there are patterns on there that i think my thought is a little more the bigger the canvas, the more you have to work with. However, like, I suppose, depending on the designer of the... Whatever outfit that you are wearing, or the character themselves, you could do something really, really cool with it. So, I would think, though, too, you might have a little less playroom with, like, an anthropomorphic character, just because we've seen that bipedal nature so often, versus, like, I've never actually seen, aside from, like, I guess, Pokemon, a game where, like, there's a gotcha, but all the characters are, like, just different types of creatures. So there's so much... I guess there's completely different in this whole analogy of canvases to work with. To portray, like, what kind yeah. of character you are working with. Like, I don't exactly know how much color theory you get into with, for example, your Pokemon, aside from, like, what type they are. They've actually done a good job with the, uh... Non-human characters we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Like with the newer ones? Making them look like... Um... Yanfei was more like traditional, kind of like anime style. Right, right. Um... But like, Diona. Like, her mm. design is really cool because you don't just have like, oh, the cat ears and the hair are the same color. Right, like right. Crazy about. Yeah. Also, I just... Um, that was interesting. For a hot moment, it looked like... Oh, never mind. I couldn't tell if that's Klee's ears or a part of her hair that go out. They almost look like elf ears. They are elf ears. They are actually elf ears. I thought I noticed yeah. that. Klee is it not was... human. Or whatever is uh, whoa, human. Okay. That. Right, right, right. That's a good point. Oh, so that's what you meant. So, I guess Yanfei isn't that human either and i guess diona obviously isn't because um yeah. oh whatever they uh whatever they called her it wasn't cat girl obviously it was it was something different they had like cut a name cutscene cut yeah 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 that was always cool 
Please proceed um, with utmost let me think. caution. So, um, well, for some reason, <laughs> the uh, the half adept eye all have like animal Ooh. features. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But the one adept eye we can actually play. Well, the two adept eye we can actually play as don't. And I guess one is Zhao, right? <clears throat> and Zhao then... and uh, Zhang Li are the two adept. Wait, you finished the story, like. How far are you in the story? I didn't get that far, but I had a really good I had a really good feeling. So Were you in uh Leeway? I was, yeah. So Did I don't, you finish like the uh I don't think they the actually uh I think it was just kinda what we did was kind of manipulate the economy with the core lapis and whatnot and kind of talk with Zhang Li about um it was right after I met all of the um like the animal adepti. Yeah. Um, let's see. I did that, and I got to the end of like that mission or whatever. But like, it was never confirmed that uh, Zhang Li was like an adept eye or something like that. But I had a really, really good feeling that he was. It struck yeah. me as that because so, because uh, before Li that, and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Zhang Li and Zhao are the only two adept eye you can play as. Okay. Um, and they have completely human features. I think even like Zhao's ears aren't even showing it. Um, oh, you can't tell because of his hair. Oh no, they're uh, yeah, they're round. Um, so those are the two adepts that you can play as. They have no like animal features. Ah. Uh -huh. But then the two um half adept die, Yanfei and Ganyu, both have uh horns. Ah, uh, okay. By I'm the way, I'm pretty sure that Yanfei daughter when she first came out i was oh, nice. very upset i wasn't right <laughs> i have a quick question by the way i just found the wave rider and i don't know how to get out of it uh hold space uh, wait you're playing on pc right yeah i'm actually on controller and apparently you you get you gave oh, me the right idea it's the hold the button. a button yep yeah thank you for that I was just sitting around for a moment. I found the, I found the little. Uh, there's a little buoy with hillichurls on top of it. And now I guess I need to go find the light up devices to be able to get to the archipelago. Yes. Nice. And there's one more quest before you get the uh, full experience. Awesome. I actually got a little. I was almost a little afraid that I might miss things because when, when I was looking at yeah, what I had missed so far. Left. Yeah, I was looking at what I missed so far and. I think the side I was looking at must have been wrong, but they were saying like, oh yeah, watch out, part of the event ends on like, oh, two weeks ago, part of it ends a week ago, and one of it ends at the end of this week, and then the next one was like, and then the next one ends in like a month from now, and I was very, very confused. Well, yeah. 38 days left, got some time. That's mm -hmm. good, that's good. And they were saying, uh, I think somebody was predicting that Although the banner, I guess right now, is kind of featuring like Klee and the other characters with the summer outfits. The newer character from, I think the, the, the region was, uh, the first one from Inazuma, I think was the Kazuha. region. Yeah. Kazuha, yeah. That they might have a, they, I think they're planning on having a banner for them as well. Yep. So what are the regions the that we know of on, uh... so far? Uh, is it like, okay. I know, I know. Um, so we know. We know all uh, seven of them. Okay. Um, I'm gonna see if I can remember all the names. So Leeway, Monstad, Leeway is uh Monstad is the Anemo. Leeway the is the Geo. The Fatui come um, from a place whose name escapes Shnaya. me right now. Shnisnaya. They're Cryo. Yep. Um. Then the Fatui are from Shnisnaya. Uh, then Fontaine is the Hydra one. It's supposed to be based on, like, France. Uh-huh. Um, it's very, like, educated kind of thing. Like, upper class. Upper class Fontaine. Uh, I know that... A la France. When they showed us the little, like, preview, it had a whole, like, opera theme going for it. Ooh. Um... Then we had... Um, so I think it was... Which okay. Is the, that's uh, that's the Dendro Nation. That's the one we're going to next after uh, Inazuma. Ooh. Um. And then I think the Pyro one is Mat Matin. 
So is there um, like, there's a nation for each element and then I guess one that, because if there's, I think there's, is there six elements or are there seven? Seven. Oh, there are actually seven. There's one for each element and then there's Conria. Oh, I guess is the kind of the neutral one or? Well, Conria was supposedly destroyed um, 500 years ago. Oh, okay. But it was on the, uh, what do you call it? Like a supercontinent uh, at the time, maybe? So what they what they did is they released a little, like, uh, they released a little video that was, like, teaser. Mm-hmm. They had, like, narration over, like, what everything was and all that. Back in the days. Like, some historical and, narrative. Um, yeah. So, anyway, they, um... They did that whole thing, and it showed us the Seven Nations and then Conria. Mm -hmm. So all we know is that the last chapter is going to be about uh, Conria. Oh. But other than that, we don't really know anything else about it. Yeah. Spooky. Like, we know it's destroyed. There's a bit that comes up in the newer um, story quests. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna. Those those are like pretty major spoilers. So I'm not gonna. Yeah, I remember you telling me it was probably about a month ago now about a lot of the uh, like the newest. I think those were probably when 1.5 came out. Um, about some of the newer story yeah. quests, like completely changing things around, or like yep. being like really big spoilers. And my goal at the time was mm -hmm. to get to those missions, and I just I I find it. Unless I'm playing consistently, which I really don't play consistently, it's really difficult to go up in adventure rank. It's just a very kind of take your time process. You, they kind of. Well, what rank are you? Um, let's see. I am thirty-two right now. Thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah, you're. I think that's. I think that unlocks pretty much everything. Okay. Definitely all the story quests. There is. I gotta. I gotta think about. Let me see. Quests and then. Unlocking quests and then. Or, I'm sorry, Archon quests. I think there's. I think all the story quests unlock at 40. Yeah, I see. Yeah, but they the all. Archon they are quest. all at 40. Um, the Archon quests are. Yeah, so the next Archon quest is 35 for me. Oh. And that's um. That's oh, let weird. me let me check what the name of that one was. That was a new star approaches chapter one act three. But aside from that, I have no other Archon quests right now. Huh. Which is interesting. Wait, did you fight a uh, child already? No. Yeah. Not yet. Oh. Huh. I think the only yeah, big could. boss that I fought was Duvalin. And that's about it so far. Huh. Yeah. I could have sworn that you got the child out lower adventure rank. Huh. I mean, do you only get the Archon quests in like the, the main areas? Or like, do you have to explore in between you automatically get them okay that's what i figured i didn't know if that's something you like you had to find or not nope all right oh, all right okay. then. what are good ways to reach i mean what i found so I guess far just, like, spending your resume is probably the best way. yep yep going around fighting bosses seems to help um doing the commission quest and you get like a pretty big boost at least once a day yeah um sure. other than that just going around actually i'm trying to do like my recent way of doing that is just been doing all the smaller quests, which wind up leading into mm -hmm. more quests, which give me more opportunities to, you know, find even more quests and more experience. Seems to be what yep. has been working for me. Like, I want to say I was in, um, I think somewhere in the lower half of the 20s adventure rank range before I started doing, like, quests and stuff. And since then, it's been significantly faster than before like from from my standard yeah i know i think once, once you hit like 40 i don't think there's really all that much to um to look forward to i think you get everything unlocked at 40. nice that's at least a nice goal to get to that way there's yeah. not really there's not really a level floor that's restricting me by that mm -hmm. point it's just you know when something new comes out you pop on for it, and it's already available for you. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, they're very good about the events. The events usually unlock at, like, AR-16. Yeah, yeah. I think this one is 21, but, of course, I didn't have to worry about that, which was nice. Yeah. I think one of the first 
events that I tried to do, uh, I was restricted from the adventure rank level, and I was, like, trying to scramble to get to the level that I need to be at before the event goes away. Yeah. But uh, since then, I have not had that issue. That might have been one of those adventure... Uh, that actually might have been the Lantern Festival. Or, uh... Yeah, the Lantern um, Festival is a bit of a letdown, in my opinion. I don't know. I I didn't really get to explore like the, it too much. The events... So the, the rewards and stuff were good. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to have, like, the Zhao story. Right, right. So, like... We, we didn't really see any of the other characters. It was just a bunch of, like... Fetch quests. Yeah. There's a lot of running around. Yeah. And there wasn't really, like, any kind of overarching story. Mm hmm Like, they had the whole thing with, like, oh, no, someone's going to try to sabotage it. And then it's like, oh, that's kind of resolved in, like, Act 1. Mm-hmm. And then the whole there's no, like, plot conflict, conflict is just gone. Yeah. I'm like, oh, what are, we, what are we here for now? Like, yeah, I, I like trying to make Zhao not depressed, but, like, in the blink of an eye. I want a story. <laughs> yeah. I thought the, um, I didn't really, um, I, got, I guess it kind of slipped my mind whatever the, like, the story important was for, like, the Windbloom Festival, but all the games that they had for that one, the other, um, new things, and I don't remember if it was part of the Windbloom Festival, the thing that came afterwards, but, like, the hide and seek, well, I think that came after. Um, yeah, that came after. Wind, tr Wind Trace, awesome. I think. But that one was, that was really cool, too. Wind Trace is great. I yeah. felt so bad. We were playing in, uh, Springvale, mm -hmm. and I just climbed up to the top of the uh of the windmill and hid behind the blades mm -hmm. and the poor hunter caught everyone else in like the first minute and then just spent the rest of the game running around the base of the windmill because that was where the uh the tracker was telling him i was oh I man never looked up. and i was like i'm sorry but i really want to win <laughs> i didn't even disguise myself that game I just really? Stood behind the windmill. Wow. As a child too, so I wasn't even like super small. Incredible. It was, it was a fun time. I love how hide and seek games can sometimes just be like that, or it's like you just you just pick the right place, and the hunter is just the right combination of unaware, so that you can just go by completely unnoticed. Mm -hmm. But I like that one. It kind of what kind of bothered me about it was there were like awards that you could get by playing it, but it seemed that when you were in co-op mode, actually playing with your friends, that you weren't able to collect yeah. those rewards, which was kind of annoying. Like that was totally the opposite of what I thought that event was intended to be. Yeah. But no, that was um that was a concentrated effort by me, Hoyo, to stop people from like gaming the reward system. Mm -hmm. Which was stupid because they weren't even like... Great. Like, yeah. And they were pretty easy to get. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they had to like stop the rewards from that. Yeah, it was a little it was a little confusing. I mean, that didn't subtract from, you know, in, the enjoyment from it. But it just kind of like, I could be getting something more for this. Like, a, a purpose other than I just want to have fun and play this cool new yeah. game with my friends. Mm -hmm. Have they had any other like n cool multiplayer events like that? Or I guess I guess it, not necessarily the event itself, but like the games that they play, or different domains that you can work on together. Uh, so my favorite is still my favorite to this day was uh, the Theater Mechanicus. That was during the Lantern, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. That was far and above my favorite. I don't think I ever got to play that one. When was that again? It was a uh, tower defense. Oh yeah, yeah. I think like I talked to the right person to be able like the the, the person who ran it I think was going to explain like how the game would work. But I think by that point as well, yeah. I wasn't at the right adventure rank for it. So I wound up getting to the right adventure rank, going off and doing all the story stuff with with Zhao and stuff and forgot about that one. And then the yeah. event ended. No, Caesar, Caesar Mechanicus was far and above my favorite. I've always enjoyed like tower defense games like that that was always a thing like that like back in uh middle school or dare i see even high school when we all had our chromebooks like a tower defense game would always be on there yeah i'm so mad they took away our uh 
um, what was it? The little dino game. Yeah, no, right? Like the off the offline Google Chrome game. Yeah. Can't believe they took that from us. I didn't even realize you could turn that off. Like I thought that was just like that's that's just Google Chrome's way of making sure, hey, yeah. even if you don't got your internet, you still got the little dino guy. Mm -hmm. So unfortunate. It's truly a shame. On the bright side, like what I was able to do, at least on the Chromebooks, because they had like the Chrome store. So you could get games on it other than that. Yeah. And some websites are like, there are like an infinite number of websites of games that yeah. they haven't yet Ways blocked. For you to get, like, get around. like Cookie Clicker or for a while, mm -hmm. Town of Salem. I missed, I missed playing Town of Salem in like in like the lunchroom or when we would all gather like after school and we'd all play it on a Skype call together and just completely rule the way the game. Because mm -hmm. we'd essentially be half half the people in the game. So we yep. could just like run it however we wanted to. Like we wanted a certain person or group to win. We could do that or half of us are on Mafia. We'll let the Mafia win. No problem. I miss those days. I think uh, I remember having to be very careful about my nicknames because I would always be the first one voted off because I was obviously the most suspicious. Oh, for sure. Like, for example, uh, not suspicious. Character name? Probably a little suspicious. Like, if your name was actually not suspicious. Yes. Or, like, I am the jester as the name. Like, how would you mm -hmm. know? You don't know that when you make your name. But, but like, you could be the Jester, so maybe we won't kill you. It's, like it's also fun being, like, the serial killers in the Mafia when you leave the Death Note. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Those are some of the best parts, I think. Because mm -hmm. it could be something, like, totally obscure. Or, or like, you could completely, like, send it off into a different direction. Like, you know who killed you, but you're going to say it was somebody else. I Which remember, would also... um, yeah, I got, um, I know I got one game where I did like use some guy took like some anime character that mm -hmm. I also watched, um, and I was a serial killer. So I spent like all the, uh, I worked very hard on it, but all the death notes were like references, like very subtle references to the anime. <laughs> and someone finally caught on and lynched him. Oh my god. And then he was like, not the serial killer. <laughs> really? I love that, like, you were leading these people on, and only one per- I feel like, I gotta wonder how it felt for that one person who finally put all the dots together. They were just like, this must be something going on here. What could the connection be? <gasps> oh my god, I've got it! It's that one anime! It must be the killer! Kills them. Not the killer. And like, oh, blasphemy! <laughs> I was super proud of that. It was like <laughs> one of my all time best moments. Like, and in my final hours, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, I've managed to find one of these waypoints so far uh, in the. Yeah. As I go through and try to find them with my. Uh, the Wave Rider, I think it is. I've gotten distracted with a little archery quest, though. Hilly Trails, yeah. yeah. Hella churls, and I found a little uh, one of those flowers that you shoot yeah. air the balloons. Oh, nice. Yeah. I honestly thought when the wind bloom festival like started, and they were all talking about, well, what is the wind bloom? My first thought was, isn't the wind bloom that one where you shoot the balloons off? Like that has to be the wind bloom. But then like. The message of Windbloom is like, Windbloom is not just a, a fl it's any flower, it's like a concept. And you're like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, I get that. It's about togetherness, I guess, and community. I get that. It's actually a Cecilia. Obviously. Um, because that's what, um... That so was like the ancient one. Not specifically. Not that I can so recall. So Venti was not the first, like, wind spirit in Mondstadt. Uh-huh. Oh. That was actually Decoradian. Uh-huh. Oh. And back then, I think um, the Cecilia was like the ancient flower of the time, right? I think? 
I remember um, Sucrose no, talking about there that. There was an ancient sweet flower that Sucrose got really excited about. Ah, okay. But um, but anyway, what it was, um, it's like the people were heavily oppressed. It was like tyranny, all of that. Um, it was awful. Mm -hmm. And there was this one bard, who uh was really, really, really good bard, that um Venti, the wind spirit at the time, really liked. But the bard was like, oh, I wish to see, like, a clear sky with clear breezes. Mm -hmm. And so Venti was like, you know what? I, like, I kind I, of I I like really you. like you. <laughs> I like you. Like, I'm going to give this to you. That's a good dream. You should, um, we should do that. So then they ended up planning a uh, revolution against oh, the Mo God in charge of it. Oh, damn. Um, they managed to kill him. But, um, unfortunately... They took um, Venti's friend with him. Oh, uh, unfortunate. Um, but Venti's friend's favorite flowers were the Cecilia. Oh, uh, okay. And if okay. you notice, Venti has a Cecilia in his hair. Oh, I didn't. I'm, I'm gonna sure look out for that next time. Hair. Next time I pull out Venti, I'm he has gonna a look Cecilia for that. somewhere, and uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's from his. That's to remember his dead friend. No, that's sweet. Yeah, there's a Cecilia in his hair. Nice. I didn't realize that. I gotta pay attention to more of these. Every single time I play through these story things, I'm like, I should have paid more attention. Because I find out really nice things that, that was, I would have realized. Was in his, uh, that was in his, like, story. Story. Oh! Like oh, the, okay. Like, the little profile. Oh, yeah, I haven't looked at those. Yeah. Not yet, at least. Those are really good. There's there's some very funny ones. Um... Mm-hmm. Zhao is just angry at everyone. <laughs> that seems tells about right. Stories. Um, I can only check those out in my time when I have like I'm trying to take more time to like relax and focus on like kind of what the other extras the game has to find have to has to give us. Because mm -hmm. like I usually don't look at those because I feel like I'm always like running out of time or something and that I have more important quote unquote important things to attend to in the game, mm -hmm. which is totally false and. At least in my opinion, like I can just, I can just do whatever I want. But it's like sometimes I need to convince myself. That's, I've been getting used to it. By the way, to to uh, switch gears just for a moment, I saw Descendant Des pop in a chat. I want to say hello to you, at the very least. Things are well. I'm with my buddy Matt. It's a good time, and it's a lovely Wednesday morning. Is it still morning? Oh yeah, we still got like an hour left in the morning. Yeah, I think it's still morning. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Matt, I know you mentioned before that you were going to head off to the game store with Anna to get, try to find, yeah. like, just to see what else there, just to check it out, because it's new. When were you going off and doing that? Uh, we're going to... Actually, I should probably text you know what time we're doing. <laughs> um, I figured I would ask her, but I... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't ask. I haven't texted her yet this morning. I forgot to tell her good morning. Damn, there was a lot of more on that chest. Yeah, the chests uh, the chests are pretty good. It's usually like 10 to 50, Yeah, especially on these other little islands out here. That's pretty cool. Damn. Mm -hmm. They reward you well. I feel like I'm always spending and my mora on the silliest of things. I just you need so much mora. I know. Mora and uh, experience is the hardest things you need so much what i have always what i've been doing is i really really love I, I i think i've mentioned before that i really like the collection aspect of it like if i could get every single character in a feasible manner i totally would but that would just take way too much time but i know what i can do mm -hmm. is i can be become proficient in every single recipe like that's manageable yes and so like meg is uh meg is doing that too i will i will buy all of the ingredients from every single location to make sure that I can like, to, to, to make sure that I can like do the recipes later. Some of the ingredients are like mm -hmm. rather difficult to come by or you can only buy them in certain places. And so I'm always like buying yeah. out all of the shrimp or the rice and tofu or even the potatoes and stuff. If I find that I have, if I have any less than 100 potatoes, I need to make sure I buy out the entire stock so I don't run low, God forbid. Same. I mean, they're not—they're not super expensive though. But like other things, 
much, yeah. much more Mora. But, uh, yeah. It's... You just you need so much Mora. I think to, like, the final ascension costs, like, 120,000 Mora. Oh my god, really? That's yeah. a good point, too. The ascensions all cost Mora as well. Mm hmm that and all the all the different like ascension materials and whatnot. I was saying before how like I'm almost afraid to use a new character because to get them up to the same level as everybody else, I gotta spend like the ascension materials on them because the world level's higher than just the first one now. So like yeah. it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of like boss hunting and whatnot that I just I could do, but I haven't done. Nice I need to take like all right. one of those days. To just go and do a bunch of bosses. We're doing uh, three o'clock. That's why I'm heading to the store. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, that'll be a nice break for her. Every once in a while, she'll just give me a call and be like, "You know what? Uh, I'm gonna take a break, and you're gonna be the person who facilitates that. So let's talk for like an hour." <laughs> nice. It feels so different because she's like, it, it's, she's at home, so she's not here. So it kind of, it almost brings back the nostalgia of when that used to be the case for like four years straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't feel like, like, I don't feel like she's not here or anything. Like the presence is still here. I was just thinking about that the other night. Like, I don't know. Just because she's not here doesn't mean like I don't still feel it here. Cause like, it's kind of like our space yeah. together. So I don't, I don't feel lonely or anything. Which, which is, which is nice. At least not yet. I haven't felt lonely yet. Mm hmm. <laughs> but that's why we have that's why we have each other and discord friends yeah. and the now that I you know we can actually all talk together mm -hmm. and I say like actually talk together as if like that's something that couldn't be done before it's just only How recently have I become yeah that and only recently I've become like comfortable to be able to chat more like in the online space i always feel, i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know why i never felt like for example when we had like the skype group before discord was even a thing like i wouldn't really say anything because my mindset was like i don't really have anything to say that random thought that i've got popped in my head like that nobody nobody cares about that mm -hmm. but like my mindset has kind of changed now like the the meaning that I would be able to gleam from something like a little just hello message or hey guys what's up is yeah. like w once once I put it out there then it then it's up to everybody else like somebody may just be able to feel like really like oh man I wish I could chat with somebody right now and then it pops up and it's just like you know what that's cause for conversation mm -hmm. because now I feel like that sometimes where I'm sitting there and I'm like you know what It'd be pretty cool to chat with somebody right now and so now I feel that there is a utility to the oh Hello. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Because, like, that's kind of... We don't have that anymore, because we would do that in high school. We would up in the morning. Or... And, yeah, at the pole. Polia. For the context of everybody else out there, back in high school, we would... And when everybody would come in on the bus, our, um... Like, the front of our school had, like, these big poles right in front of the entrance. And so, we would always hang out at one of the poles. And... We named it, I think, Polia was the name of the pole. And we'd hang there until, like, I don't remember the first well would ring. I think, I think maybe one of us named it, and then only they would call it Polia. Like, only that person and, like, me would call it Polia. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was just, like, the pole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, it's not like I'm gonna... It, it's not like I'm going to text people individually, like, hey, good morning anymore, but to have the group chat with everybody there, just to, just to spark conversation for the day. Yeah. Group chats are nice. They are. They are, absolutely. In addition to that as well, I always thought, like, one of my biggest issues in the past was I don't want to feel like I'm being annoying because I always had mm -hmm. that inner thought that I could possibly be annoying if I said something. And uh, yeah. I realize now that is not the case anymore. I've had wonderful people like like you in my life that constantly tell me like, no, 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 you are, you know, that's, that's not the case. It's not annoying. You can speak as much as you want to. 
you got something on your mind mm -hmm. go ahead and say it it's okay your opinion is totally totally valid and worth something to all of us and that is like yep. like that's been like really really important to me to have you guys be able to encourage me to do that yeah no, you're always free to talk about whatever you want absolutely there's like i don't think there's like anything that yeah i can't think of anything i wouldn't like be okay with you talking about right and Wait. i think i think it's i only like fetish oh yeah yeah <laughs> i feel i feel that I feel that. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of dodge around that point, but never touch it. <laughs> I've found two out of my three waypoints. I am so close to figuring out the rest of the archipelago. I just noticed that I could be checking my map here too. Oh, yes. uh, there we go. That's that button. Oh damn! This is a pretty big area. Damn. I can't go over there. Oh, I gotta go down south, it looks like. There we go. This has given me, like, like the vibe of going out and kind of just wandering the ocean to see what you can mm -hmm. find. Gives me, like, I've never actually played Legend of Zelda in, like, The Wind Waker or Legend of Zelda. And, um, yeah, that was the one with the ocean. I never played that, but I imagine it feels something like that, where you're just kind of just going off in the open waves, trying to find what you can in the islands in between. E exploration. I love that. Yeah, no. Same here. It's been, like, so long since I've been able to just, like, wander in this game. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was one of the really cool things about Genshin when, like, I first started playing it. The, the whole open-world aspect of you walk from place to place, and you will find potentially something along the way was really really cool at the time it was very very enjoyable it still is even going back yeah. and forth to areas like i've been to before because i'll wind up like finding you something find that like one puzzle or something exactly it's always nice to be able to go back and like see areas from a different perspective because you never know if you find you might find something new Mm -hmm. Oh, she does care about Kaya. Who do? I'm doing the uh, newest quest. Oh. And uh, they're talking about how they got, how like the other people got to the archipelago. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's um, Kaya, Dudu, Albedo, and Razor. And up there. And, um, apparently Albedo and Razor just wandered off and left Kaya alone, but oh. you can actually see that. Aww. There's, there's a lot of things, like, there's a lot of little things that show that you actually likes Kaya. She's just never going to admit it. Oh, for sure. It's kind of like that uh, brotherly love with the mix of, like, manly pride. Like, I'd never, I'd never admit that I love my brother, but, it's like... It's more, it's less manly pride and more of, like, sibling rivalry. Oh, for sure. But, uh, I would never admit that, like, I care for him because he has to admit it first, like... But, um, you look, actually, if you go to the winery, there's a, uh, vase that's, like, put on display. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't fit the room at all. It's like completely off. Oh wait, no, I I know that vase. Cause I was confused yeah. on why I could talk to the vase and observe it. Mm -hmm. So um in the comics, Kaya actually gets uh Dilu that vase um as a gag gift. <laughs> because um they he ended up breaking the uh, original one. Oh my god. It's the little things. Every, like, every single time I see that vase, too. And I don't know if it's because, like, I can't bring up what, what the text is when you speak to it. But my first thought is, like, oh, what a fragile-looking vase. Like, I, it'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. If something hasn't already happened to it. Actually, they, they may, in the text, say that it is a fragile-looking vase. Vase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes it so much like Because, like, you gotta wonder, like, there is a reason why everything has a certain text to it. And I don't know, whenever I'm playing a game like this, I never know whether, 
what I'm reading is something like stock related, like they just needed to fill the space with something or whether the words here really, really matter as to the lore of the story. And I'd like mm -hmm. to think that there's lore in everything, but there's, oh, there is. there's no know, guarantee. There's very, very good about uh, lore. So yeah. actually, if you, what he really wants, you can go into like all the artifacts, all the weapons and go yeah. into the details page and it'll like tell you all about it. And like, we've been collecting like books this whole time in the game. And I found out as well that you can actually read the books. Yeah, it's insane. Like there was, a, there was a lot here and it makes me like, because of the quantity of it, my first thought is there's so much of it, it can't all be important or it can't all be related to the lore and stuff. But like, even if it's not crucial to whatever the lore of the universe is, it plays like such a small part, like fleshing out such a small portion that like from the big picture may seem rather insignificant, but I think the I guess that big picture becomes so much more full the more of the tiny tiny details that get fleshed out in the background. Mm -hmm. We just found out that one of the uh, artifact sets hints at a uh, one of the Fatui harbingers being a homunculus from Inazuma. Damn! Just from and looking at one of the. Like... Wow. Yeah. So it's the pale flame set. Um, it talks about how he was created to be like the perfect body. Mm-hmm. Um, but was cast aside and like abandoned, but then somehow gained sentience and wandered off and like found joy in like the suffering and torture of other people. Oh damn, because, this you know, sounds very like... homunculus -y. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we knew he was one of the three Harbingers, but we didn't know if he'd already been reduced. We knew he wasn't doTERRE, like we didn't know who he was, but then we just got the, uh, we just got renders of um ball the electro archon oh nice and she has the same hairstyle as uh scaramuche one of the uh fatui scaramuche. so everyone is pretty sure he's the homunculus now oh because like obviously because you need a piece of like one human to make the homunculus well it's i suppose so we know the homunculus was from inazuma because of like the eternal thing oh wait is um is that inazuma is the electro place right yes uh, okay, yeah. and Ball being the Electro Archon, that makes sense. I see the connections here. So, yeah, and the fact that they look so similar is just like, oh, this must be the homunculus. Right. I could only imagine, like, if that's not the case, like, like how they explain that away. Like, maybe, like, a, mm -hmm. a, a denizen of Inazuma was so inspired by the Electro Archon that in their studies they wanted to, like, almost emulate the Archon in their own yeah, way. That, so they actually specify that was the Electro Archon. That, uh, oh. oh, okay, okay. That is pretty cool, though. Which is interesting, because we know um, Albedo is also a homunculus. Really? But uh, he was made by Rhyndotter, who we don't know much about. If you want to like text, just like if you feel if you want to know more about him, just like text Meg asking about Albedo. She'll be perfectly happy to talk your ear off for like the next five hours. I I think I I think I may because now I'm like, oh this is interesting. This seems very interesting. I love yeah. going down these rabbit holes of like. I mean, technically there's okay. I haven't gone down the rabbit hole yet, but like the more I hear about this stuff, the more I'm like, oh my god, I want to. I really want to know how far this goes to kind of like inspire because like the farther you go down there the far the more love I wind up getting for any particular like w whatever has that sort of lore behind it like mm -hmm. I, I want to say the most recent like game that I went down the rabbit hole of was uh I think Persona 3 or whatever just because I was really I think it was after D&D &D one time and I was like oh my god these characters are absolutely terrifying um, and so I kind of went down for a little bit and I was like, you know what? I like that series more now because there seems to be so much more meaning in it. Yep. Oh, I missed a... Oh, no, I didn't. Just kidding. But same thing with like, you know, that could be for any game. And I should, what I should be doing is funneling that energy into a game like that I'm currently playing and will be playing for a while, such as Genshin Impact. That way, you know, I can almost like spot the dip, spot the the nuances in the world around that mm -hmm. tie into that and expand the story in that direction 
Genshin Impact is like it's just such a beautiful like game lore wise. There's so I many it. like little things they add in. Mm -hmm. And it's like obvious that they real they're not just like well, I mean they're obviously doing it for money, but like it's not just a money grab for them. Right, right. I mean I'm sure there are like hundreds of thousands of players out there like me who I haven't set spent a cent on the game, at least. Um, but I yeah. feel like if I if I went to a convention and saw like a like a sucrose plush or something like that, I'd probably grab it. So sucrose is your favorite character? I love sucrose. Just I, I love I love her personality and it reminds me so much of like like kinda like the bumbling scient not not bumbling scientist, but like the the apprentice who's like really really into their own thing and just kind of being totally like, like she's so into her thing like the sweet flower stuff oh and, yeah the and she's super proud of it and i'm like it is just absolutely adorable and i like i feel i feel that i feel that connection with sucrose to be so like you are into what you are into and that is great you know, and, and it's in a healthy manner too collects bones yes damn she actually has a uh she has a um Oh, what's it called? She has like a fairy tale about her in Mondstadt. Oh my gosh. Um, how if you're bad and you go outside at night, um, I forget what they called her. <laughs> oh my god. Like, you'll get captured by her and she'll steal your bones. But like, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like her. But it's like, it's like the, like, she's become like a cryptid. Or she's become like the stand-in for a cryptid or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh that's, my god. that's a great one. She just scripted. Um, oh my god. The four beacons have been lit, but we still That's have great. I, I love her character for that reason. Like it just see it just seems so like I I want to be good at what I, I'm good at what I do, and even but e despite the fact that she she's like kind of like a master of what she, what her specialty is, she still looks kind of clumsy about it. And like I think I think yeah. that's that's adorable. She's earnest. Earnest is a good word to use. I agree with that. But I've always liked that. I also, I also, I don't know. I like, I like a love hate relationship with uh, uh Kaya, cause like, I love his personality, but I also kind of hate it as well, cause he's kind of like the whole like, oh yeah, and the mighty. Like, I don't know what the word for it is. But it's like, he's the cool guy. He's not really the cool guy. But he's also the cool guy. And you gotta love the cool guy, but you also kinda gotta hate the cool guy, too. Mm -hmm. I think he's hot. Yes! Dude looks pretty good. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen... Honestly, you know what? If I had to pick the hottest dude, I'd probably go with uh, Zhongli. Those eyes. The first time I saw those eyes, I was like, whoa. All right. Okay, so Zhang Li is actually, like, out of every character in Genshin, Zhang Li has the thirstiest fandom. Oh my god, really? I feel yeah. like I could understand that. There is, like, Meg, Meg Reed's fanfic, mm -hmm. and, like, 90% of, uh, like, 90% of them are about Zhang Li. Oh my god, like, really? The, like, yeah, like all the erotic ones are just like about Zhongli. Oh my god. Oh my god, I didn't know that. But now that I do know that, I'm like, I am not surprised at all. <laughs> like, you'd expect it to be like Senora or like Yula to be the worst, but no. Mm -hmm. It's nope. Zhongli. This guy, he's just got that, like, okay, the eyes get me. The, the eyes are like, got, gotta love those eyes. I always love a good pair of eyes, you know? But like the demeanor yeah. as well, he just seems so like well put together and so like meticulated. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, you 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 got it all, man. You've got it all. You got everything figured out. Yeah, no, he's like, I, I'd put him at like number three. I think it, it's like Kaya, Child, Zhongli for me. Nice, nice. I feel like I'd have more love for Child if I if I seen him more, but I I haven't seen him very much. But like that whole that yeah, whole quest line with Zhongli. I was like, this is this is a good time to, to really stop and appreciate, you know, what we have, what we have with this man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he is like, he's also the only character who is so popular. He uh, got a rework. Really? Yeah. Like, um, like as in character 1. change? 
for design yeah. change or um no it was a uh um his skill set got i reworked to make it better ah uh, okay he, he was super popular but apparently he was falling behind on the other uh characters oh so they had to kind of catch and... him up to speed so that you know the you the utility aspect of him caught up with the popularity like he's not just yeah. some pretty face mm -hmm. He's so much more. It's like he used to, his, his whole thing just used to be like, oh, I do like really good shielding. But now it's like, oh, I do like really good shielding. And also, um, how about you just die from this giant ass meteor I'm sending down on you? So, oh my god. Is that his ability? Or like his uh, elemental? Yeah, that, that's his burst. burst. His burst oh my is god. Meteor. That is awesome. Right. Oh my gosh, I've gotten to the point. I, I just completed the, uh, the first part of the um the archipelago quests and now everybody's in their summer suits and they're just like oh my god like, don't look at me i am like 90 percent sure this whole thing was planned by barbara <laughs> she seems rather like the one to be able to, to put on something like this I didn't expect like, it to I, I fully expect that Barbara clothing. just, like, did oh, all of this to get Jean a couple of days off. No, oh, that's sweet, way. though. Yeah, because doesn't, doesn't Barbara, like, really, really look up to Jean? To have me take leave. Mm -hmm. I suppose I do like, a ton of people me. apparently idolize Barbara, but Barbara idolizes Jean. That's yeah, voice. she's, like, she's her big sister. Are they actually related? Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes sense. I was just um, noting too as I was is, sitting on the launch screen that I was like, oh, you know what? G Jean and Barbara both had the blonde hair, blue eyes thing going on. And then clean the front with the blonde hair and the red eyes. I was like, that's in the color palette. I did not put two yeah. and two together. But yeah, no, they're, uh, they're siblings, but ah. they were raised separately because their parents uh, split up. Oh, okay. Aww. Um, But Barbara always like missed her. It, it, they have like Barbara has a weird thing with her. She really likes Sheen, but she also feels kind of like overshadowed by her. Oh, uh, okay. I could see that. But it doesn't, it doesn't like, like back come up. Eyes. Yep. You're saying? Uh, it doesn't like come up as much to be the like relationship destroying thing. It's more of just like a little thing that you occasionally see. Right, right. Yeah. They're uh, they're they're much more wholesome siblings than Kaya and Dee. Mm -hmm. uh, not at all. This is just my duty. Just Kaya and Dee just like now then have actually the tried to kill each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's actually how Kaya got his cryo vision. <laughs> Wait, how did that happen? He tried to stab him. Um. Okay. So, D. Luke has a very complicated backstory. Mm -hmm. um, he was the youngest captain in the Knights of Favonius. Okay. Like, ever. He was incredibly gifted. He had a pyro vision. Um, and was just, like, one of the most skilled fighters. Mm -hmm. um, and his dad obviously, like, owned the wine industry and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, they were heading... Uh, they were heading home one day. And... Um, they ended up getting ambushed by this drake. Mm -hmm. um, and it like beat up all the knights guarding it. It beat up D. Luke. And then his dad pulls out um, something called a delusion. Interesting. Which is like a, uh, it's like a vision, but it's man-made and not as stable. Oh. I honestly um, thought visions were man-made. No, visions are gifts from the gods. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. That's why if you actually look into it, you can find, like, similar veins of, like, why certain characters have specific visions. Mm hmm Like, if you look at, uh, the Anemo characters, they all have, uh, they all have their visions because they want to, like, protect something. Jean wants to protect Mondstadt, Sucrose oh. wants to protect, like, Albedo and Al Alchemy, mm -hmm. um, Venti, well, Venti, okay, Venti, so the Archons. Yeah, Jean, they just kind of have them. You. They just kind of have them just to look like everybody else, right? To fit in. So that's the Archon suit, but then there's a couple like really old characters like Zhongli, mm -hmm. Zhao, or no, Zhongli, um, Ganyu, you and Chi Chi, who yeah. got their visions from different Archons the than the current ones. Okay. So they don't like 
fit in with the newer characters. Like for the cryo, like the cryo visions, their um, their whole thing seems to be like they want to destroy something. Mm -hmm. It's like Kaya wants to destroy his past. Yula wants to destroy her family. Um, Damn. Diona wants to destroy the wine industry. <laughs> uh, Rosaria wants to destroy the enemies of Mondstadt. Chongyu wants to destroy evil spirits. Um, I think it's all the cryo characters. But then Chi Chi and Ganyu don't want to destroy anything. Which makes oh, sense but that's because, because they, they have the, given... the older ones a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, oh because that's so the interesting. The only two Archons that have stayed the same are the uh, Geo and the Animo. Mm -hmm. All the other Archons have died and been replaced at least once. And Fontaine's was actually pretty recent, I think. Oh, wow. Because there is a whole, uh, when you did the Rodania quest, you find out that the Oceanids are, like, defecting after, uh... After the, the switch in power, I guess? Yeah. And apparently they were being hunted down by uh, the Oceanids that did remain. Wow. That's interesting. One of the other things, that makes me think now of the fact that this is a very, Genshin Impact was another, there's another, like, I guess, philosophical concept that comes into Genshin Impact that I had been thinking about, like, in the past year that was incredibly relevant to me is the idea of, like, in in a world where like there are these godlike characters, uh, these godlike beings, how much how involved are they in their creation? And like what, or rather, what the, the world around them, like for example, Venti doesn't seem like super duper involved, but like something like actually, or, yeah, yeah, and the uh, the Geo Archon seems to be coming around like once a year, so. Is he really that involved? Or at least from from what yes, I can tell so is. far. He is very involved. He will he will regularly walk amongst the uh, people of the way. Like stuff and like that, I think is it's just a very interesting sounds... concept to me. Mm -hmm. But that's really interesting that you were bringing it up before, like kind of the the reason that some of these other ones have the uh, the visions and stuff like that. Oh wait, you were um you were saying the reason why uh D Loop got uh his vision and something about the, the man made right. vision versus the, the oh, god given yeah. one. So his dad ended up using a delusion and okay. managed to beat the Drake back. Which is really um weird because um he was like actually denied entrance into the Knights of Favonius and everything because he wasn't strong enough. Mm hmm Um so that was like a big deal. Damn. Um, to be able to, like, fight this Drake and not be a part of the knights. And the knights are just like, we didn't, we yeah. don't let you have it. And he's like, well, I beat this big monster now, so. Well, actually, that's the thing. So remember what I said about the delusions being unstable? Right. So his delusion actually killed him. Ah, um, After he right. used it to fight off the Drake. Okay. All right. So that, that obviously, sense. like D. Luke was was horrified by that. You know, you just lost your father. Mm -hmm. um, but the kicker comes when you get um when you um get to like when he like comes back to report everything to the knights after like burying his father and everything, mm -hmm. and they tell him he has to uh hide the story because his father was obviously not a knight. Right. So like, what would that do to their reputation and like? It would make it would give like make like unrest and make the people feel like they couldn't protect them. Right, right. They'd lose trust in knights because um, they weren't the ones to to protect from the beast. To stop the Drake, and they like haven't been able to stop the Drake in the past. It's been like an ongoing problem. Oh, so they so wanted like, Luke to lie about his dad's death to like cover it up and say that. Oh he man, the Drake. that's rough. Um, so he obviously didn't want to do that. <laughs> so he quit the knights on the spot and. uh disavowed them and his vision he went to this huge thing but when he was doing that um kaya came up and kaya is somehow from conria interesting that was the a place that again 500 years ago is destroyed oh oh that was that place right yeah so we still don't know like what exactly that means uh um, yeah that's interesting but anyway, he, he admitted he was from Conria, and that meant something to D. Luke, something bad. 
So he like whipped out his sword and tried to like attack him, and using his vision. Using D Luke using his vision. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. So Kaya obviously like defended, and that moment he got his uh, cryo vision. Oh wow. Yeah. Nice. Um. Yeah. And that that's was an uh, that's how Kaya got his cryo vision. Man, there's so much more into this than I had originally thought. That is so yeah, cool. No, it goes like, really deep. Where did you find? Like, does this does the uh, does the story quests eventually tell you these things, or are these like all like within the um, like the bio of these characters and stuff like that? The comics. Uh, so I've I've read the comics, which is oh, part good of point. it. And then also um, character bios. Mm hmm. To kind of I guess put the other pieces together. Yeah. But no, nice. The lore is like super deep. Nice. Where do you find the comics at? Are they like on the ancient website? Um, I've been using um, it's called uh, Takiyomi. Okay. It's a uh, it's a like manga co collation thing mm -hmm. that Sarah gave me. Oh, nice. Takiyomi, you said? Yeah, Takiyomi. Uh, ah. the, I'll text you the name. Thank you. That's where I um, that's where I got the uh, so I got everything. I think the only time I ever read like a manga was for one of the animes that I watched, and I don't remember which. Like I read the manga a while ago. I never actually finished it, but needless to say, I forgot what it was anyway. And so even if I wanted to go back to it to find whatever website that was, like I couldn't figure out what it was. But uh. Very incredibly useful. Yeah. Oh, they're like... What's up with all these conches, by the way? So... There's a okay. bunch of them around. Obviously, this looks like a super happy place, right? You know, like, big sun, ocean... Mm -hmm. Well, like, the conches don't make it seem that way, though. The conches do not make it seem that way. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know what they are yet, but they appear to be remnants of, um... The last, uh... Of like whatever civilization was here in the past oh okay because there's like a lot of there's a lot of people talking about like it seems like uh war and ships and disaster yeah attempting to find peace or attempting to create peace mm -hmm. yeah so is this like in the in the realm of like all the different regions that we have does this particular area fall into one of those or does this kind of like exist outside no. of Tavat? We don't we, well it's like it's like in Tavat. So not all of the area is actually like controlled by like the different nations. Mm hmm There's like a couple of islands and stuff. Think of it like uh think of it like northern Canada and like Antarctica. Like so, like yeah like most of the world is like colonized, but there's like some places where it's like no one really like wants it or cares about what's there. Right, right. Yeah. So there's that um that one. Interesting. Cause that's my question now that I'm like, where where the hell am I technically at with all this stuff going on? Where does this fit into the narrative? Yeah. I'll catch up. So I can't seem to find one of these conches. I see it on my map, but I don't see it here. Oh, maybe it's down here. Oh, there it is. Mother says mother also Do you know if there are any like accomplishments or like achievements or rewards for finding all the conches? Someone needs assistance. Or is it just yes, kinda like there are. There's an entire event around it and that's how you get Barbara's skin. <gasps> oh perfect. At uh twenty four conches you get her skin. Good, because that's what I've been doing. Oh, time to fight what looks to be a... Okay, that's a big... That's a big demon skull. Everyone, please be careful. Nice. With horns. Yeah. Exciting. Huh? Very, very exciting. Really 
you can um ar ar arbor arbitrate. Right, you can arbitrate. Nice. Uh, what is this kid mm -hmm. saying? Can't wait to fight this oni That's beast. He obviously doesn't understand what that he, word means. His backstory is sad. Hey, don't know. But if you listen to the conscious on his island. Oh yeah. Is it because I took so long yeah. to make you angry? Then I saw like the one the one conch was bringing up that like uh the general's coming this way and we'll offer him a flat I'll try to like uh bring I guess bring peace or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I didn't quite catch the other one though. I think there were two uh there actually were there I think um, there were two conches on the island. The other one was like, it was this kid talking machine. to him, like, oh yeah, you used to protect us, you're so cool, oh right, you don't it talk to me. And then it was like, oh, do you it's very sad. It? Aww. You know, I can only guess. It looks I'm loving the colors on this thing. Island. Or this, this, I guess, oh, yeah. must be a person, I suppose. The mask is just ginormous. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a puppet. But isn't oh. A samurai puppet. And they're talking about Inazuma now. Ah. This area of the sea is independent and does not border any Remind me which what was the um element for Inazuma again? Electro. Electro, that was it. Like it's not Fontaine was a uh, hydro. Hydro. Um Electro was was that Inazuma? Oh, the Electro was Inazuma. Okay. Right, right, right. Uh Shania um, is cryo. Oh, they were cryo. Okay. Mondstadt is obviously Animo. Uh, Leeway is Geo. Forgot the name yeah. for the Pyro one. Conry is the one that we don't know yeah. about. Yes. In fact, it, we've seen like a couple of them show up in the story quests. Mm -hmm. And they don't seem to use any element. Interesting. But still have like interesting powers. Ooh. It's yeah, like it's I like quite know yet. the neutral element. It's still the the power of something, but without any tie to a particular element. I actually think it's got something to do with uh, the hydro element because the one time we see it, they do like stars, very similar to uh, how like Mona's attacks look. Oh, okay. I wonder how uh, I that feel relates. like it's got something to do with that. Interesting. Love to see how they kind of like explain that. Yeah. Or um, I, I gotta wonder too, and I, I don't want to get into like, I guess spoiler territory, but the whole like opening scene where you like you know detach from your twin when you get here, that other like being threatening the universe. The unknown god. Yeah, the unknown god. Like how that all plays into here. So far, we don't know anything about the unknown god. Okay. Well, actually, no. I'm sorry. We we know her um her title. She's the sustainer of heavenly principles. Oh. Um, this isn't um actual like spoilers, mm -hmm. but there are theories about what the traveler is. Okay. Um, the top one suggests that they're actually sealies. Oh. You know, those, like, little yeah, things that, like, guide you the treasure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, like, uh, the same type of being, but it, with a physical form. So the Seelies aren't, um, they weren't always like that. They were once, like, the greatest race on Teyvod. Oh. Until, um, the gods in Celestia, which mm -hmm. if you actually look at the direction, but if you look around the sky in Mondstadt, you can see this, like, big floating, like, yes. castle. Yes, I've that's definitely seen that. Here, we're all the gods oh, um, damn. That's like, that's not the Archons, the gods. There's like tons of yeah. gods. But there's only seven Archons. Okay. Um, and they um, apparently had uh, occasionally, like a race will get too powerful. Mm. And they'll kind of do the whole like, oh, they're going to like, take our power and like, take over us. And we're not going to So we must destroy them? Anymore. Yes. So we think that's what happened with Conria, but we're not sure. But that's wow. definitely what happened with the Seelies. Okay. So we think that uh, the Travelers were like the Seely Prince and Princess. Mm -hmm. And their last um, gambit when their like race was being destroyed was for them to run from the world. Uh -huh. Escape. And kind of exist the outside ones. of the dimension and then I guess come back. Well, yeah, and then they ended up, like, going to all these different dimensions, traveling around, um, 
and so after time, they either so forgot about Tadot or they came back for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. where they just didn't recognize yeah, so the world anymore. Um, Interesting. And when they did, that's when the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles found them, found out there were Seelies still around. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I have to, to destroy uh, you, because you shouldn't yeah. be here. You're too powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what happened. That's the leading theory, at least. That's a pretty cool theory, though. Yeah. And that kind of, at least, that kind of, uh, would answer the question of like why the traveler doesn't need like uh, like a vision to be able to do like the elemental abilities and whatnot. That might have been something that like this the the previous civilization already gained access so we to. Actually, with we actually thing. think a, like can, like the falling thing mm -hmm. for all the different like civilizations was them getting like manipulating the elements without the god's permission. Oh. Because okay. we know like the Saritza. The, um, the Shesnayan Archon and the Cryo Archon. Sure, yeah. Who's in, like, charge of the Fatui and everything. Mm -hmm. Has been, like, manufacturing these delusions and everything. But she's been doing it very hush-hush. So that potentially the gods don't find out like, about it. Yeah. And it seems like she's using, like, parts of the gods in her, uh, in her delusions. Or at least in the research. Because we know that, uh, in the comics... There's a, uh, there's a whole story about how they're, like, kidnapping children from Mondstadt and other places. Uh-huh. And how they're, in, they're, they're, like, imbuing them with these, like, delusions and the parts of the, uh, and, like, the parts of dead gods and stuff that they killed. Spooky. Yeah. And, um, that's, like, where delusions come from and stuff. And there was even a, uh... There is even a whole, like, arc in the manga about it. Wowza. And I mean, it kind of makes sense for them to keep everything kind of hush-hush, because if they know about what had happened to the previous race when they got too powerful, then they wouldn't... Have, they obviously, wouldn't want that to happen to them as well. I five that got that powerful and were destroyed. Damn. Have um, they... And I guess... There was the Steelies were the first. Okay. Then the Summer People, then the Winter People. Um, I always forget this one, and then Conria. Oh, okay. Were the five uh, civilizations that got destroyed? Were and the Seelies? Uh, Go ahead. The Seelies were the first. Okay, the first ones. Okay. Interesting how um, like I, I would have thought like maybe they were like the last ones or the most recent yeah, because they're still the around. Okay, that makes so sense. The Seelies. Okay, it's like the Seelies as they are now mm. are like incredibly weakened. Yeah, naturally. Like compared to what they were before, they're just little like wisps of themselves yeah. where they used to be like as gods but i guess that where means like, like previously they were like so powerful the fact that they're in such mm -hmm. a weak form now is like yeah it means that uh something bad happens mm -hmm. damn that's pretty cool though very interesting concept mm -hmm. there as well. That could a race become so powerful Again. that they rival the gods. Very, very classic, like, seen that a lot. Mm -hmm. But even more so that, like, Crazy. that's in Genshin Impact. I don't know. I am, like, I never saw any of this coming. It's, like, so so new to me that, that, like, Genshin has all this lore behind it that goes that deep into it. And that's, like, really, really cool. Like, I'm happy that it goes that deep. Most that... Of stuff is from uh, artifacts. Mm hmm I guess that makes sense, though. I mean, they are artifacts of, I guess, previous previous times that are still existing mm -hmm. in the modern world. Yep. And then, uh... Oops. We also know that the, um... Lawrence family, which mm -hmm. is, like, the evil slaver family, they, like, enslaved Mondstadt under their, like, aristoc aristocratic rule... No, actually, there's a, um, um, so Venti kind of just, like, fucked off for a couple of centuries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> after he made all that. Um, and so there was, uh, this one point where the, um, where the, uh, Lawrence family ended up subjugating Mondstadt and making it, like, an aristocracy. Mm-hmm. 
instead of it being like free for everyone like Genty wanted it to be. Oh, okay. Um, and then Venti ends up coming back and like helping overthrow them. And um, then they are obviously like reviled and no one wants to do anything with them. Damn. Um, but the thing is we have Eula now, who is, she's uh, the last heir of the Lawrence family. The ones who were previously in control? Yes. Um, but the thing is, she hates her family because they were abusive as fuck to her when she was a kid. Unfortunate. Um, so she ended up going against them and joining the knights, which are like their sworn enemies. Oh, okay. So like um, teaming up with your teaming up with the enemies, trying to take down the family. Yeah. Then um, she ended up obviously like all the people in Monset so hated her because you know. Her family name right right um but she's not actually the first lawrence family member to um to like betray the family like that because i can imagine during, so they seem like a uh, bunch of assholes so there must be more <laughs> um one of the leaders of the wanderers troop which was a uh like resistance against them back in the mm -hmm. day was actually um an heir of the lawrence family oh wow um and his he like fought them for years and like was a leader among his men um but then what ended up happening was he finally like got captured with his men and they ended up uh executing all of his men but leaving him alive as a punishment for betraying them wow gotta live with that grief now yeah. classic torture mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, but he was the, he was one of the Lawrence family, and he, uh, also, he also rebelled against them. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I guess everything's pretty hunky-dory now in Mondstadt, it seems. Yeah, that, the people that's still don't like Yola, but she kind of, she kind of gets around it by just, like, whenever they're causing trouble, she's just like, I'll fuck you up. And they tend to leave her alone after that, because they're still scared of her. <laughs> um... I'd be pretty freaked out too, like, because the Lawrence family was so incredibly powerful, and she's got, you know, the blood of the Lawrence family, and you're like, I don't like you, yeah. but like, wouldn't want to give you the chance to get back to the power again. You are pretty powerful, so wouldn't want to mess with you. Yeah. Um, she's also, she actually has some of the, like, highest damage outputs at Ooh, base. That, I feel like that makes sense, character. though. I've gotten, um, what's, I think my record is, like, somewhere in the 70,000s. Of damage in one hit. Mm hmm. Ooh. Which is like not insane compared to like what some people can pull off, but like. As like a not fully leveled, Oopsie. like. It's pretty good. Nice. My honor to serve you. <laughs> I just fell down from a very high cliff trying to find a star conch, which I think is at the top of a tower somewhere, or it's a big old plateau. Yeah. I mm. fell down to my death. Oops, sorry, Noel. Um, yesterday I was doing a domain in Dragonspine. Mm hmm And I, um, was just sitting in front of it. And there's no, like, heat source in front of it, of course. Oh, and you- So when I left to go- I left to go to the bathroom, because I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave one- I'm just gonna, like, I'll go to the bathroom, face the domain, and then come back. And, like, I come back and it's like, all your characters are dead. And you're like, oh, jeez, what happened? They, Died of sheer cold because there was no heat source outside the domain. Oh my god! So I just like I left the domain, went to the bathroom, um, came back, and they were all dead. <laughs> like, sorry, fam, didn't mean to do that, but yeah. <laughs> I have succumbed so many times to sheer cold and dragon spine, especially when I first got there. The first time I went to dragon spine, I was uh, chatting with another friend of mine who also provided me the impetus to start playing Genshin Impact more. And he was like, you're probably too low level. You really shouldn't try Dragon Spine. And I was like, I'm going to try Dragon Spine now because you told me that I might not be able to. And uh, managed to get my way at least to one of the waypoints where it was, you know, warm along the way. So that kind of that uh -huh. helped me out. Yeah. But uh, that Dragon Spine is awesome. I loved, I loved going through Dragon Spine and figuring out all the secrets there. I thought mm -hmm. it was such a cool area. 
Also, the weapons for Dragon Fight are so cool, too. Yeah! They're, like, really cool. The one, um, I think I, I've got the spear, which allows, like, the ice spike to come down from the sky and deal damage, which I thought was, like, really awesome. That kind of, I, I mean, it yeah. kind of works opposite to what I usually use with it for, because currently I have it on Zhongling, which I think is my only polearm character right now. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. she's got her fire polearm ability. Polearm characters are surprisingly rare. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know which other characters have um, polearms, but I, to, to my knowledge, oh. Zhongling's the only one that I've got. Zhongling, Hu Tao, Zhao, and Zhongli are all the polearm users, I think. Okay. No, Rosaria, too. Rosaria uses the polearm. Oh, okay. I don't remember if I... I don't think I... I don't remember if I got Rosaria during that last event. She's okay. I was I was kind of pissed with it because she was uh, touted as, like, a physical... She was touted as, like, a physical DPS. Oh, but she's um, more, like, I guess, elemental is, damage? She's not... And, uh, she's not a physical DPS. She is, like, a hard support character. Oh, okay. Like, she doesn't even get any bonuses. So they specifically say that she doesn't get bonuses from her, uh, from her ultimate, but everyone else in the party does. Oh. So, like, that's annoying. She's, she's, she's a support character. Which, like, that's, that's no big deal. Like, support characters are good, too. Absolutely. But, like, it wasn't what but she was kind of touted to be. But... Even that, I wouldn't have had a problem with if I'd actually paid attention instead of just going straight and building her up to uh, max as a physical as a physical DPS. <laughs> so so that was, probably you're like, like, oh, oh damn. Up. Yeah, I'm like trying around. I'm like, wow, these numbers are like super low. This isn't what I was expecting. And then I went through and I looked at her abilities. I'm like, wow, these seem kind of different from what I thought they were going to be. She's really <laughs> a support. And then I'm like, shit, I just got her to like level 80 perfect artifacts um perfect weapon and that's just a bunch wasted more now because she's not gonna use any of that oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it's like she's a she's a pretty good support unit for us mm -hmm. and characters like um i think she's a really good support unit for child yeah um because it's just permafrost oh nice um, is his child um is he cryo as well? He's Hydra. He's high. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. So, have, so what uh her ult her like Q and elemental burst does is it gives you um it, it, it like drops a sphere. It constantly applies cryo and deals like damage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, but the big thing is it increases crit rate by oh. uh increases That'll the crit rate of other party members around it. By mm -hmm. like 15, 20 percent. Damn. Which is like pretty good. That is pretty good, from the sounds of it. Feels like yeah. a pretty high crit rate. Um. Just like it's just it's really useful to have. And mm -hmm. she's like I don't know if she's like amazing like tier one, but she's like a decent character. You just gotta build her right. Right, right. But um, I did not build her right, and I wasted a ton of more and. <laughs> And I guess, like, you can kind of take the artifacts and assign them to a different character, but, like, all the more you spent on, like, ascending her, I can't get that back. Well, obviously. the ascension more is that what I'm really mad about is the weapon. Mm -hmm. Because that was super expensive to get up to, like, 80 and all, uh, all ascended. Right, right. And now I'm just out, like, all that mystic enhancement ore and everything. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And like the mystic the enhancement ore uh... is the bigger, the bigger ones, right? Yeah. And all the, yeah. uh... And not to mention the, um, all of the, like, ascension materials on the weapon. Oh, for sure. So I just have this, like, level 80 sphere just, like, sitting in my inventory with no one to use it. Right, because there's just not enough characters who would use it, so... Yeah, there, well, the thing is, even if there were, like, characters that could use it, it's specifically meant to be used by a, uh, cryo character. Ah, uh, so they'd have to fit both those, uh... Yeah, so there would have to be a cryo... Um, spear user. Mm -hmm. Which, I which guess we don't only, currently have one. The only one, one we have is Rosaria. Rosaria. Yeah. Ouch. No, yeah, Rosaria is the only cryo spear user. That's like oh, why wow. I was super excited when she got announced. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, oh cool, I have the spear, I can finally use it on someone. And nope, not how she works. Oh man. Well, I mean, maybe they'll have one in the future, perhaps. 
and it'll oh, be they, perfect. They, we have a, we have, um, we do have a cryosphere user confirmed. Oh, perfect. For, um, Sumera, or Sumeru. It is going to be, uh, his name is Sino. He Ooh. is, um, like Razor, he's, well, I think he's a jackal. Like, jackal ears. Oh, nice. And we don't, I don't know exactly what he is, but he does, like, an exorcism thing in the comics on uh, oh. one of the characters. So I'm excited for him. Yeah, interesting to see what that entails. Mm hmm Yeah, let me see if I can find some of the... Uh, I think we have his splash art. It was Sumera... In the trailer. Was that the pyro area? No, that's the uh, dendro. Oh. Oh, is that what the, the grass one is called? Yes. Ah, I never knew the name of that. I forgot about that one. Because I personally haven't seen any characters who have that. Just just enemies so far. Yeah. Um, and that was called Dendro or Vendro? Dendro. Dendro. Okay. Nice. Yes. Like Dendrogram. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, um... Do we actually have characters for that yet? I suppose we, we do not have there. any Dendro characters. Oh, okay. We, we actually don't. Okay. I was like, I don't think I've ever seen one, which is why I frankly forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we or have rather, it. Yeah, forgot it's about a, it being like a... The only thing we have is the Dendro Slimes. Yeah, right, right. Interesting. And Sumera is the, the Dendro area. Er, the, the Dendro area. Yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's the, that's the seventh element that I forgot about. Yeah, it's the one Actually. everyone forgets about because we have like... We know, like, nothing about it. Oh, was that the art that you just sent me? The splash art? Yep. For, uh... Name Sino. of the character. Sino. Oh, yeah. I love those jackal ears. Right? Cool. It's really cool. With the big eye up on top? Mm-hmm. What do you got? The sad thing is we're probably going to have to wait, like, another year to get them. Mm-hmm. I'll be waiting. <laughs> we'll all be waiting. How many characters in total do we have for Genshin Impact so far? I don't know if you um, know the number off the top the of your head. Somewhere in the high twenties. Nice. I, I can one sec. Teleporting somewhere. We have um, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, thirty-two. Thirty-two characters. Yep. I like that number. And uh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 5 stars. Mm -hmm. Five star characters like uh, like Venti, right? The, the really, really good ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, what star character is uh, Zhongli? Zhongli is a five star. That makes sense. That feels right. Yeah. <laughs> like he's, a, he's a very good character. I've been using him with a uh, Geo Traveler, and it is just awesome. They're uh, he's, he's Geo as well, right? Yes. Nice. So the Geo Resonance is uh, you get extra damage mm -hmm. when you have a shield up. Ah, and, which um, the shield would be good for. Yes, and uh, your shields are stronger. Oh, sweet! Like they take more damage yeah. before they break. Yeah. Perfect. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I gotta say, I haven't done much with shields and whatnot. I think the only... I mean, Noelle produces her own shield, which is pretty useful for things. Like, when you, when you use a Geo ability, you get those little crystals that come out, and then that gives you, like, a temporary shield, I think, right? Yep. Nice. Yep. I haven't been able to kind of explore that concept more than that. And I didn't know whether or not those shields were, like, similar to the one that Noelle just gets to create for herself. Because that seems to be, like, almost an impenetrable shield. Almost. Because I, I can yeah, almost Noelle take, like... Is, um... Like, I can take so much damage with that before the shield goes down. It almost it almost feels like it blocks all damage. And it seems to block all the knockback, too, from, like, bosses, too. Mm -hmm. That's, uh... Oh, God, what do you call it? 
That is um, resistance to interruption. It's part of what makes the uh, Geo. Um, it's part of what makes some of the Geo characters insane. Mm -hmm. Because they're like the only characters that get it, and it keeps you from being like knocked down, knocked back, or yep. interrupted in the middle of your attack chain. Yeah, what makes that um, perfect is like you can heal with Noel, obviously. So when I've got that yep. shield up and spinning around, it just like heals for everybody, at least for a small amount of time. Noelle is like the most underrated character. I, I, I love her. <laughs> she has the most adorable. Um, I'm also keen to lay eyes on this so-called Dodo King. I'll do mm -hmm. for um, me. Let's investigate. Hangout. Oh, like the hangout event. Yeah. Or uh, the, the the quest There's... the quest thing. Um. Yeah. So if it's a, it does actually give you a decent amount of rainbow gems. They're they're pretty good. Yeah. But uh, her is just just so cute. Nice. I, I haven't. Maybe ship her and the traveler. I gotta get, do more commission quests so I can unlock the other hangout events. I know when I when I had that one uh, uh key to use on it, like I just used it straight on Diona because I was like, I, I gotta, gotta do this. Yeah. I gotta hang out with the her. Her hangout event is pretty fun too. Nice. Like. That was the day that I like awesome. realized that I could actually like do. All that stuff because before before then i've been collecting all these like purple keys and stuff and i did not know what they were for but now that yeah. i know i will be able to find more which is very very convenient there's like i don't know there's not there's not a lot of like hand holding in this game for like uh i guess kind of teaching you where to find things and whatnot every once in a while like a thing pops up but like if you're just kind of clicking buttons all willy-nilly like what i often do i'll kind of i'll kind of miss that and i gotta go back and yeah I'll, I'll miss something here or there that's like incredibly important like you're not gonna be able to do your story quests unless you you know unlock them specifically or uh mm -hmm. or you same thing with like the hangout quest which you can get some cool perks from and at least some good experiences yeah like i miss having that the stuff. hangout quest the hangout quests have all been great yeah, but good, I think, good. You know, this was probably my favorite. I look forward to be able to doing the other ones as well, because I think, um, do you have to have you have to unlock the character too to be able to do that, or not really? Nope. Oh, you sweet. You can do it whenever. Nice. I was like, I've got everybody except Bennett. Ben Bennett. Bennett actually has a great hangout too. I think Bennett I've only is, seen like, one of my favorite characters. I think I've only seen Bennett once, and that was like, um, I think that was during the um, the, the the event where everyone was, yeah, Wind Bloom, where everyone was they was trying to learn how to like make a love letter from Venti, mm -hmm. getting him relationship advice. Very <laughs> well. Bennett is like Monstaff's most eligible bachelor. Eligible bachelor. Because there's there's <laughs> ship tees for him from uh Sisho, Barbara, and Razor. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. Yeah. I'm just trying to catch a fly on my desk. They seem to be attracted by my lights over here. Oh what yeah, I have like a huge infestation of ants that would like only come out at night. Oh goodness! And it no. goes light out. It was. I haven't seen them like once since then. Mm -hmm. But like, I still put out traps and stuff. Yeah, I think my problem came about when I started getting. Um, I I, I finally got plants. Like, I, I'm not flying. Mm -hmm. Finally, I've had plants for a while now. But in place of having a pet that I can care for in my apartment. Now I have pets to I have plants to give love to, and so when I got the obviously like little mites will be in the soil and stuff like that, and that's only natural. Yeah. But the the flies seem to the gnats seem to come in for the plants, and then realize oh there's a better light source which I am more interested in than the plants over on the complete mm. other side of the room. Yep. Which is a uh, I mean it's not too bad. It's just I should probably put up like a fly trap somewhere so that they don't just keep getting in front of my face because I get very distracted by it and all I want to do is clap my hands together to catch it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
I found these rings. We were back in like fourth grade. We would like chase flies around to try and kill them. And they got into the classroom. It's incredibly disruptive, and the teacher would tell us not to do it. But it became like a huge thing. Mm -hmm. and of course, we were all kids, so. Yeah, so that's okay. Like we're all just having a good time. Mm -hmm. My father would tell me uh, at work. Oftentimes, you'll get like the really big flies, and so he just kind of wait till yeah. they find a place. And then just uh, use a rubber band to, to snatch them. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? A rubber band? Yeah, so you take the rubber band and put it between your two fingers and you pull it back. And you get closer and closer to uh, to the fly. And then you let it go mm -hmm. and it'll whack the surface and kill the fly. That or you just shoot the rubber bands at them. And uh, apparently he's gotten pretty damn good at that. That's honestly really impressive. <laughs> right. Be able to like shoot a fly with a rubber band. Yeah, it took me a lot of practice to be able to do. <laughs> but now I've got I I've got a nice shoot a rubber band. I've got like let a... alone hit a fly. Oh damn! I got a, got a lot of practice with uh, shooting rubber bands because I would shoot rubber bands at people when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I would definitely do that. I know we used to do like paper wasps and stuff. That was uh. That wasn't- that was pretty simple. You just put it between two fingers and pulled back on the wasp. Oh my god, for the wasp? So, they're not like an actual wasp, but uh, so what you would do is you would take this paper and you would fold it in a very specific way. Really? And you could use a rubber band to shoot it, and if it hit you, it would really hurt. I can imagine People so. People call them paper wasps. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I don't think I've ever actually done one myself, but I could. I, I think I understand the concept. Mm -hmm. oh my God, I just I just found these rings that I can shoot the little harpistrum through, hit the target. Yep. That's, That's cool. another reason I think uh, Barbara was behind it because she had the harpistrum, and there's all these challenges related to the harpistrum. Yeah, right, right. So I I think Barbara did it. It's all coming together. You just want everyone sense. to have, like, a decent, uh, vacation. Right. Yeah. Everybody needs a break, and Barbara knows that. So let's just make yeah. sure that everybody gets a break. Relaxation is all so just like, a part of the process. Oh, damn. Hello, D-Luke and Kaya. Kaya. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They show up. Mm -hmm. Wait, what are y'all doing what here? That, this is, like... <laughs> they have they have some of the best dialogue in this class. I had no idea we'd run into you here. Like, oh, question. look at you here. Didn't expect to see y'all. So I love Clay's reaction to you, Luke. <laughs> Mr. Kaya <laughs> and Strange Man. <laughs> so it was Dodo King that invited you to these islands. What a coincidence. What do you mean? I'll get to that. But first. I want to enjoy some more of oh my gosh, islands. they're like totally dodging the question of like, oh, you all came here with the Dodo King too? Like, well, oh, maybe, maybe, but let's let's just enjoy the sunshine first, you know? Mm -hmm. Dave got the pan. <laughs> you must have gotten lucky. When we arrived, there wasn't a patch of fog in sight. Now it feels like I'm on vacation. But as you know, a boat wouldn't have made it over. No this is really coming together to be like that, that like, summer beach episode, but Genshin Impact style. It's like, let's forget about the, let's forget about everything else going on right now and just enjoy the fact that the sun is out, it's a wonderful day. Let's just enjoy ourselves. It's like, it's like the filler episode. The other thing, these islands are supposed to be like... Who knew that um, favorite bar super like had the dangerous, or, like covered in fog, they're impossible to navigate to. Mm -hmm. So how is it that Lisa and Barbara need a pack a G in a summer outfit? <laughs> I right? I assume you two traveled here together. And Barbara had Barbara had one too. Coincidence? Yeah, jokes I think cool. not. I don't think so. I think I think Barbara did it. This is all Barbara. <laughs> like we should go investigate these super dangerous islands, all covered in fog and whatnot. But like there may be something beautiful, like beach and serene on the inside. So like 
Might as well pack a summer outfit. Just to be able to enjoy the sun. Just in case, of course. Not like they don't already have that packed for any waking occasion. I mean, it is that time of the year. You never know when you might find a nice beach spot. Yeah. and Razor. Oh, and yes, Albedo and Razor, too. Tell us you all came here for a mm -hmm. vacation. It's a big party get-together. Kaya, if you're here, who is overseeing the Knights of Pavonius? The mighty librarian Lisa, of course. Interesting. In some ways, she's stricter than either of us. Any evildoers in Mondstadt need to watch out for the next several days. Yeah, no. Stop. Thankfully, I love like the. I also love the fact that. Um, where did Albedo and Razor? Have you gone to Albedo's dialogue yet? No, not yet. Not not as yet. But apparently they're all here his, as well. This is the best. <laughs> I should start with how we ended up here. We now we finally get to the. Okay, the dragon brought them here apparently. Yes. Something caught Razor's eye. Kaya and a uh, um and Diluc at least. And vanished into the ocean. Now Razor. Um, worried that he'd be in danger. Wait. So we also left off the dragon and glided on. Everybody just jumps off. But as yep. you can see, now everybody's on the deserted island. Is off the dragon. Oh Based my god. Experience, and now Albedo's just gone. Best to wait for contact. Well, D well done. Not that he was able to walk off, but you two. Are you brought up before too that apparently Albedo is also <laughs> a homunculus. Perhaps we're yep. fated to be doomed to. That is so cool. Right, Master D. Luke. Mm -hmm. Is that so? He's also like one of the most entertaining characters to play. <laughs> yeah, I think when we um when we played together that one time, me, you, and Meg, I think <laughs> one of you guys was were uh, playing Albedo. Yeah. Albedo's her favorite character. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That makes sense now. Only at your insistence did we change course and land here. Oh my. But your footsteps melt oh, the water. Kaya and D like go going back and forth again. Cryo versus Pyro. Incompatible sibling rivalry. If you had a geovision, I'd be long asleep on one I wonder too, like the fact that like Kaya in universe knows what he's used most for. Oh for sure. <laughs> I am a foil to my brother, so I will lean into it. Well, also the fact that, like, the most common thing people do with him is use him to make ice bridges to get places. Yep. And that's just what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He's like, I could just use my ice bridge across along the water. Very easy. But D looks fire feet. Make it, a uh, can't do that to cross water. Do you know which direction they went? For now, it's impossible to locate Razor. As for Albedo, he went that way. Then there's no time to lose. Let's go look for him. Time to go find Albedo. Search for the elusive homunculi. Oh, but first, star conch. Or just conch. Uh, just conch. Echo conch, or whatever Echoing they're calling conch. them. Echoing conch. Star conch are the essential material child uses. Yep, 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 yep. Child uses those, you said? It's a good thing I try to collect those as much as I can. Yeah, Child is like, he, he also falls into like, change the game characters. Because his whole thing is he can switch between melee and ranged attacks. Really? Like mid combat? Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that's my one of my biggest issues with like, um, I think a Amber is, uh, I think it's just ranged attacks. But yes. like, pyro is like a very very useful element, but I don't get to use it to its full extent because I can't get up up close and personal. Yeah, I think Venti has a nice um balance between like the the ranged and like the kind of like area of effect attacks, so that yeah. that's okay. Hey, I found it. The other half of the ship, it's here. After this samurai puppet is all that's left, <laughs> and we're no more capable. Venti is also like one of the best characters in the game. Oh, for sure, yeah. Definitely like it. That would I, like, I. I think tier one is him, Kutau, uh, Yula, um, Jean, and someone mm -hmm. else. 
Oh, I think Bennett. I think Bennett is like the only um, four star. That's also that pretty like, high as we're. Nice. Yeah. If only I had like the know how to be able to get the full like power from like the characters that are all five star, like Venti, for instance. I mean, like, I should probably just, I could probably just look up a guide for it, but I'm just too lazy to do that's so. That's what I do. Yeah. But also, if you want like advice on team builds and stuff, I can help. Ooh. I really want to have like, a team that integrates Diona very well, just because I want to have, I just want to have her in my party. But I don't know, I don't know exactly who she would go well with. You said you had catching. Uh, potentially. I have to check that in a moment. Shock, because her and Diona can work really well together. Nice. Is catching whole, um. Like, is catching Electro? Or catching no? Catching is Electro. Okay, then I think yes. I think I do because I recall having uh, I think another Electro character. Is Other than Electro Five Lisa Star. And... Ah, let me check that. My character. But like her, her and Diona work really well together because um, the Cryo Electro reaction is Superconduct, which decreases your resistance to uh, cold. To cryo and uh, physical damage, mm -hmm. and catching is a uh, physical DPS. Yeah, okay. I don't. I do not have catching, so I don't have that character. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. I think um... for some reason, for a moment, I got Mona and catching mixed up in my head. Mm. Mona's also okay with Fiona. You get mass freezes. Mm hmm. Nice. Oh, there's another one of these ball games. Harpa, Harpistrum games, not just a ball. Yes. Trying to find, like, the starting point for it. And then where the target is supposed to be. Mm. Oh, there yeah. it is. Uh, okay, I see, I see. I will switch that around. And again. That'll probably work. Maybe. A little game of ball. Oh. Did that not do that right? Oh. I have to turn that out of the way. The I guess the different colored ones have different effects on the Harpestrum. Yes. They add uh, different elemental infusions. Ah, uh, I see. Do they react together a certain way if you combine them together? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Ah, I see. Maybe. I'm slowly but surely learning the effects of each one. I think it's there what matters is that the uh, the last one has to be the has to match. The, yep. Uh, the the color of the target yeah. i just figured that one out because i was mm -hmm. like why isn't it working with the with the hydro ring and then i noticed that i could move an electro ring to the to the correct place to be the last thing mm -hmm. before it gets there and all of a sudden it works i was like oh okay that's how that yeah. works mm -hmm. i've been getting distracted by every single like conch shell as well now that I oh, know that I can see. get something from them, I'm like, I have to find all the conch shells. Well, you can, you not only get like the Barbara skin, but also like some really good rewards. Nice. Plus I've been trying yeah. to pay more attention to what the conches are actually telling me. So I, so I kind of see it's more crazy. of the, the madness of what's going on. Mm -hmm. where, where are you? you're up on top my first thought was that maybe this all the conches are supposed to be like on the shoreline but remembering that that basically just they, they kind of uh, the the water level or not the water level yeah change yeah the, the, the fact items, that it changed around rows. yeah so that's why some of them are like way up high because mm -hmm. apparently the all the lands can just go up and down as much as they please. Yep.
<laughs> Is there like an easier way to be able to like scale tall mountains aside from using like let's say like a boost from venti or the elevator abilities from like venti or albedo um zhao also gives you um you do uh with zhao you have uh less stamina taken up by climbing oh nice that's really just bad. that's just something for when he climbs in general or if he's in your party it's a party thing oh that's it's kind cool. of like kaya does sprint speed or, uh, that really? Stuff. I didn't know that yeah. either. They each have so all characters have like uh, two talents. Mm -hmm. They have passive talents. Okay, and I suppose that would be a pal passive talent: the uh, sprint speed yes. and the climb speed. Well, okay, they have like passive talents, which are like the special abilities they have and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's like adventuring talents. Which are similar to passive talents. Okay. They they like they they in some way affect the party and the way you adventure. But they could be anything from like cooking food better to like um, sprint speed and all that stuff. Mhm. Mm like I think. Let me think. Uh, officials is a uh, official special talent lets her go on expeditions faster. Kaya's gives you sprint speed. Um, D Luke refunds some of the crafting costs for um, claymores when you use him to craft them. Um, this is Yula. Yula gives you extra talent books when you craft them. Interesting. That's the that's the kind of stuff you find when you uh, like the the crafting and whatnot, right? Sorry, I was like, I was kind of yeah. half in, half out because I found a, there was like a wall ball thing I was doing with the Harpestrum now, throwing it against the wall a yeah. bunch. I was learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. But so those are, those are the, um, the adventure abilities that certain, certain yes. characters have. Because I know, I think, I think, um, certain types of cooking items, you can get like more of them or a special dish being made when you, uh, yep. when you do that. Well, every character has a special dish. Oh, Okay. Interesting. I don't think I've ever actually been able to craft those that dish, like ever, even once, because I've always been looking they're, for they're it. They're pretty rare. Yeah, I think so. But like every time I have the opportunity to, I do. So I, find it. I want to see what that special dish is. Yeah. Is that like? Um, I think. Yeah. When you when you unlock it, uh, is that like something you get another recipe for after you find? do it the first time or it's just like no it's always a uh there's always a chance that um instead of making the normal food mm -hmm. it'll be the out. special one you get the uh yeah it'll be the special one oh nice very well because she got on a boat and left her hometown um, she was very they're also usually pretty good diona's cool. is uh definitely not far food <laughs> nice um is yeah. it a lot more like is it what is a lot more like complex than that or, or is no, it like actually No, the, the dish's food? name is definitely not bar food. Oh, it's actually called that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's actually called definitely not bar food. Oh. Oh my god, that's great. Mm -hmm. Like definitely not bar food, but you know it's it's definitely bar food. Yeah. Most definitely bar food. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a, she's a mixologist. She's the bartender, of course. Yep. Hello there, Disney Queen and Chad. You're asking, how's it going? It's going rather pleasantly. I've learned so much about Genshin Impact. The I, uh... lore that goes behind it. As well as more of the characters. It's always a pleasure to be able to play the game with somebody who knows what's going on, because then I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm so much more involved, uh, so much more uh, informed than before. This game has kept me sane in quarantine, so I don't want to die. Nice. It has kept me... Like, the, the only reason I am still sane is because I've had this game. That's a nice baseline between everything else that isn't happening. Mm -hmm. Disney Queen says hey to you. Hi, Anna. I will be seeing you in... 
two and a half hours. Couple of hours from now. Good times lay ahead. Definitely, when you guys go to the store, let me know what you guys find there. I'm curious. Because we had... Uh, yeah, I, our... I, I already have to take pictures for Meg. Oh, perfect. Because she's she wants to know as well. Yeah. We're all just like, new game store in town? We have to know about it. We have to inform everybody what else is there. I know when Anna and I went to go visit the one uh, game store that we had not been to for, on our anniversary, we were told by at least one person that it was a little less, like, I guess, taking things seriously than another game store that we went to. Because the one that's closer to where the university is, is like, mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's a little, it's a little more pricey and they seem to really take like all the games and stuff very, very seriously. Like with the models of it all, making sure things are set up correctly. They've got a whole like Warhammer set up in the back, like with, with a bunch of tables with different terrains and stuff. More for, I guess, yeah. those types of tabletop games. But like this other place that we went to is, it's a lot, it's a lot smaller. It's a little more, it feels a little more personal. And they've got like a table yeah. to set up that, it's got like a little game, like a little featured game on it, and there's some mats that you can pull out to play like a game of magic or something like that, or Pokemon or whatever cards you've got on you. Yeah. And this this shop too apparently has a. Oh really? Nice. It's actually pretty fun. The other the other day. the same people who made magic. Pokemon is owned by them too? No, it's not owned by them. It was done by like people who worked on the creative team. Oh, okay, okay. Like the original, like when the game the trading card game was first created, or I guess the rules for it. Yeah. Oh nice. I received a letter. Cool. On the way over, the four of I did not know that. I know um a couple of a few months ago. Um uh Christina and I played some Pokemon card games as well because uh, she had a couple of decks laying around and we were like, you know what, might as well. It was at that point where I think, I don't know who it was that mentioned Pokemon cards first to me, but they were like, I'm getting back into Pokemon cards again. And I was like, that's cool. I don't have a deck for that. I got a bunch of cards that we have just in the box. I could probably put a deck together. But of course, you really can't go out and get those trading cards now because of apparently people just going out and buying out all the booster packs and whatnot and yep. trying to sell them for money online. The scalpers going out and inflating the prices. Oh. I think I, I think. You want us to pick up some for you. Ah, okay, okay. Nice, nice. It would appear. I think I, maybe I was talking to maybe I was talking to Glenn about it, but like they have to have like a like you can get on like a mailing list or something to come in and have like kind of a first grab at the booster packs before the before they put them on the shelves for the scalpers to come grab, and they kind of yeah. apparently they kind of do that in a way such that it it's longer it, it takes longer for the booster packs to actually become available for them to grab, so. If they can't come in and, like, get the quick grab, they'll just go someplace else. Mm -hmm. And your store won't be affected by it. I don't remember who it was that I was talking about that to. But, like, these small little game shops have to, like, come up with these, like, counter tactics to make sure that they've got enough cards for everybody and also, like, shoo away the ones who are going to take advantage of it. There's a very interesting interplay going on there. Kind-hearted, yeah. cat-eared gentleman that he. No, I'm lucky. I world. got a. Uh, I've Was been playing a lot of Flesh and Blood recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have, a, I have a really good relationship with uh Bill, so I just get like first dibs whenever there's a new set. He's guy over at Comic Fusion, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Glenn's mentioned Bill by name multiple times in the past. The red to the point where even I know who Bill is. I've never met him. <laughs> Oh, you know, I probably did meet him. I think I went to at least one pre-release at Comic View. Yeah, you've been to pre-releases before. Yeah. I don't believe this so-called Dodo King exists. I don't like. Yes, I guess I don't frequent. I don't frequent a game store enough to get on like a first name basis with the with the with the guys who are there. Although now that we've discovered that small shop, like I feel like we'll be going back there a little bit more. And they also have a little Discord server set up as well, that which I joined. And I'm like, I gave myself the board game role because I like the board games and stuff. It's interesting too. When I took a look at the uh, the Discord server, 
they have like a particular role dedicated to like because they want to try to run like pre-releases every once in a while or uh edh tournaments and whatnot and they've got like an a role specifically for like emergency edh players so like if they need at least one or two more people to be able to flesh out the entire tournament you can they can like ping you to be like hey we need an extra person you want to come by and join our tournaments for those who want to be like it's like being on call for i guess like like um i guess a nursing job or whatever but it's for like like edh tournaments is like that's that's yeah. incredible i've never i never thought of that that but like yeah when you need someone to fill in those spaces you gotta have a way to contact them you can't just be pinging everybody's phone numbers so that's why the discord server makes that convenient yeah oh this is a yeah, long puzzle I think, here. I think they're gonna start doing flash and uh, blood tournaments oh nice Soon. i'm no, looking forward to like them. When we get to meet up again to be able to try out flesh and blood oh yeah it's it's really fun we've got to turn <laughs> this one around i don't think i i know like over over text message you kind of like uh described kind of what it was to me but like can you explain a bit more about how like the the gameplay of it is now, so now we're like talking a, like yeah so it's less of like a magic like here's my battlefield of creatures mm -hmm. um I'm going to like be attacking you and everything and it's got way more to do with um like did you ever play golemancy no i haven't played golemancy okay it's the one game i made but it's very similar to that okay um you know it's got the whole like you're, it's kind of less of a like i'm slowly building up my board state to kill you and more of mm -hmm. like a here's this like um and it's more of a hey uh here's this like one turn of like build up where we rapidly go back and forth until one of us wins so like you're preparing for that the whole time yeah okay well, it's, not, it's not even preparing it's like you get these like little bursts of action on each turn oh okay and you have to like you have to you have to choose how to use your resources mm -hmm. oh i like everything. that I've become very, very enthralled by uh, resource management games. Only because, like, I just yeah. recently realized the games that I've begun to really enjoy are resource management games. I didn't know that they even had a name for it. But as I but as I think about them now, I was when we went to the game store, I asked them like, "Hey, do you have do you have games that are like this?" And he started listing off a bunch of games that I'm like, "Oh, I'm actually already really into these games, like Splendor, or technically Ticket yeah. to Ride." Or, um, Anna's got the game Cytosis, which is basically, uh, resource management. Um, except mm -hmm. you're, you're a, you're a cell. And you might be, like, the most, I, I guess, the most healthy cell. Mm -hmm. But that has been, that has been really cool. And so something like that, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if Flesh and Blood, like, fits that category, but kind of the resources that you build up over turn... Or something that you want to spend at just the right moment in just the right way to be able to win the game. Yep. I've been very interested in that stuff. Mm. Yeah, it is a very uh it's a very fun game. Nice. How many decks do you have of those now? I think uh, let's see, the other day you asked me to pick like I guess uh, the flagship character for the met for the deck. And I guess you build yes. a, you you build a deck around it, that character. Yep. Ah. Mm -hmm. I have, I think, eight or nine decks. Nice. I think it's eight or nine. Someone needs to sit. And most of them have been uh, promised to specific people. Mhm. Mm I think I p picked the bard character. I think the um, one that's seen bravo, the most. Yeah, the guardian. Yeah, bravo the guardian. He seemed bard-like. I am always, I'm most always partial to the the bardly characters. Yeah. The other day when we all went out with Anna's PT friends, one of her classmates, excuse me, also plays a lot of D and D. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was I was able to describe them like the tales of Taylor's the Swift and other such characters of my creation. 
Do you hear that? That sound means the tide is coming in any second. Um, to to actually, the of the so we had uh, Apollo over the weekend. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, yeah. We I think... had, uh... Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Meg was saying the other day that she was said she prepared her polo dress. Yep. Um. But anyway, there is a. Uh, well, we were there. Um. Apparently, do you remember Gavin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Harrison's younger brother. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they, they made him take the rice purity test. Oh, classic. He got a 24. Oh my. I can't remember whether high score means more pure or low score means more pure. For that uh, one. High score. High score means more so, pure? Very unpure yeah. individual. How dare he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny though. I do it's I would like, not expect, expect that. that from him. No, not right? at all. Yeah. That is not the like that's not the impression that I get at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh... uh Nice. I think I recall my purity test being rather low or rather low as well. I like to at least try th try things at least once in my life. That's kind of one of my uh one of my mottos. So I'll try anything at least once. Mm. Whoa. These uh, Harpestrom games get a little more complicated. Yeah, there's some that are like super easy where you just like throw it through one hoop. And there's the other ones. Um... Oh. <laughs> there's just the other ones that are like, oh, um, here's oh. like five different things you have to like maneuver into literally the perfect position. Yeah, that's. I think I'm on one of those right now. Like, they're at really odd angles too. Oh, there we go. That that mm, seems yeah. like a better angle. Okay, I think I set that up correctly now. This is pretty cool though. There we go. That should work, right? I think so. Maybe. Yep. Up and around and nice. Very, very cool. This is a cute little event thing. It's nice and it feels very digestible too, in the sense that I can kind of do it in a, in a, in a nice long sitting and not mm -hmm. feel like I'm missing anything. Yeah. I want to say, I think it was the Windbloom event maybe, where I was kind of like, I was on top of that, like, every week when something new came out, I'd go on to do the new content and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Which is cool for some. I think what I like doing is I like I like binging the content. Like, wait till most of it is... I mean, I don't think all of this is out yet. If there's, like, 38 days left of this, then I doubt it's all out by now. Um, but like, No, there's... I think it is. Um, I think there's only one more small update. Oh, okay. And then it's all out. But we also have a couple of, like, events and stuff that'll be coming later in the later in the update yeah because i feel like even if this is the very beginning of it like if it just started like there is a lot of stuff here already like i have been completely enthralled for almost three hours yeah no it is it's so nice to have like a new area to explore absolutely i'm looking forward so to be relaxing. able to discover some of the other areas in tibet that i haven't been able to get to yet but yeah like the exploration part i think is just it's my favorite part about these games. Like, being able to go around and just, like, discover what's new out there. Or, like, I think the first time I ever got to encounter something like that, aside from, like, games from my childhood, where technically the exploration was just discovering the next new area. But, like, when, I guess when Minecraft came out, just being able to walk into the distance and having just infinite amount of areas to explore... Not like not like you're you'll discover new things, but like I guess new towers and new biomes when things come out and whatnot. But that has always been like a favorite thing of mine to do. Oh yeah, just I, I really like the exploring game where you can kind of just like zone out and just like run around and explore. You know, you occasionally have like the fun characters you meet. Absolutely, yeah. Some of the random events that happen, or the, like the tiny little quests that yeah. you'll bump into. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a bunch of those, but like I've always got my mind elsewhere. 
so I'll forget about them, and then I'll look at a quest list later and be like, oh my god, this there's a quest like 3,000 meters in that direction? Why? Yep. And it's like in the middle of nowhere, but it's something that I just kind of forgot about. Yeah. Those ones can be quite nice. I think one of my least favorite. I I've got some favorites and some that are some that are not. I think my least favorite one was I think somewhere in Liwe, there was like a hide and seek game, with this one character, and oh my I god, I would, that was so sad. I was like, it was very, it was very disappointing. Like at the very end, it's just like, yeah, I don't have my parents anymore, so I'm playing hide and seek with strangers. Like, oh my god, but like, I was I was so frustrated trying to find like, where this guy was hiding. And I mean, I don't know, part of that was like very frustrating for me. But then we got to the end and I was just like, oh my God, I feel so bad that I was like angry at this kid for just wanting to have, just yeah. wanted to play a game. You can actually find his parents' graves. Yeah, I think I think I definitely remember seeing those. Oh my God, I've run out of artifact inventory space. That's that's a that's thing not possible. I how many artifacts do you have? I don't I don't know. I've apparently run out of artifact inventory space. Okay, let's um we're gonna make this really easy. So Sucrose is your favorite character? Sucrose is my favorite character. Um let's boost up do the you weapons. Have any, do you have any well no we're gonna do artifacts. Gonna okay. Do more artifact space. Okay, let's do that. Do you that. have any of the viridescent veneer artifacts? Is that a particular category of artifact? Yeah, you can actually so go um yeah, yeah, the I can, page. Yeah, I can select the you thing. Go to like artifacts and then yeah, filter it down. Viridescent, you said? No. I have none video. apparently. Ooh, okay. Are those ones you uh, can, like you, drops or you don't or, have any or, from uh, domains. Domain ah, uh, okay. I'll have to be on the lookout for those. Also like no one needs privy to But if you haven't found any domains, who's who's that? Hmm. Tell me again who your favorite characters are. Let's see. I really enjoy playing as Sucrose. I like Noel. Um, let's see. Other favorite favorite? Diona, of course. Though I haven't really leveled her up like at all. But I mean, that, technically, you don't need the levels up for the to increase the artifacts for her. Actually, I don't have any yes. artifacts on her right now. So. All right. Um. Because all of those are like. You usually want to do like specific domain artifacts on them. Mm hmm. I guess particular <laughs> domains have like the sets of artifacts that would be good for a particular character. Yeah. Okay. I gotta be on the lookout for those now. I gotta have like a list. For a while, I had like a, uh, a recommendation for like a particular weapon that I should put on. I think it may have been, I think it was Beto and another character as well. But I was like searching around trying to find like this weapon and then upgrade it as much as possible. Yeah. I can't remember what they are now, but I definitely got the weapons and assign uh, put them on that that character. Too well to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that I know that like Sucrose could use like uh the elemental mastery and um whatever the other one was, I don't think I have the build for that. I think I think one of the artifacts is like not the not the main buff that the artifact gets, but like the secondary one. I think one or okay two, okay three of them are elemental mastery. That's that's good then. Uh -huh. At least I had that right idea. Yeah, elemental mastery is the best on her. I'm wondering if there are any artifacts that have that as like the the main. Like I, I'm guessing there's oh, like a, there's a primal there's a primary benefit to the artifact, and then there's like a secondary secondary benefits. Yep. And I'm trying to find if I have any ones that have elemental mastery as like the primary. Most of these seem to be HP though. At least for the I think uh, elemental mastery flowers. shows up on the watches. Watches the most. Okay. Uh, let's see. They're like the sands of Anne, I think they're called. Yes, those are like the hourglasses, right? The sands yep. ones. Okay, I gotta find those. Okay, I see them. Those are time pieces. 
hourglasses. I'm trying to look for it. is the uh, the sands of thing a particular category as well, or that's just um, yeah. No, the okay. sands of Anne are just the watches. Just the watches. I'm trying to see which ones I got. If I have a sands of Anne. I see some adventurers, pocket watches, there's... No, no, the Lucky Sands Dubs. of Anne are just, like, what all the watches are called. That's, like, their category. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's, like, that's that entire artifact category. Yeah. Ah, I just got that. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yep, it does say Sands of Anne. I see that now. I was actually just gonna ask about that. Okay. So, the different artifacts are Flowers of Life, Plumes of Death, Sands of Aeon, Goblet of Anothum, and Circlet of Logos. Yep. Ah, uh, <laughs> I see that now. Never noticed that. They have like a little, there's like a little lock next to them though. What does that mean? Yeah, so that means they're not going to be, uh... so I mean, so one of the ways you can quickly level up artifacts is by feeding them other artifacts. Uh-huh, yeah. And so by locking them, that makes it so that you um don't like accidentally uh, use them to accidentally others. feed them to different artifacts. Ah, okay, okay, makes a lot of sense. And then LS is the lock button. I see. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Perfect. Now I know that. Okay, I'm gonna look for what does Sucrose currently have. I don't know, but let's find an elemental mastery one. I've got, I've got one for energy recharge. Is that the one that um, increases energy recharge? The rate is which... also good. Okay, cool. So for sucrose, you're gonna want to look for elemental mastery, energy recharge, and then mm -hmm. low damage bonus. Nice. Got some elemental mastery down here. The highest star one that I have is an instructor's pocket watch, which energy recharge seven percent. Which feels good. Feels yeah, alright. Um, energy recharge. I want to yeah. see if there's one with energy recharge and elemental mastery. Elemental mastery. Um, I don't know if ele well, yeah, there there might be, but aim for that. Especially at your level, you're not like looking for perfect artifacts. Right. So just, just things that'll get me by. To the stat bonuses and the uh, main uh, the main stat. Yeah, and it seems the instructor set list is very very good. That increases the elemental mastery. If uh, at least with the two set, and then also upon triggering an elemental reaction, all party members elemental mastery by 120. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, that sounds very mm -hmm. good. So I will. I think I want to filter by the instructor's set and see what else yeah. I got there. Instructor's gives like good energy recharge. Yeah, yeah. Energy recharge. That one's currently on Venti though, so I will keep that on him. This yeah. one gives elemental mastery and attack. Does attack work like that? Doesn't weigh into how much elemental damage you do with your attack, right? It does. Okay, that so, does. Well, okay, it depends. Um, attacks they're like specifically mentioned when attack is used. Like I think Noelle uses defense and stuff. Oh, on okay. Her like abilities. Mm -hmm. Um, Barbara uses HP and stuff like that. But I think Sucrose uses attack. All right. Let me let me check this cutscene. This plume looks like it's already got elemental mastery. The best that I got, so that's perfect. This is also elemental mastery and HP. Elemental mastery, more elemental mastery. That's plus thirteen. That's eleven. That's ten. That one's fourteen. That's best I'll get there. Perfect. That's good. Now I've got the instructor set. Let me see if I can find something better for the goblet. Yeah. That's the goblet that you should be looking for a Nemo damage. Yeah. Like ignore what set it belongs to, just straight in Nemo damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I can get the in the set bonus with everything else except for the goblet. Yeah. Damage, crit rate, healing exactly. bonus, nah. Energy recharge. Recharge uh, three point five percent. 3.1%, percent right. five. Deer, recharge mastery, crit damage, recharge plus attack. This one is recharge plus HP. 
That one's recharge and HP and crit damage. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Go all and see if I can find some Anemo damage. Yeah, Anemo damage only pops up on the Goblet as a main stat. Okay. I see there was a Pyro one. Pyro, physical, defense, physical, hydro, attack, defense, attack, attack. Anemo! Found one. Nice. The yeah. Exiles Pop Goblet. 5.2%. I'm gonna see. Can I filter by that specifically? I don't know. Nah, I can't filter by that. I just kind of gotta look and see. This one's plus five point two percent. That's the same thing, though. All right. Yeah. Five point two seems to be the magical number. Look for uh, yeah. All the so all the main stat bonuses are gonna be the same, but pay attention to the substats. You want um elemental mastery, crit yeah, rate and crit damage. Let's see if there are any other anemo ones here. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. That's got a crit rate. Uh, those are crit rate and attack. Do, 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 do. A Nemo again. That's a little bit lower, though. That doesn't have any other attacks. These are like the two stars, so. Go back up to the one I've got. Yeah, only try to use see. four four stars as much as you can. Yeah, I don't have any four stars for a Nemo damage, but the closest I've got is a three star, yeah. so. I just got yeah, HP and defense. Fine. And this other one is... Energy recharge, so I'm gonna go with that one instead, because that's got energy recharge and the Anemo damage bonus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that that's all taken care of, you can upgrade or enhance them. Yes. This Focus one on, I usually do the Anemo damage first. Good idea. Then um, I would go for energy recharge and mm -hmm. whatever your headpiece is. Right. Yeah. Um. I don't remember which one that does. Or what I currently have for that one. Yeah. You should, if you have um, crit damage, crit rate, that's generally pretty good. Yeah, I think a couple of them have that. Yeah. This will be the perfect way to make more space. I guess I haven't, I haven't done this in a while. That's probably why I ran out of space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. do that that's up to like level eight now it's pretty good oh did i just take it off i shouldn't have done that yeah no there we go i accidentally unequipped it for some reason recharge do any of these have i just want to make sure these have oh do they actually get more bonuses as they go up in level yep oh i was gonna say like there are now four sub, -sub options there instead of the original two Pretty cool. Damage recharge. Nice. Apparently there was some bonus up there. Bonus enhancement? Interesting. I've never yeah, seen that yeah, before. Every four levels you get bonus enhancement. Just ah. Just like nice. That's good to know. Yeah. That's at a pretty good level. Trying to get everything to at least, like, maybe level 8, at the very least. Yeah. That feels good right about now. Mm -hmm. Do artifacts have uh, ascensions as well? Or are they just, they just um, enhancements? No. no. I think only weapons have... Weapons and characters have ascensions, right? Weapons and characters have ascensions. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool, cool. And that one's at level 8. Yeah, these stats are, like, up now. Nice. It pays to know what's going on. So you said when you're looking at trying to get the most out of your characters, you usually look up a guide for that, right? Yeah, I... Well, okay. So, I'll look up... If I don't, like, immediately get the character, mm -hmm. I'll look up a guide to see, like, how you're supposed to play them. Right. And what like, kind of artifacts that you're supposed to use on them. Mm -hmm. um, some mm -hmm. of them, like, Eula was very straightforward, you know? Right. Like, physical damage. You definitely want her base attacks to be going up in level and her, uh, her elemental burst, but her elemental skill didn't really matter. Um, and, like, 
yeah, it was physical damage, so the stat was easy. But for mm -hmm. like Sucrose, when I was building her, I ended up looking up uh, guides and stuff. Okay, nice. Because with her, it's supposed to go um, for talent priorities. It's her elemental burst, elemental skill, attacks. Then um, for stats, it's um, a force out of Viridus and Veneer, which you can get by doing uh, one of the domains in Southern Mondstadt. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. I think if you if you're looking for a particular um, type, I, I guess type of artifact for that character, I'm sure like Google will tell you where to find them, and I guess on which certain yes. days certain ones will become available. Yep, nope. artifacts are uh, always up. Oh, Farms sweet. Okay. Up. I guess only the ascension materials are the ones that have certain days assigned to them. Yep, ascension materials and talent books. Gotcha. What is the, what is the talent book, by the way? I think I've seen a couple of those. So with you, okay. So open up your character screen. Oh, one second. Character screen. Character screen. Okay, and I go to a particular character or oh, talents. Hello. Here we go. Yeah. So go to talents, and yep. it's gonna tell you um, there's one for your elemental burst, your elemental skill, and your auto attack. Yep. Yep. I see now. It's gonna tell you what they all do, like any of the percentages for like how your attack is converted, what the skills do. Yeah. Also I going see now. To to uh, secondary talents, mm -hmm. which are like passives, you can't level them up, but they give you bonuses in combat. Right, And then right. the adventure skill I was talking about. And you can use talent books to level up I your skills to make now. them stronger. Yeah, I've done that before. I just forgot what a talent was for a moment. Uh, yeah. I was able to check, though, and one of them apparently had an upgrade needed. So, awesome. Sir Sucra, specifically. I wonder if I have any others to... Nah, I think I'm pretty much good on my other characters. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Bye bye, y'all. I think... I've been so distracted with these... These conch shells. I haven't mm -hmm. been... <laughs> I haven't been proceeding with things. But that's like one of the nicer things about this. Like, I don't have to feel like I have to look... I have to go towards the main goal. Mm -hmm. Oh, was this a... Oh, nice. There's the conch. There you are. That's what I'm looking for. The tides are getting yeah. higher by the year. If the water level rise... Oh damn, the water levels are rising. And everyone has to go to higher ground. What's wrong? Right? Jeez, so dark. They're just gonna drown. Island vacation, and then it's like, no, people died here. An entire civilization fallen. The rising tides and conflicts. Jeez, it's terrible. That's like absolutely terrible, my god. They lost their homes. Right. They lost their probably lost their lives too. Most of them. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing I wonder if like the echoing uh conches are like like only the only the speakings of dead people or like maybe it's like the last thing that the conches heard. That's what they repeat forever. It's so dark. It's a beautiful island. Oh darkness terrible past beautiful island but at what cost yeah oh hello there whopper flowers Leave it out to me. i think one of the most annoying part about a lot of the enemies uh are like the shields that they have like the elemental shields that they're gaining like some of the whopper flowers do that i think all of the uh the fatui members like have their particular elemental oh, God, shield. I hate Specifically, I hate fighting the the pyro member and the electro member because their shields are like impossible to get through. At least with my current setup, okay. I guess. I I'm guessing it's all about like just picking the element that like has, has a reaction with it. Yeah. And then so I'll take it down. Electro does uh, cryo cryo beats electro. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, Cryo beats Electro. Then 
Because Hydra would go after Pyro. Uh, Hydra, Hydra beats uh, Pyro. Mm -hmm. Those are the two elements that I don't have in this party. That's why I have the, the roughest time with them. That makes sense. But I know what to consider now. The next time I get into a fight with them. It's tough, though, because like you can't have, I guess, all of the elements in your party to be able to prepare for something like that. So you have to like see, like, oh, who am I going to fight? And then switch to the right party before you get to them. If you want to have an easy time with it and not just fight forever, like I often yeah. do. No. The two are the worst. I had to um, farm them for sigils because I got child and bee like right after each mm -hmm. other. I had, to, I had to go off and like um, try to farm the treasure hoarders for a while because I think Beto needs their, um, their little tokens. Yeah. Wow. You like that, huh? I think that's what probably that, that's what I had to do. I think I, I didn't do that recently, but I'll have to do that again because I need more of them. Yeah. Yo, Harry, welcome to chat. How are you today? How was school? Was school good? I guess you probably just get out of school unless school is over. It's basically summertime. I should hope that everybody's yeah. on break now. Uh, North is off. Yeah. I wonder how the, the, the schools are over in the UK, though. I'm not sure if they have a different summer schedule than we do over the, in the States over here. Yeah. Still got four weeks left to school. Nice. Well, at least you're almost there. It's almost summertime. It's technically summertime for, for me, but I don't... It's summertime doesn't feel the same way as it did five years ago. Or uh, even even yeah. last year, it felt different last year because I actually had a summer break last year because I didn't need to take the classes then because of the way that I changed up the schedule with the with the when I had to add the grad courses to it, I had to take away one of my uh, co-op work cycles, and so that gave me six extra months for classes. But I didn't need six extra months for those classes. I just needed three extra months, so I had three months left over, which I could use for, you know, I just took a term off, which was rather convenient. Mm -hmm. Ooh, consumption time. Gotta remind me to drink more water. I gotta get myself... I'm gonna have to grab myself some lunch at some point. I woke up this morning and I was, like, a lot hungrier than usual to the point where I actually made myself, like, a... A breakfast of sorts. It was just a little PB and J sandwich with this fancy bread we just got at the store the other day. I haven't had a PB and J in a while. PB and J is one of those things that I will forget about how much I like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then when I remember, I'll eat them straight for like two weeks and then become totally tired of it again. <laughs> just like one of those things. Yeah, I would have had like cereal, but I'm out of milk. Unfortunately. I don't think I've actually eaten breakfast in a very long time. It like, depending on what like phase I'm currently going through, I will either eat breakfast every single day, like as it's a, as if it's a part of my routine, or I will just be like, I not gonna eat breakfast because I'm just not in the mood for it. Like my thought is if I wake up at like 10 o'clock. I'm like, maybe I should skip breakfast for now because in like two hours it'll be lunch and that'll warrant like like a ham and cheese sandwich, which I'll enjoy more than like a bowl of Cheerios. Mm -hmm. But like, it also just totally depends on like what kind of mood I am. Oftentimes I will be hungry and then I will look and see what my options are for eating and I will become less hungry as I consider my options. Mm -hmm. That'll often happen to me. And then by that point, I'm like, I guess I'll just grab myself a cup of tea, stave off the hunger for as long as possible, and then I'll just go grab something else later. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, this new boss is a pain. Ooh, they added a new boss? Yeah, it's the... You saw him, the uh, samurai. Oh, oh, okay. Ah, I hadn't had a chance to... I, I guess at that point, I'm not able to fight him. I guess I'm going back yeah, to that eventually. He's, uh... Ooh, big old chest. Seems pretty fun. Looks daunting. Like, a completely unlike all the other bosses so far. Naturally. 
Yeah. Does he have any good uh, drops? Um, he's actually the uh, unique ones for uh, the new character that's coming in two weeks. Oh, Kazuha. okay, okay. He's the only one to gain uh, ascension materials from him. Oh, interesting. So you have to you have to fight him if you want the new character. Ah, Which okay. Is interesting because he's gonna be gone in like forty days. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess after that, maybe they'll add something else later on to kind of deter, so you can actually get ascension materials for him. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so this chest is apparently locked, and I need a code to open it. Fun. Guess I gotta go around and find that code somewhere. The goal is to unlock, you know, maybe maybe it's in my quest log somewhere where that code has already been. Discover the chest. Okay. I guess not. All right, I guess that's a, that's not actually the regular. I'll find it eventually. That's not the main quest. I thought that was the main quest. I was incorrect. I will proceed with the main one now. After I find my, there's my boat. My boat hath returned to me. Oh my gosh, hello there, dearest. You've come back to request of me exercise at my desk. Oh my god, this is the things that I subject myself to. So now I'm gonna... Oh my god, actually, this is totally necessary. Oh my god, I didn't realize how much I needed to get up and move. There we go. As high knees as I possibly can. I have a... I have a channel point redemption on my channel to remind me to exercise every once in a while, and some of these, mm -hmm. some of these exercises take up a little too much leg room and space, so mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of space over here, and oftentimes if I'm not careful, I will like whack my legs against either my desk, which is painful, mm -hmm. or my chair, which is less painful, mm -hmm. but still annoying. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. There we go, that feels much better. I went for Anna and I have been going running on Tuesdays. And so even though she's not here, I went off and I did my run yesterday. And uh, it's becoming less, now that we've been doing it kind of like on a weekly basis, it is not as painful as as it was in the, in the, in the beginning. So like now I guess yeah. my legs just kind of feel normal again. Mm -hmm. More apt for physical, more available for physical activity, should it become necessary. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else lies in wait. At the central aisle. Oh, I guess I'm, I, it feels like it's time to fight this samurai now. That's what it feels like. I'm actually gonna wait on that in a moment. I gotta take a little break for a moment. So uh, I'll be back in a hot second or a hot minute or two. So uh, I'll be I'll be back in a little bit. Peace yeah. out, y'all. Hello again, everybody. The break has concluded. We're all filled up on water now and ready to move on. Mm -hmm. While I was gone too, I ate a little snack. Oh, we have these. Granola. We have a lot of like tiny little snack bars that sit in our apartment. And there was this one that was like a Nature Valley. Like, I love Nature Valley granola bars, but this one just seemed different than all the rest. I'm not sure exactly why. Like, the packaging was different and had different decals on it. And it was also like not as you bite into it and it just completely crumbles. It was a lot more. It almost tastes. It almost felt as if it was stale. But like. Uh -huh. And the flavors were not as intense, but it had like a hint of yeah. like maple brown sugar to it. It was rather pleasant. I was able to eat it very, very fast, actually. That's good. Without much of a mess either. That's I, I love granola bars, but they just make a mess, and I don't have the wherewithal to always eat a granola bar over an area where I don't care if there are crumbs. Which, in my apartment, there is no area where I feel good with crumbs being everywhere. If I'm outside, that's that's fine. I can just wipe the crumbs off of my shirt. But I don't want to just eat over top of, like, a paper towel plate. Just because I want a granola bar. 
it kind of takes out the whole quick snack aspect aspect of it. Razor trusts. Also, I, I still really think Barbara's behind us. Not so fast. We need to think this through. Do you have anything else to substantiate your claim now? More so? So it seems to it goes like, oh yeah, this is like one of the most relaxing times I've had, and Cree's having fun, and it looks like everyone's having a good time on the island. Like, things were supposed to be like, the, like dark, foggy, like shrouded islands, and mystery and danger. <laughs> And now everyone's just like chillaxing. It's like, just someone planned this. Oh, for sure. And like, it's so well put together, and every all the darkness and whatnot is like all, I guess, covered up and has been. We don't we don't focus on that. Like somebody had to be behind it. But also, um, I just I still find it so weird that Barbara had like summer outfits picked out for them. Yeah, like they were so prepared for it already. Oh damn, hello there, Samurai. Oh, hello there. Oh, I see the, the strings being pulled from afar. Aha, it's cool! Yes. It is indeed a puppet. Humanoid automation automaton of unknown origin. That's pretty cool. difficult to manage either not too bad at all oh, okay attacks are getting a little oh, a little spicy okay there we go now I understand the trouble that may be involved here on the fact that it can make like avatars of itself to attack yeah. as well. Oh my god, and switch places with them. Oh god. And apparently attack from afar. Yeah, no, don't use range attacks against it. It, uh, it can No, it'll get... It. Yeah, I'm going all, all up and in on it. It's got, like, a lot Actually, of, like, you... AoE attacks. So, like, I can't even stay close for very long. Yeah. Actually, how do you normally play with two players? Um, usually what I'll do is I will use the elemental abilities of everybody else to kind of get some some base to start off of. And then I'll send in Sucrose to deal damage while they're affected by the, the first one so I can just swirl. Oh. She's yeah. usually not out for very long because, she's, I mean, I guess she's not as defensive as others. So she'll wind up dying pretty easily if I keep her out for too long. Yeah, yeah that's how you're supposed to play her. Yeah, but uh, what I what I love doing is I'll send out Zhongling to put a uh, Guoba to set a fire real quick, and then so long as the enemy yeah. staying in one spot, I can use her uh, elemental burst ability to get it all fired up. And then while the enemy is all fired, I will take Beto out and use Electro to just get a bunch of okay. overload happening. Yep. Yep. Now it's exactly where it's supposed to go. Nice. It seems to work out the best for me, so that's how I stumbled upon that strategy. And of course, like, if anybody's feeling down, I can just shield with Noel, go in, and heal everybody. There we go. Dodo King of the Sea, lying in wait. If this is in fact the Dodo King. Oh, look at those gems. Ask the expert. Yeah, Alberto, what do you make of this? Before we get to the crystals, well, why don't we start with the machine itself? Our previous conjecture was correct. This giant in Inazuma attire is a machine modeled on the human form. Interesting. Was it built for the fighting? Like ruling cards? I'm afraid so. Oh, Paimon just brought up a good so point of comparing, like, the Dodo King puppet thing to, like, the ruin guards. What do we know about the Ruin Guards? Like this. So, they're from uh, Conria. Oh, okay. Military-grade weapons. Mm -hmm. That I guess made their um, way into Tevat 
I guess for, or, or rather, uh, made their way elsewhere for war purposes, I suppose. So what happened was uh, when Conria was destroyed, there was no one left in charge of them. Mm -hmm. So they kind of just ended up like wandering. Oh, nice. I'm sure the shrewdest among you have already come to the same conclusion. I figured they have probably had to have some sort of backstory as well. Yeah, they were um they were codenamed Field Tillers. Oh well, I mean that's certainly tilling some type of field. Yeah. Apparently, the Conrians like to name things as like innocuously as possible. <laughs> field Tillers, you know, the ones for war and fighting and destruction. They've been manufactured from a particularly rare type of ore. Transparent. I believe they must have a specific function. We found a Conry is really interesting. I can't wait until we hear uh, more about it. Any is that like... That I mean, I know currently... Um, I'm not sure exactly how much of the world you can explore. I know you can go to Leeway. I know you can go to Mondstadt. Are there any other areas that you can actually physically go to right now? No. Okay, just so it's just those two that, for now. But Inazuma should be coming out in uh, around four weeks. Okay, cool. I didn't know yeah. of whether or not, like, because I know there are large swaths of the map that I can't get to. It's all blocked off by the boundaries and whatnot. And I didn't know if that was, like, restricted because of where I currently am in the quests, the quest lines. Nope. Uh, so the game actually is supposed to have a 10-year uh, lifespan. Of course. Oh, wow. So, like, content has been planned to come out over the next 10 years? You mean before the game yep. Wow. I wonder what exactly happened. After that, what, what's supposed to happen after that? I guess there just maintenance and other events. Perhaps this or is that, like, that'll be it? I think that's, that's it. Oh, damn. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of, like, a game that, like, it's released plan for this amount of time and then afterwards like it just kind of lives on i guess within the merchandise and lore and other sort of content that was put out for it i'm sure somebody down the line will open up like a i guess a private server for it so people can continue to play or maybe then genshin impact 2 yeah i'm expecting genshin impact 2 because this game has been like insanely successful absolutely yeah like, the fact that it was kind of like... I, I remembered seeing advertisements about it before anybody had mentioned it, but I really didn't pay too much mind to it. But then I started seeing articles popping up, like, like it's the ne next, like, big game. And anytime I see something like that, I'm like, nah, I don't need to play that. But then, like, like you and other people were just like, no, 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 you really need to try this game. And took a chance. And it is absolutely what everybody chalked it up to be. Like, I have not had, like, and this much fun in a game for a while. Southwest yeah. Isle. Good thing, too. It came out at the perfect yeah. time. I'd say it's oh, yeah, with COVID. For, yeah, for, like, everybody needing a... Just a really good guess. game to di kind of distract them from things. Yeah. Take your mind off of it. Something to fall back on. I know at least... When, obviously, when uh, COVID started and whatnot, my baseline to fall back on things was all of my schoolwork and stuff, which really didn't help me because that was already my baseline for things. And that just kind of, like, it, it, at that point, not being, like, physically in classes, I realized, like, this is literally all I have to do. And I know that this is going to be gone in a year. And so I kind of had the foresight to try to kind of look into other things and i'm glad i kind of had that moment to consider it a year ago versus i feel like i'd be a lot worse off now if i was still in that point being like i have no work to do what do, what do i do with my life where does she get the energy i got i got plenty of things to focus on now yeah like i feel like forced me to like take a good long look at myself like figure out where the issues were and gave me some time to like change it and be a better person absolutely i mean everything that's happened over these past like five years with everything going on in the world and obviously america where we're all living it just you you see certain things that allow you to have a different perspective to be able to kind of look inward and be like well i don't like this so I'm going to be this, or I like where this is right now in, in me, so I want to make it even more 
good for me and for yep. other people as well. It's yeah. been like it's it's had a lot of it's had a lot of a lot of downsides and a lot of tragedy, but for those who came out yes. the other side, it's been like really really eye opening. Mm -hmm. And a good chance to remind I mean at least to remind me in my case that you know there's more to the life that you live than just doing your work or getting the job. It's all about like just trying to yeah. enjoy yourself and being able to live for other people mm -hmm. as well. Like I'm I am only my I am only myself if I don't communicate if I don't like keep those communication paths open with other people. And like I don't want to just be just myself. So mm -hmm. in order to fix that, you know, gotta connect with the friends more. Or branch out yeah. a bit more, find find some more acquaintances, make those make more of those connections. Which it's kind of like I feel like that's almost like the extrovert side of me talking, which really got yeah. it was really kind of, I think in past years the introvert kind of took over, but then the extrovert kind of came back a bit when COVID hit and was like, well, we're not hanging out with people and we want to be hanging out with people, so let's plan for that. Let's plan for when we can go out and hang with people again, and uh, kind of get myself out of that mental state where like the the intro and the extra were kind of they're still at odds, but kind of in harmony. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's a time and place for each yeah. one of them, they all get their moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like if not if not for COVID happening, and the workload being less, and things not feeling like feeling like you don't have to necessarily do everything the responsibilities are telling you to, because at least with with school stuff, if you were having trouble in classes, you could just like pass fail the course. It's kind of like a you know, it's okay. We're all going through a rough time, so take it easy. At least that's how mm -hmm. that's how um that's how Drexel kind of did it. It didn't make the workload didn't get any yeah. less, but it felt almost but as if had, like... there was something like fall back on, I guess. Mm -hmm. If if things didn't go well, like I didn't need to worry too too much about it. Which mm -hmm. was, I mean, I'm sure it worked against for some people, but it worked really really well for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was lucky to be out of there. Yeah. So, I'll still remember um, my one professor who, for all the exams that we had to do, he did trick Seems questions. Like he would put stuff on the exam he never taught us. Oh, man. And if we did it, he would know that we were, um, that we were cheating. Right, right. Because, like, we were allowed to use, like, open notes, open books and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he just, like, went through, picked the stuff that, like, wasn't in there. Right, and so, like, if you... Question, like... And I guess probably had multiple in there like that, not just... Not just one. Yeah. I feel like if you did just one, you'd probably get a couple of false pos uh, false positives. Yeah. But you had, like, three or four. Mm -hmm. Significantly less chance of randomly guessing those correctly. Yeah. There must be some reason Man, that's dastardly. Reasonable yeah. he was I mean, like, he was a very harsh teacher. I mean, I got, I gotta think like nowadays. You kind of, I feel like you got it. That's kind of like the counter to those who are going to just look everything up on the internet. So maybe you want to have something in like that. I know, um, my my last my last professor that I took a class with, um, we it was just just a few weeks ago that we finished everything up. But we would have quizzes every single week and we'd be tested on what we saw in lecture that week and i would kind of always go back and reference the lecture slides uh during the quizzes and whatnot because like I, I was never ex even at the time i was never explicitly told that i couldn't so i would go mm -hmm. back and make sure to try to answer those things correctly and so down the line like during like week seven out of ten she's like yeah yeah i put a question on there that I don't think we went over very much, so hopefully you all like kind of searched it up for yourselves and got the idea of the question as you answered it, and I hope you all understand it a little bit better now. And that kind of took me a moment to be like, so wait, you were, you expected us to, and like kind of leaned on the thought that we were going to look it up anyway in order to do well on the quiz. And uh, I mean, I, I didn't look too far deeply into it after the fact, but like, that's absolutely what she intended it for. And I was kind of like, um, that goes against like every academic integrity passage I've ever read on a syllabus, including the one that she gave us. But like, all right, I guess I'm in the clear then. 
Because I've been doing exactly what you expected me to do and allowed for me to do, I guess. Yeah. If it's not a so, like, I guess that kind of works out then. A fish scale. A fish scale? It was like a, the question was like she had asked us about this scoring metric for uh, attempting to align like sequences of letters together to see like how good one aligned up against the other. Like, um, like fever and lever would be a really great alignment because they share more than half the letters. But something like, mm -hmm. uh, uh I, I don't know, or like watermelon and melon would go really good because melon's inside of melon, a uh, watermelon. But something like, um, chassis or, uh, chaser might be a little off because although a lot, they share a lot of the letters, there's a lot that also are, aren't in there. Or maybe like, like, I don't know, chastity and chaser. Like, it shares a lot of them, but not, not, not between the two. So this is a score like we never we we had not seen yet, and so I looked it up, did a quick calculation, made it all work, and she was like, "Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't cover that in class, but I'm glad you guys kind of you know, took the initiative on your own during the test to look it up yourselves." And I was very confused at that, but I did well on that quiz, so I guess it's okay. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Like I I certainly won't complain about something like that, you know. Like flower petals, yeah. light blue like ocean waves, light yellow like autumn. Ooh, so now we're at the point where we've like got the big bubble shield. We got the gems from yep. the um the one puppet guy. Talking about the greedy spirit of the sea. Huh. Is that what we have I wonder if like I, I I guess maybe I'll find an answer out soon, but I wonder if like the tragedy that occurred to this archipelago occurred because of some like angry spirit that still roams. And looks for more offerings. Well, you know, there's some like there's something weird like spatially about it because there's a portal that leads back to a Mondstadt. Oh, in the uh, I think I I guess I didn't go back to that. I didn't see that anywhere. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's not in the main story quest. It's one of the uh. Oh, it's one of the other ones. Like the uh, oh. It's one of the like islands puzzles okay oh is that you like find the... a okay oh wait a minute i did see the ceiling i found the ceiling but i don't think i uncovered the puzzle not not completely is it the ceiling that's yeah. like really really up high and then it comes down low and it's trying to get into the rocks but there's nothing there mm -hmm. yeah. uh, okay i feel like i should have used elemental sight on that and i realized that like and like 30 minutes after i left it mm-hmm I feel like that might have might have helped with that. Okay, I gotta go to this gigantic conch now. I'm gonna definitely figure that out. So, like, interesting that that's another uh, quest thing over there. I thought perhaps it was a yeah. like, it's just it's a portal back to Mondstadt for the purpose of being able to get back to Mondstadt. But like, you can fast travel. So I thought it was just trying to like nope. explain it away. No, it's a. Uh... Interesting. So it's like it's like actually plot relevant. Did she do it right? Well, I wouldn't say plot relevant. Well, I, I don't know yet. I haven't finished all the Al stories yet, so mm -hmm. that's it. By stories, do you mean like the uh, like the Act One, uh, Act Two, yeah, Act Three quest? Like island quest? Oh yeah. Okay. To be able to flesh out the rest of whatever narrative is playing out over here. Yep. You made the moon. Yeah. Nice. Maybe this type of fish only comes out after dark. Or to put it another way, we're gonna be here all night. Big old fishies. Catch fish. Mm -hmm. Eat. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go fish. Hey. I love that. Cleese just like, let's go fish blasting. Like, yes, I forgot that your motif was bombs and explosions. All like I like the kid character like how they how they handle the kid characters. Mm-hmm. It's like there's nothing weird about them. They're just like kids doing their thing. It's like kids doing the thing and being really like... excited about the things that they're excited about, like Klee and explosions yeah. and like I, I think Dion is a kid. I think that's what that's the impression yeah, I get. She is rather uh, small. She's thirteen. Oh, nice. Dion is thirteen. But like being really into like uh, mixing and bartending and stuff like that. Like that's that's an adult thing. I would consider explosions to be a. Uh, 
not a kid thing. Maybe not an adult thing, but certainly not a kid thing. Like firearms or bombs. Chi Chi is probably the most kiddish, which is funny because she's the one who's like a couple thousand years old. Yeah, she's the one who's basically the zombie back to life, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I met the actual the reason she's a zombie is because of Zhao. Ah, okay. I think I remember seeing that during the Zhao quest. No, it's, um, it so what was happening was she was um these are big islands they're bound to be more she was uh caught up in a battle he had with a demon oh damn so uh she ended up getting killed mm -hmm. and so Zhao convinced the other adeptus to bring her back to life oh nice kind of as like a i'm sorry so that's why she's a zombie but she's not under anyone's control however you see fit right she can continue living on because like because it was like oops i didn't mean to do that but uh she's just a kid she should be able to enjoy the rest of eternity because it was my fault so let's, let's bring it back. the ultimate um tsundere <laughs> really yes oh man Like, he's just, he's a Sundari. <laughs> like, no getting around it. A Sundari to, to like, who? Like, the other, the, the, the higher Everyone. gods? Everyone Everybody as well? Everyone. <laughs> it's not like I care, like, but I care. I'll convene everyone when not like I like you like, or anything, um, but I, I like you. I don't care about you, you're like... We have let our focus but I think going, you do. Like, imagine it's, like, raining outside, and he'll be like, you can't I don't care, I care not for the rain. Something. And then you'll, like, sneeze, Traveler, and he'll be like, take my jacket. Sure you take a right, time right. To enjoy yourself too. Yeah, it's, it's really adorable. You know, I, I was just... <laughs> what I mean is... Yeah, that's that pretty was, much... I feel like that's textbook Cinderella. No matter what is waiting for us down the line... But he's got that dark aesthetic to him, so the, the contrast between, like, the I don't like you, but I do like you, is even more pronounced. Yeah. Plus, he also has one of the uh, coolest charge attack animations. Traveler. Nice. Thank you. I don't think I ever had the pleasure to see that. Anyway, I hope we can all find moments. I remember at the time, though, like, it was a... I'm hoping he comes back and whatnot, because I want to I wanna try another he chance will. at Jow. He's... he's... He was, uh, he was pretty popular. Yeah. Like, extreme, to really ex popular at the time, I think. I remember when I was yeah, streaming during um, that event, there was a lot of talk about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of hype. Much, much hype. Yeah, he's, ah. uh, he's, he's a great character. Magu Kenki is the name of that puppet character. Yes. Oh, uh, that's like the, uh... Oh, I see. Each each chapter has its own set of challenges to go with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's pretty cool. Oh, gotta go back to this one, apparently. Yeah. This one? Nope. There we go. There. Nope, that's the wrong button. That's the one. I go over here and... Nope, I keep clicking the wrong button. That's the one? That's the one? No, it's not. Oh, they're just they're just new. I was looking at chapter two, the um the uh full speed ahead, like going through the rings and stuff like that. And uh one of the moments I guess was just unlocked for me. By the way, hello Astro. I see that you have popped up over there. How are you today? Playing some Genshin Impact over here with my very good friend, Matt, aka yeah. Final Rhapsody. Stream's going well. Thank you for inquiring. It's uh, it's been nice. The new uh, 1.6 just came out for this game, for this one here, and so uh, there has been apparently at least four hour, almost four hours of content that we've been exploring in this new area. What am I supposed to do now? Uh oh, I guess the next event is not available yet. Ah, yeah, that's it. Tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. So I guess I can't see what's inside of that bubble yet. Unfortunate. Yeah, sadly. I guess I'll go around and do some more. Uh, I'll flesh things out a bit. I'll go back and find the um, the Mondstadt portal. I think it was on a uh, broken isle. I think I think I see it. Uh, I think it's the one. It kind of honestly, it kind of looks like a. What's the big camel-looking robots? Uh, droids from Star Wars. Uh, droid decos. Like the big, the big giant camel things with the four legs. 
Oh, the AT-ATs. AT-ATs, yeah. The, I think it's the island that looks like... It looks like an AT-AT from here, honestly. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Astro knows nothing of this game except that it's got a lot of in-game transactions. It can. There's a lot of the... It's a, gotcha. There's a gotcha. There's a gotcha aspect to this game. It's a lot of... Uh, you roll the dice and see what you get. And if it's not what you were expecting, oh well. Get more gems. Try, get more yeah. coin. Try again next time. Or you can you can buy stuff and get buy more gems. I for one have not done so because I just kind of take my time. I'm a very casual player when it comes to stuff like this. Oh, what is this bubble coming up from the water? Oh, the bubble has been oh. There's like a certain area of the sea that's got bubbles popping. And as I follow the bubbles. Yes. Oh, follow those and you get money. I was going to say, I just, I followed one bubble and I'm following more bubbles. Hey, mm -hmm. look at that. I got that bubble. Now, go to the next bubble. This is cute. Bubble, and then, then the next bubble. <laughs> bubble one pop, bubble two pop. And then, where's the next bubble? More bubble over here. It's got some Wind Waker vibes. I was, I was just saying that before. Uh, Astro, you're totally right about that. I got the same vibe, just like roaming around the water and wandering. Even more so before, because before we got to this area, it was all fogged over, and you were kind of like, like, uh, surfing your way, or sailing your way through the waters, trying to find enough waypoints to light up the entire, the, the entire archipelago. Archipelago, archipelago, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh oh. And there's the ball game over here. Do you know for that one Mondstadt portal? Do you... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I see the... Oh, the wall is lit up. I see that now. The wall is definitely lit up. That is new. Oh, it's a... Oh, I see the puzzle. I understand. Looks like I need Hydro, Pyro, ele Electro, and Cryo. So, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's make another party for that. Hydro, Pyro, oh, Animo, Cryo. Uh, or no, not, yeah. Uh, Hydro, Pyro, Electro, Cryo. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'll deploy them. Yeah, let's do that. So I guess, should I use the ability on it? Or, maybe I gotta go talk to the, uh, I gotta go hang near the Sealy while I'm that character. Um, there's also... Yes, yeah, I think it's weird to find the Sealy. So I got the Sealy, and the Sealy is hanging near, uh, the Hydro element, like, sigil on the on the thing. And I'm trying to see if there's, like, a... Play oh, I, I see a little... I see a thing down here. Maybe I gotta... Yeah, there, there's something that tells you the order you're supposed to uh, do them in. I want to make sure I'm like... So I used one water ability. And then... Actually, it's upside down. So maybe I should do it in the yeah, opposite order. You can, you, so the way you have to get them is the... Uh, um, you have to use the Harpastrum ball. Oh! Good idea. Because I, I can throw it at it. Ah, okay. Yep. That's a good point. Oh, Okay. Can I, like, charge up the Harpastrum ball with, like, a particular element before throwing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, there's little, um, what do you call them? Are there the, little uh, hoops? like, hoops and stuff? Oh, they're the hoops! Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Oh! Cryo, Animo, Pyro. And then... Oh, I can switch... Can I switch them around? Yes. Oh. Oh, I see. I see now. I see. And is there one above, too? Oh, is there? Yep, there's one above. Where is the one above? That must be the, um... Let's see, not Animo. That must be the... The Hydro one. No, 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 not the Hydro one. Yep. Just kidding. Uh, Cryo. Cryo must be the one above there somewhere. Because I don't see a cryo hoop anywhere. This 
Pyro one I can't adjust. The Anima one I can. The Hydro one I don't think I can. Let's let's try that. So is it? Uh, Hydro is the one that's upside down. I'll try that at least. Oh, I see. There are like, it's the it's the little um, it's the pedestals. The pedestals yep. have to be activated in a certain order, and you can do that with the heart uh, the heart pastern ball. I okay. see. Okay. And then over there, if I switch this one around, oh, I gotta do pyro next, I believe. And I can send it through this, I see, okay. All right, all right. There goes that one. Red. Mm -hmm. And now, animo. Uh, the question is now, where is the Animo pedestal? Oh, there's one right there. So I guess I can... Oh, I want to go to that position, right? No, that's the other direction. I'm going to reset this. Now it's in that position. If I adjust position two, position one goes that way. Or if I reset it, I guess maybe that'll work. But that'll just send the ball upwards. Hmm. So right through, it'll go up. Will it bounce off the top? And come back down, or...? Uh no, it just keeps I'm going not sure. up. I last I've done this one. Hmm. Because I'm trying to figure out how to send the ball. I I see. I mean, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't need the ball for this one. I can just activate it. Yeah, I could just. I could just activate that one. And then the cryo one is over there. Okay, so use the harpastrum balls for the ones that you need to. Or yeah. or if you don't. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Okay, because I did it in the opposite order. That's fine. Now that I know the proper order, though. Right. Now I, I, I get it. I think I have to go get ready for uh, the game shop. Yeah, no problem. That's like an hour. I got gotcha. you. So, thanks for having me. Absolutely, no I problem, man. It was a blast. I learned so much, yep. and I always do. Great to be here. Absolutely. Thanks. See ya. Peace out, Matt. Bye. Now we'll go back to over here. Now it's just me and y'all. I'm gonna close up this Discord call over here. Make sure, give my computer back its resources. And we're back into it. Back to puzzle time. Now I need to do it in the order of Pyro. Pyro comes next. Pyro comes next. So let me, uh, let me edit things. I'm just gonna edit my info so that I'm not advertising that with the final Rhapsody anymore. Harpastrum Ball Fun. Harpastrum Ball Fun. There we go. I like that. Astra has no help that you can give. That's okay. I think I figured this one out, actually. That one needs to go... Not that way. If I adjust this to position number two... And I throw the ball at it... Ball. Ball ability. Go. Go forth. Go forth. Okay, how about how about this ball go forth? Ball! 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 Now I get to switch this back to position number two, or rather position number one, and throw the ball through the other hoop. I've always been a fan of puzzles in games, and this one in particular, this is particular this particular event that they've got going on right now for the release of 1.6 is a... I, I like the concept of it. It's very, very cool. The puzzles are totally up my alley. And they're not, like... They're not incredibly difficult to wrap your head around. So it ain't too bad. Also, I see now that, uh... I just recently upgraded this character, gave them a little more buffs with their artifacts and stuff, the way that she was supposed to be ran. 
And the damage seems to be increasing. For the most part. Although I should probably switch back to you, do a thing, then go to you, and then do the thing, and that's that works out better. And then fire. Because fire is very good. Fire good, fire yum. Kinda like that. And then Nice. Now I can switch back to my other party. The main party. The one that I have the most fun with. You guys. Y'all are my favorites. Some of my favorites. So now I've got that there. So I guess the Sealy is no longer there. And there is now a portal. Which I guess I'm going to have to go... I got to go through that portal. Oh, that's why these little a animal guys are here. If I collect a, three of these little... If the uh, if I collect three of these little sprite guys, then I get a little boost. And I see two more. Yes. Still going, you see? Still going indeed, I see. It's almost two o'clock. Matt's going to get ready for the trip that he's taking with you to the books to the to the game store. Can I go inside? Can I go inside? I was able to go inside. What happens when I jump through? I don't know yet. Hey, look at this! I'm back here. I am. I am. Oh, I know where I am. Oh, where'd the Sealy go? There you are. Oh, don't run away from me. Don't run away from me. You're still going. I'm back in a completely different area now. Oh, look at that. It's in these rocks. I can break those rocks. You should get ready for that, too. I mean, to get ready for something, put on pants. What's the difference? Wait for the Sealy to return to the platform. Nice. That is so cool. And a big old chest, right? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're about at the four hour mark right now. I'm not exact. I th I'll probably be playing for probably about another hour or so. And then I'll pop off for the day. There are more things that I want to do with my day. Specifically, some improvements to stream stuff. I, I have to do two. There are two main things that I want to accomplish today. Today, I want to accomplish the fiance gift, which I will say nothing more about. And I also want to do a couple more stream-related things. I've got some ideas that I want to implement. I won't say anything for that either, because I want it to be a surprise. It'll be new for everybody. That and, of course, do some work stuff. I could always do more work stuff. So now I'm back here. Can I go back to that portal? Is the portal gone? I wonder if portal went away. Portal? Portal? Come back, portal. Don't you come back to me, portal? Portal. Nope, that portal was definitely not there anymore. It's a one-way trip. That's okay. I can probably just go back to it. But before I do that, I'm gonna get grab this lamp grass. Lamp grass? You can tell it's lamp grass because it's grass that looks like a lamp. They had some very, very creative names around here. Someone needs assistance. So we go back to my map. Go back to my map and... Golden Apple Archipelago. I have more back here. There was something interesting in the middle there. Main cannon make ready fire. Don't know what that is. Sounds like fun though. And then there's Magu. Magu? Magu Kenki. You know, I'm gonna fight that guy again. Apparently, I get a reward for fighting him two, three times. But first, before doing that, it's time to do some butt kicks. It's butt kick time. Ow! <laughs> I was just mentioning before about not having enough room and whacking my foot against my chair. Oh, it's okay. We're recovering. We're a strong individual. <laughs> No pain, no gain. Ouch. My heel is still throbbing. It's okay. I'm gonna go after this Magoo guy. Oh, I keep going too soon. I keep going too soon. Whenever I say portal, one of your, fr uh, one of your friends' is gamer tag is portal. That's all you can think of. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I can, you know what? I'll consider this a shout out to your buddy portal. I'll, I'll consider it that. Oh, I can't get too far away from it. If I get too far away from it, then um, I lose space on my controller. I don't want space on my controller. Okay, now I'm gonna get back in my chair before I continue that. 
All right. I feel better now. I did my butt kicks. I've I've done what you've asked me to. But at what cost? At what cost? Okay. Now let's take care of you the way we intended to. With the swirl ability. Oh god, don't. Nope. Okay, I got whacked with the attack. Unfor oh, we're doing it again. Side leg lifts. Number 10. We went from number 1 to number 10. The cost of another. Of course, this is the cost. This is the cost. Alright, I need to heal a little bit. Yep. I'm just, it's just kind of raising my leg. This is kind of raising my leg is all I'm doing. Just kind of raising my leg to the side. Side leg lifts. You lift your legs to the side. That's exercise for you. That's been a lot of ex uh, leg exercises these past couple days. Damn. There's been a lot of them. Like running the other day and um, more running. Uh, everything else, of course. Oh, you were, you were at level 50 now. I was going to say, you were more powerful than you were before. I see that now. Please don't hurt. Please don't hurt. Don't hurt me. You are definitely more powerful now than you were before. That's unfortunate. For me, at least. Not for you. It's the, the, the unfortunateness is just for me. And right, now I can sit. Now I can sit back down again. There we go. I can finally sit down and maybe relax for my day before something else comes up and absolutely messes with my mojo. Consumption is fine. I like consumption. Reminding me for the hydration is always appreciated. And usually not involving pain of the heel or any other parts of my body which is totally my fault it's nobody else's fault but my own but even still yeah you're out of workouts for the day you know there didn't used to be a there didn't used to be a limit for those workouts but uh you know if you can't somebody abuse their power and uh we can't we can't have that around here all right let's 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 get this the way it was intended to do it's just a bunch of electric powers and fire powers together. If you combine electric and fire together, then good things happen. Uh, until your character dies, in which case you should heal them. And after you heal them, uh, you can get back into the fray with everybody else. Did the heals happen? Heals happen? Let me, uh, you know what, let me, let me increase the buffs. Let me increase uh, the buffs for everybody. Everybody can use some buffs. Want some buffs? I got some buffs for you. You want uh, one of these buffs? Uh, I don't need, those are the really, really good ones. I don't need those buffs. Let's get an attack buff. I'll do a defense buff. And honestly, do we have a crit rate buff? Crit rate? Ataku? Was that Ataku? Was this Ataku? That was damage. That was Damagi. But what about crit? The crit rate? Crit? 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 Where did crit at? Where did crit? Where did crit? Where did crit at? Oh, there's crit. Nice. I like that. Alrighty, let's get back into the first. Oh, and also, I should probably heal. Those masks are very precariously placed around my body. Oh, that looks like it's gonna hurt in a moment, so might as well heal my character while I still have the opportunity to. Uh, you and you, eh, uh, yeah, it's good. All right, run! Oh, okay, I was not able to avoid that. That's fine, that's fine, everything's fine. I'm fine, you're fine, we're all fine for fine, fine. I've gotta increase my elemental, uh, Let's see. I got. I, I just learned these terms. I learned the difference between these terms. My elemental, my energy recharge. Oh, you got me. My ele my elemental recharge is faster now with super, so I get to use my swirl attack more often than before. Oh god, that's not. Nope, that was not good at all. That wasn't good in the least bit. Ah, not with the phantom attack again. It's a, on the bright side. I'm kind of invulnerable in that position. Just kidding. No, I'm not. Magu Kenki. I was not expecting the fight to be this difficult. But it is more... Let's see. I think he was at like level 30-something when I fought him the first time. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were really going for it, friend. You're really going for that. I should heal again. Oh, but after running from that... Oh, God. Oh, might not have been the best decision. It's okay. If I die against this guy, I'll just do something else. Oh, y'all are getting full. Yikes. Oh. Uh, I wish I could see from this menu what current buffs I have active right now. I can only see it from here. It looks like I have... Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. 
got me with those flash attacks. I don't want you to get me with those flash attacks. Don't flash me. Oh, God. I guess if I jump at that one, it managed to, to avoid it. That's good. Nope, phantom attacks. Oh, God. I'm not in the right place. I always run to the wrong area. You know what's also really weird about this boss here? The mask. The eyes just keep moving. It's freaky. The eyes keep on going around. They're like, where are you? I'll find you. The all-seeing eyes of the Oni Mask. There we go. I managed to successfully dodge that one. Lucky me. My whoops. Oh, no. oh, but there was a second one. How dare you? No, not again. I'll switch to you, and then that won't happen. Oh, God. Oh. Ah. Now imagine if he lifted his arm or to flash you with his lion titties. That was scary. I suppose I'd be okay with that. I feel like if there were, if I were uh, a little more attached to my child side, perhaps I wouldn't be as a uh, personally attacked by that. But if this, if this lion individual wants to flash his lion old titties at me, then I guess we're just going with it. Okay, do that, and then we're gonna swirl it so you get all the goo, all the. No, you're in the wrong spot now. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I had a plan, damn you! I had a plan. More than halfway gone. It's, fu it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's not fine. It's not fine at all. Yeah. No, please. No, please spare me. Spare me. Don't spare me. Just overload instead. Nope. Sparing was not an option. Okay, just swing around. Swing around. Kind of has a Digimon feel when you're fighting them. Interesting. I wish I had a proper perspective for that. I think the only Digimon game that I ever played was... Dig it was either Digimon World Dawn or Dusk. I know my family had both of them. However, I only played one of them. Oh, please no. Oh, I managed to avoid that. But uh, that's the only Digimon... Actually, I, I lie. I lie. That is not the only Digimon experience I had. I also played some of the Digimon games for, like, the uh, the PlayStation one. I, like, did the Digimon World games. I played those ones. But it kind of, like, the Digimon vibe I get... I, I get that because it feels like, uh, like the characters, like... Um, some of the Digimon themselves, like, they're anthropomorphic... They're, they're forms of... Anthropomorphosis looks very similar to this. Like, this could very well be a Digimon. It's kind of got that vibe to it. And Noel, my healer, is dead. That's fine. Nope, I just don't don't kill another one then. Do this, and then we're gonna heal up our characters. You've only watched the shows. Ah, okay. I didn't watch a lot of the shows. They were just not on the network. They were just not on the the networks that I was watching at the time. When I was in my younger years. Oh, you're totally full. You can't eat. Unfortunate. You're not full, though. You're dead. You died. So you're not full at all. But you lost all your elemental abilities. Unfortunate. I have the shield to protect me. And then fire ability. Oh, God. No. Ah! Ah! Fire up! Ah! Jeez, okay. Two, two attacks. Usually would be better than one attack. If it were me making them. No, 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 no. Why? Why would you do that to me? Here, heal up again. No, you're in the wrong location! Uh, I was going to use my heal ability, but I cannot do that when you're not there. Oh god. Nope. Not good. Not good. Very not good. It's okay. I think I think I will be able to survive and come out the other side. However, it'll be very difficult doing so. Here, use this. And then do it again. Do it again. That's a good attack. That's a very good attack. Okay. That's not fun. fun. Run. Oh, why didn't you run? Do this. And then I just noticed you're giving me cryoness. Stop doing the phantom attacks. I don't like that. You are a disagreeable fellow. Has anybody ever told you that? Disagreeable fellow? I still couldn't run away fast enough. There was no way for me to run away fast enough. You know, the proper way to deal with something like that might be to go fly up in the air, but I currently don't have a character equipped that lets me do that. Here, do this, and then that should help. Ah, oh, yes. You have fallen to the ground. And I may collect the goods 
from the flower that grows from Bime dead body. And now I'm adventure rank 33, which is perfect. That's wonderful. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Very good. Let's go listen to one of these conks. You know, it's weird. Like, all the shows that I watched when I was younger, specifically SpongeBob SquarePants, called them conches. But apparently, you refer to them as conk. Like, you conk your head on something. If anybody's ever had, like, fried conk, tasty. Pretty good. Strange component. Razor hungry. Oh, that's Razor! <laughs> that's the wolf boy. That's wolf boy talking. Water on the left. Just so much more water. Oh, yeah, that was it. So, apparently, some of the other characters got here by dragon. Don't ask. But one, one of those characters jumped off of said dragon and plop. Yes, you can fry conk, because you gotta remember, shelled creatures have, have like, something on the inside. So, like, the conch is like, there's like a little sea creature that lives inside of the conch shell, and you can fry that and you can eat it. I think, I, I, specifically, there's a place down south that I know of, uh, where my parents usually go for, um, actually down in, like, Vero Beach, where Anna's family usually goes, or Hilton Head Island, which is where my family usually goes. But there's a place that sells fried conch fritters. And they're pretty good. Not good at it. You can fry. Is like, like mega hard. Well, no, because like the you know the the little the little creature on the inside. It's like it's like mussels. When you cook the mussels, you eat the stuff on the inside, or like uh, oysters and clams. They got a little like slimy creature on the inside. And I assume that's the case for conks as well. Though I've never seen a living conch ever. I've picked up many a conch shell, but there's never been a living like water breathing slimy creature on the inside is salty. i've never had that but needless to say if there is a, if there is a way to cook conch i don't know how they do it but they fry it i mean like i don't know the implementation of they do it. i know that they fry it but the implementation i'm not sure of and you can eat it and it tastes all right it really tastes no different than any other fish that has been spiced and fried accordingly but uh yeah i won't disturb you razor you were doing a, you were doing great right now I just, I love this character's hair. That hair. Incredible. Just comes right out the back of that little thing there. It must get... I, I've worn hoodies before when I had long hair. And it is unpleasant how warm it gets underneath those hoods. Ugh, not a fan. Do you just smack the conch? I'm guessing you open it like you would other shellfish. Yeah, I guess you just... Or, or maybe, maybe, uh, for all I know, you might be able to take... Because, like, for a, mu for a mussel or for an oyster, you have to crack those things open in order to cook what's on the inside. Or maybe, I think if you steam an oyster, it will open up on its own. I'm wondering if maybe if you take the whole conch shell and all and put that into, like, I don't know, frying oil, maybe it comes out of the shell? Because, like, you don't eat the shell. I mean, maybe they, they probably, like, garnish the dish with, like... Maybe they garnish the dish with um, with the conch, with the actual shell itself. But I doubt. I I, I doubt. I don't think you can actually eat that. I Me mean, don't think you can. I Me mean, don't think you could do that. Yeah, let's just. Oh, I gotta. Oh, I gotta defeat the monsters. I gotta defeat all the enemies. Okay. Uh, defeat all the enemies. I'll kill all these things. Okay. Do 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 do. Oh wait, I can come out of this. Get out of here. There we go, that worked. Oh, nice! There was a little thing. I don't know, man. Boiling water idea seemed like the best idea. Boiling water probably would work best, I would think. Because uh, when you steam... I know at least with clams. Um, steam clams is most definitely a thing. Oh my god, there's more of y'all. Hello. Hello. Bye-bye. Uh, let me pull arm you. Bye-bye. Oh, stop that. Not a fan. There we go. But I know steam clams is most definitely a thing. And I believe when you steam the clams, the... I don't know, maybe it, it gets them all unhappy on the inside. And then it, uh... And then they fall, I guess. Where is my time limit? Didn't I have a time limit? There's like a time limit that I need to defeat these enemies? I don't know where that time limit went. Bye-bye. Well, they're all dead now, so... We did it. I got 200 shiny flotsam. Nice. Where's my boat? There's my boat. 
Honestly, I've always been a fan. I'm always a fan of seafood. I love seafood very much. So I could go for clams or oysters right about now. Really anything to get my fix, honestly. I went out for sushi the other day. That was very, very pleasant with a friend who I haven't seen in a while. Correct you if you're wrong, but the dude who voices Ben 10 and Sasuke is in this game too? Maybe. I did never watched a lot of Ben 10 when I was younger, so I wouldn't be able to have, I wouldn't really have the ear to be able to determine it. And I don't think, if Sasuke is who I'm thinking of from Naruto, I never actually watched Naruto either, so I wouldn't know, I wouldn't be able to know that by ear either. So, uh, that might be a question for the IMDB. Or, uh, behind the voice actor, might be able to say. Ben 10 is about... I remember watching a lot of, like, the original Ben 10 when I was younger, but it was so long ago, I really don't remember it now. I, I have, like, very, like... My memories fade fast. So, like, I honestly forget about the things that I watched when I was younger, and so I need to... I need to, like, re-get them back. So I watch them again. That's why I'm really happy that all these other, like, Cartoon Network shows have showed up on HBO Max, which my fiancé's younger brother pays for. Thank you, thank I guess. Thank, I guess. But so I can watch all those TV shows now to remind me how it was when I was younger. I get that nostalgia because I forgot about it. My memory is a very frail thing. Naruto is decent, but not your favorite. Naruto is like incredibly long, and that's definitely something I want to... I want to conquer that eventually. But not now. I will not conquer Naruto any time soon. But one day, I will definitely have the stomach for it. I had the stomach to watch all of Dragon Ball. Except for GT. I never got around to GT, but I watched Dragon Ball Super, the original Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and not Kai. I watched all of it. I was very happy with it. And there was like, there were, there were a lot of episodes in the original Dragon Ball, let me tell you. But it was very enjoyable. I felt like I was watching like a piece of history. It just, it felt that way for me. And I was able to get through it. Very, very childish. But like, the original Dragon Ball was a very like, it was very child friendly. It was just kind of Goku- Young Goku doing things that a child would do if they had, like, if they were a martial artist and were very skilled at martial arts. Kind of before the whole Super Saiyan thing. That was, that was after the fact. Like, hey, your ability to become, like, this giant golden monkey thing is, uh, yeah, that's because you're not human. You're an alien. Like, oh, really? It's awesome. I, magnificent. Magnificent show. Naruto is long because it's got a lot of filler. Yep. Yeah, that's what I've been told. There was a one of my fraternity brothers who uh, he was the he was the guy who really pushed me into watching Dragon Ball because he's a super, super Dragon Ball fan. God, I love Kyle. I miss that man so much. I, I, I believe he's doing well right now. But he also was like, anytime you watch through, there's a little bit of filler in Dragon Ball as well. And he's like, if you ever get through it, I'll tell you which one is filler. And you don't have to watch it, because you can go right past it. And I watched all the filler. I'm the kind of guy who loves, like, if you tell me, oh, you shouldn't watch this particular part of it because, like, it's all filler, I'll be like, but I'm going to watch it anyway. Because, because I gotta, I gotta. Because why would I miss parts of it? And honestly, I, I half the time when I watch anime anyway, I kind of tune it out in the background of something else. So I don't really remember. But, yeah, I'll, I'll wind up getting through it. GT wasn't even made by Akira Toriyama. You're absolutely right, which is why it was never really... I never really felt so inclined to feel like I was missing something. Like, I never felt too... too behind by not watching it, because, like, I just... it was... it's not even original content. And then apparently, I mean, from what I can tell, none of it is canon. So, like, I'm not really missing anything. Can't do that during combat. Okay, I need Sucrose's ability to get you out of here. Stop. In the water. Stop. Don't shoot at me. I need to go get my thing. Uh, I gotta go get my boat. Hopefully the enemies don't respawn by the time I get back. I'll be back for you, enemies. Naruto's filler was pretty terrible. I can imagine. I feel like I've seen... I, I've like, I haven't like. I have seen Naruto, but I've seen like a lot of memes of Naruto. And there's just a lot of stuff that I've seen that I imagine is from the filler. I can't really bring any of it to mind, to be perfectly honest, because it's been a while since I've seen... Naruto memes. I had another friend from college who was really, really into Naruto. And so he would show me the Naruto memes. He was also into, like, Steven Universe and whatnot. And I, I personally, I like that stuff a lot better. So we would chat more of the Steven Universe and other animes. Or uh, he recommended to me one time this anime 
called i don't remember what the first part of it was called but it was called goku dolls i think i think that was the one but the premise of that show is you have a few, like a group of four mafia members who failed their boss but still want to contribute to the family and so the bo the boss is just like fine you're all going through uh, uh gender swap surgeries and you're going to become idol girls like these these buff yakuza men now as cute lolly girls but they still like the narrations were always in the voices of the uh, the yakuza members and that was always that was always hilarious i really enjoyed that show that was a that's a that's a recommendation only decent thing to come out of gt was super saiyan 4 that was like gt was the one where i actually wanted to watch that the most because when i first learned about dragon ball it was because i saw like the whole super saiyan thing online i was like where the hell is that from and they're like it's from the show called dragon ball and i was like how far does the super saiyan go and gt gave like you know for example super saiyan 4 and like stuff like that was the transformations always got me i've always loved the idea of one thing becoming something else the idea of the transition was always something i was like that is cool i like that but yeah the, the the goku dolls anime is both funny and scary i mean that was at a point in time where i was kind of a little i guess uncomfortable with cutesiness things like i'd watch something that looked cute and i'd be like oh my god i feel like i'm taking a personal attack to my manliness therefore i feel that secondhand embarrassment just by watching this and so when he had showed me the opening to that it was much more to the cute side you see like these cute idol girls who are just like oh my god we're idol girls and then they're like these yakuza members in the background and i didn't get it at the time i didn't get that at the time but so when i actually watched it and realized what it was i was like oh my god this is actually incredibly entertaining and i i love this and it was very much enjoyable definitely a, a good watch indeed indeed <laughs> and this is to go even further beyond go beyond plus ultra and then scream more screaming if that was indeed a my hero academia reference i think i i think i tied into that i tried to look through i thought i wasn't caught up in my hero academia apparently i was because i was trying to look for an anime to watch the other day i wound up uh, settling upon watching uh noragami this anime about a small god who's trying to be get it big but uh, he it, it was okay i'm not i'm not really into it very much but i wanted to get i wanted i thought i wasn't caught up with my hero academia and i don't know where it was in my mind but apparently, my mind remembers as me getting to the point where I watched the fight uh, between uh, whoever was going on, and because I remember, I remember one for uh, all for uh, one for all, obviously with All Might, and all for an all for one. I remember that character, and I thought I remember a fight taking place between them, but apparently that's not the case. So that might have meant I actually watched through the through the sub because I think the sub is already past that point, but the dub hasn't caught up yet. Oh, and that one was Goku going Super Saiyan 3. Oh, okay, okay. The quote was so... The quote was so... It felt so generic that I felt like it could have been either of them. There's a lot of screaming in those kind of... Uh, what's the word? What's the word? It's a Japanese word for, uh, like, like heroes. Heroes and things that are superpowers. That, is it Super Sentai? It's not, I don't think it's Sentai. What is it? Sh shonen shonen things i don't really know all my and ofa have definitely uh, ofa have definitely fought yes yes they definitely have for sure the question like i my i discussed my memory thing before i don't remember exactly where i left off i just remember shonen yeah i think shonen was the one but i don't remember what episode i left off of because it was a while ago it was at least a year ago that i watched but i don't know exactly how much of the anime was out at that point and how far i could have watched at the time so uh that just means i have to go back and watch the entire show again because the entire show itself was absolutely a joy to watch so why not go back through it again because it's great relevant and superheroes man people with quirks and powers i love that i think one of the things i liked about that anime the most was that they didn't call them superpowers they called them quirks because everybody had their quirks and i was like I feel that. We've all got our quirks. I've got mine, you've got yours, we've got ours. And I've always liked that. It's calling them quirks. I was a fan of that. Because it felt it felt like our our uniquenesses 
were totally acceptable. I always liked that. It was a very inspiring anime for me. I very, very much enjoyed that one. Now you're dead. Let's get you again. Oh, I've been trapped. Oh, there's a... There's a thing. Oops. Oopsie daisy. There's a pretty good amount of episodes of Frit... Uh, Frit, you know, it doesn't have any filler. I don't recall there being any real filler. Anything that I... Anything that I remember watching from that show was all something that had some sort of plot relevance. Like, more or less everything. Oh, am I shooting in that direction? I wanted to shoot forward. Yeah, there we go. Shoot you. Kill you. Kill you. Oh, now I gotta kill... Now I gotta kill you. I won't kill. I won't kill you. But I thought it was a... I, I like... I like My Hero Academia. Very well put together. Very enjoyable show. Very lovely. Oh, can I not just... Can I just explore that barrel? Try to explore that barrel. Give me that barrel. There we go. Oh, we are still having a good time, so... I'll take that out. Bye bye. There we go. But that was one I wanted to want to go back and watch. Every single time I try to find like an anime to watch, I'm almost afraid of the commitment of watching that anime. Like if it's going to be a real, if it's a really long one that's got a lot of seasons, like got a lot of seasons and episodes to it, I'm less inclined to start it. Because I'm not sure if I want to... I don't know if I want to get into that right now. I am I am a binger. When I start a show, I binge it. I really do. So when I start something like that, I will just kind of keep on watching until I get to the end. And that's kind of like a kick in the head for shows that aren't completely out yet. Because I'll wind up watching it all. And then I get to the end and I'm just like, all right, next episode. Like, oh, but there's no, there's no more episodes. And then I have to put it onto that imaginary list of mine that says, I'm going to go back to this eventually. But what that really means is I say I'm going to get to this eventually, probably never do. And if I remember it, it's a, it's a situation like My Hero where I like, I'm like, I don't remember where I left off. So I know there's a site for that. It's called My Anime List and I should be utilizing it, but I don't utilize it. So I should be utilizing it. I know Anna uses my anime list because she'll keep track of, she'll rate the animes that she watches. And so that's, I believe that's where she keeps all of her, her ratings. Best arc though is the UA School Festival arc. It's very lighthearted, but also very serious. Is that the one where they're all in the dome? Because if that's the one where they're all in the dome, I really like that one as well. Where we first see, or one of the first times that we see like the, uh, like the artificial, the artificial quirk bird thing that's supposed to fight up against all my i think it's called nobu that thing might have been called nobu if i remember correctly no it's not that one okay not sure which one that is then the school festival i don't remember what that entailed then my memory is always very fuzzy so i apologize if i can't bring it up to bring it up on memory there's also the possibility th there's also the possibility that my memory is totally playing me and I actually never got to that point in all and I'm just lying to myself because I've forgotten. I've forgotten so much that my memories have been completely completely uh, incorrected about it. Pretty sure I haven't seen it. All right. I I believe it. Is that like do you know what season that's in? Cuz I don't I guess I'm saying, I don't remember what season I got into. I pretty much only remember whether I finished something or whether I didn't finish it. And I definitely remember not finishing My Hero. I definitely did not watch everything. But my mind makes me think that I did watch a lot. But even still, that might also be incorrect. That's in number four? Alright. It's possible I never got to that point. I just like, you know what, maybe, maybe I'm thinking of a different fight. Because my memory makes me think that it was All Might versus All for One. However, it's possible I was just imagining another fight scene where All Might was versing some very powerful character in a totally wasted cityscape. That's what I remember in my head. I remember that. And uh, that's what I have in my mind. And according to my knowledge, I think it just inserts in that all oh, that enemy must have been. All for one, obviously. It must have been, right? Because that just makes sense in my head. I don't remember. Again, I gotta go back to it. I gotta go back and watch it again. And I got some... 
I got projects that I work on. And so in the background, I could totally have an anime on as I, as I work on those projects. So I should be doing that. And I will be doing that a whole lot more. I'll have a lot more. We got these sea Ganodermas. I wonder if Ganoderma is a type of sea critter. They're kind of anemone-like. Oh, that's what they appear to be. There's another conch over here. So I will find another conch. Oh, hello there, you. You look fun to play with. I'm going to play with you. I hope that's okay. Hello. Hello. Oh, you are all powered up, aren't you? Man, you are so pleasant looking. Look at you. Look at you all pleasant and put together. Damn. Good for you. Good for you. I've uh, taken your shields down, so you are no match for me now. No match for the power of when Electro. 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 Come on. Come on, get that, get that next ability. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. And then Electro and Fire powers combine. By our powers combined, we take thee down. Hopefully. I try to take you down. I try to take you down real good. Can we get some fire on there? Can we get fire? Yeah! Perfect. Stuff like that is exactly why we have Sucrose on the team. That is the reason why. That and she's she's like my favorite character. I love Sucrose. Based off of the lore conversations I had with uh, Final Rhapsody earlier, I should really look deeper into the lore of this game. Like when I have like a good two or three hours just to read things, I should do that. I usually don't have the, the, I guess, what is it? The energy to be able to kind of go down that rabbit hole or do something that just feels like it doesn't have any particular... I feel like whenever I do something, it has to be toward something else. Like the, the other day, I was considering uh, making like, I don't know, I had this inspiration for a motor that this is going to sound like really weird and out there. But I had like this inspiration for a motivational video where you find random objects and write something, write some inspirational poem about it. And so I wrote an inspirational poem that lasted about a minute long about a highlighter. And I was like, the original idea was to write this, correct it, and then post it somewhere. And then thought, you know what? Bah. I'll just, I'll just keep it here. I'll just keep it as a literary experience that I was able to just kind of get my thoughts out on a page and work my brain a little bit. Work the creative part of my brain a little bit. It doesn't need to see the light of day. Astro's completely caught up with My Hero Academia. We're so caught up that you started reading the manga, and now you're caught up to that, and you're sad that the cha the chapter ends every Saturday, uh, every Sunday. Oh man, I try not to like. That's the thing, right? When I get so engrossed in an anime like that, like I, I don't, it's it's rare that I ever get to that point. Uh, I think there was only one anime that I completed the anime and then read most of the manga for, and that was an anime called uh, Parasite, which was really... I freaking loved that anime. My god, that got me in so many different ways. That's one of those animes where, it, like, it brings up the question of, like, what does it mean to be human and stuff like that? Or what does it mean to be alive and family and relationships and stuff like that? I was like, oh my god, this is deep. But anyway... The manga, the, the anime finished with the manga. The manga's got most of, I think the manga more or less, what's up with it? Hey, welcome. Welcome, Zailer01, welcome. Good to see y'all. Welcome to the little party we got going on here. We're playing some Genshin Impact and chatting about anime. If you're into it, feel free to join the conversation. I was just mentioning an anime that I watched called Parasite where these alien spores come down from the sky and they kind of take human they take over humans bodies and they like eat other humans and then uh, we've got astro we're, we're also kind of going with the uh, my hero academia as well and welcome to the party as well and when you join the party we put on party hats because what would a party be without party hats so i'm gonna put on the, the tiny one the tiny party hat is the one that's most close to me so i'm gonna go with that one it's tiny it's cute it's exciting i mean I mean, I, I feel rather excited about it. I get very excited for any reason to celebrate. But Astro's gotten, like, like half of that one. I was, like, at the time, as I was watching that, I was just kind of, like, I was, I was at a pretty low point, honestly, in my life. And I was like, this anime looks terrifying. I'm going to watch it. 
because I need something that le that'll let me feel. I want to be able to feel something, whether it's anger or sadness or anything. And so I watched that and more or less just felt very confused because I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. This sounds, this sounds terrible. And so, have you had hat break on stream yet? Hat break? Have I had, oh, have I had a hat break on stream yet? No, I actually haven't had any hats. I mean, the closest hat that I have that is kind of broken is um this little, I got this little hat here. It's got a little top hat on it. The top hat broke off of it. It was a worthy sacrifice. Have I watched Psycho Pass? Yes. Oh, I loved Psycho Pass. I most fondly remember the first season of Psycho Pass is one of those ones that I want to go back to because I know that there was a second season to it and I never paid it enough attention. Though Psycho Pass was an anime I watched back in the day. I am 23 years old now. I just finished college the other day. And back in high school, my buddies and I would go to my friend's house, which he lived like five minutes walk away from school. And so we would go to his house on various days of the week and watch anime together. And he was the guy who introduced me into anime. And one of the animes that we watched at the time was Psycho Pass Season 1. I watched Season 2 many years later and honestly didn't pay enough attention to it. So I, I plan on going back to that one. That one is kind of about... So there is a certain enforcement. There is, there's a, this is in a universe where basically whether you're likely to be... Whether you're a criminal or not can be summed up in a single number. And that's your Psycho Pass. Depending on your Psycho Pass you can be taken in and jailed because there is this there is this device that allows you to scan a person and be able to see what their psychopath is if your psychopath is i don't remember if a high number was bad or a low number was bad but if it's around a certain point you are deemed a danger to society and you will be taken into custody if um, if you're too much a danger to society, these little devices that allow you to kind of scan people, scan the psychopaths of a person, I believe they're called, uh, de de demonators? Or, it's something... De dominators? I think they're called dominators. I think the devices are called dominators. And they change form depending on... They change form depending on what how dangerous this person is. It can be in stun mode or it can be in literal melt this person's body mode. And it kind of goes it kind of goes deep into the ideas of like, you know, what does it mean to be a functioning member of society? How do we feel about these people who don't fit in per se? And how does the society how does the society um, deal with people like these? And there's also a point where you you get to a point where it's like for for those who how did it, how is the psychopath even determined? What is it what is it like for those who are now deemed unfit for society? It goes very into deep into stuff like that. Is it like a version of Minority Report? I don't know what Minority Report is actually, so I I wouldn't be able to make the comparison. But yes, I believe they're all called the Dominators. It's a oh yeah, sick show, absolutely sick show. But if you're into that sort of stuff. It is totally worth it. I would say, like, if you're not, if you're unsure whether you want to get into that type of stuff, I'd say, like, Psycho Pass is definitely a good show to start off with. For sure, I think. I think that's a pretty good one for that. Um, I don't think Parasite's a good, like, gateway show for that. I don't think. Can someone lower or raise their number? Yes, there are definitely points in the show where the Psycho Pass can change. Sometimes change while you're scanning them. You scan them once and it's one psychopath. You scan them another, it's a completely different psychopath. Which is a very important plot point later on. Psychopath, Blue Exorcist? Blue Exorcist was a nice one. That was another one that I watched many years ago. I think that was during a time where I really wasn't going to this, uh, like this film Friday we called it at the time. So I think I only watched about half of it. Another one. It's on my list of things to watch. I think I was just watching... I, I was trying to find an anime to watch the other day. And I kind of, I kind of, I watched through, I'm almost done re-watching Noragami because I forgot what it was about. It's okay, not really into it. I want to go back and re-watch Blue Exorcist as well because I believe there was also a second season that came out for that one as well. And I never watched that one. I didn't watch that one. That was during a time when we were all kind of watching shows that vaguely related to the devil and Satan. So of course you had, you had Blue Exorcist on there. You had Devil as a Part-Timer on there. Was, devil as a Part-Timer is great. Imagine if Satan himself worked at McDonald's. That's basically the show. It's great. Love that. I think that also got a second season too, which I haven't yet to watch. I'm excited about that one. 
Psychopath, uh, can it be faked? Can the psychopath be faked? So, yes. Yes, it can be. But I won't go into the details how it's faked. But yes, psychopaths can absolutely be faked. But I think that I think that's something they get to a little deeper in the show. Basically, there is a point where you gotta wonder. It's 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 a show, right? So there must be plot, and if there's plot, there must be conflict. And for conflict, there's usually an antagonist. Eventually, you meet. There are many antagonists. When you have dangers of society, you'll find many different types of antagonists. And there is at least one in particular where the whole this structure, like this, so like the psychopath kind of scans a person and fits them into a framework and then assigns a number based off of where where they fit into that framework what if you found an what if you find an outlier what if you find somebody who is unlike anybody else then you gotta wonder where do they fit in this framework how, how, can they take control of it i don't know something you have to find out by watching psychopaths is a cool one it's all a part of the plot i know exactly it's a good one it's a really really good one if I if I remember correctly, I think Psychopath season one was a whole lot more um, I think enthralling for me. I think Psychopath season two I kind of kind of like dropped off a little. I think if I'm remembering correctly, though my memory has been failing me as to thinking about animes that I watched any longer than two years ago. And that's because like I think the reason why my memory works that way is because I don't usually just watch anime. I am usually also doing something else at the same time, whether it be drawing, doing homework. Uh, I don't usually watch multiple animes at this, like, simultaneously at the same time. Anna's older brother does that. I don't know how he does that. Kudos to him for being able to do that. So you can essentially fake it out by changing the way you feel about something just in that moment. It's, um, if feeling, if, it, it depends on what you mean by feeling. If you consider all of feeling to be all up in the brain which because like i mean what is what is feeling without our brain to interpret to, to interpret how we are experiencing the world around you in that case to answer your question succinctly yes but then again like you know it kind of goes in the it's it's a very it's um it, this is this is a word that i've been seeing a lot because like and netflix now has a category to categorize shows as cerebral and i take cerebral to mean it makes you wonder. It makes you think. And I would consider Psychopaths to be a cerebral show in the sense that it really makes you think about the mind. It kind of goes the whole, like, you know, what what is what is kind of... I mean, this is probably not Psychopaths. For this is kind of getting a little farther than what Psychopaths covers, but, like, the idea of, like, what is a consciousness? What is our personality? And what is... I think Psychopaths more goes into what is social structure. And how do you determine what social structure is? More so than the question of, like, what is the human mind and all that stuff. But, uh, oh, it's a good one. It's a good one, if not for the reason that I'm still talking about it. Despite the fact that I don't exactly remember everything that happened in the show. But I would distinctly remember enjoying it. But that was also at a time where I didn't start questioning things so much, so. I, I think about things a whole hell of a lot more in recent years than I did back then. Now the thinking is, uh... Thinking feels like it thinking almost feels like a chore. Which is why every once in a while, I just gotta chillax and not think about things. And sometimes I can do that, and sometimes I can't. You don't have to give it a watch. You know you used to be on still on Netflix. I wanna say it's still on Netflix. Um But it could be wrong about that. Um if not, probably on Hulu. I'm guessing. Or uh Crunchyroll, probably. You can get ads on there. I I um I know like I I'm the kind of guy and I've said most multiple times like if if you're going to if you're going to if you're going to experience something by like some creator then you want to give credit where credit is due pay for the proper services pay for the proper royalties if you're using somebody's music make sure you get their permission and stuff like that um this does not really I don't feel that way about anime so there's a site that I go to called watchcartoononline.io which I get if if it's not like if it's on a streaming service I will watch it there but if it's not on there i will go i will go find it elsewhere because if i really want to watch an anime i am not going to let a paywall stop me from watching my anime because really if i if i can't and even if i can't find an avenue to watch it i will just be like okay whatever i'll just i'll just watch something else then i'll watch a real person show 
Can you imagine? But like, yeah. I like that one. I know they, um, I know, I think Watch Cartoon Online, uh, recently went through, uh, I think a domain change. But I, I definitely use that one a lot. I think the other one that was most prominent, at least when, uh, for my purposes of illegally finding and watching anime. Shh. You didn't hear it from me. But uh, I think Kiss Anime is a good one as well. I don't usually watch that because I, I only go there if I feel like I can't find it on the first one. If I can't find it on the first one, I will go to the second one. And usually I can find it on the first one. So I usually don't have a very hard time with that. Uh, where are you, Bubbles? Bubble. 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 Where are the other Bubbles? Where'd you go, Bubbles? Hello? Where are the other Bubbles at? Uh, oh, oh, there you are. Oh, I see you there. There we go. Gotcha. And then, is there... Oh, there you are. Hi there. Gotcha. That was, that was confusing for a hot second there. Primo gems! Nice! The things that I collect in this, by the way, are called Primo gems. And you can use them that I was mentioning before that this is a gotcha game, so you roll the dice, you see what you get, you can get weapons, you can get artifacts, you can get characters. I, I love the characters because I can I can use them, I can feel them, I can relate to them. But you use these primo gems as a way that that's kind of like the currency to be able to roll these things again. And there's different types of currencies, some that you can play for, some that you can pay for, but I don't usually I don't usually use those ones. But yeah. I'm going to switch back to my party over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the rest of the event stuff for now, where I'm currently at. And then I am going to call it for the day because, well, I've been playing for like four hours now. And I think it's time. I think it's time for a fulfilling lunch and move on. The in-game currency. You're absolutely right about that. One of the in-game currencies. There are there are many. I'll, I'll show you. There's um, the Primo gems are little stars in the top right. Not the one with zero. The one with the 1600 right now uh the other one is intertwined fate technically you technically you exchange like if if the primo gems are my cash then the intertwined fates are the actual tokens you put into the machine and there's different types of fate as well there's also that one uh there's also ones in the bottom left corner as well you kind of get those you kind of get those with um when you get duplicates you kind of get those when you it's like a complimentary prize like when you get something from the from the gotcha machine you get like raffle tickets with it too that's kind of the stuff in the bottom left corner of the screen do all these people got wings not all the people got wings i mean so 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 uh the wings are like it's an invention from one of the cities so you can all like everybody's got the ability to glide but that's about it not everybody has the ability to fly nobody has the ability to fly some people have the ability to to jump up in the air and like levitate or create wind currents it's really it's creating wind currents and then you ride those wind currents to go up into the air or some of them have the ability to create an elevator out of a flower it's interesting i don't have one of those characters yet or other otherwise i'd showcase it now i'm gonna check a look at this event thing over here um i see stellar reunion interesting passage of time check reunion rewards i can get some of those yeah i don't know what that means homeward path I'll get that. I'll get that too. Awesome. Blossom of Wealth. Pretty cool. I don't know what any of this is. Midsummer Island Adventure. Uh, whoops. Clicked the wrong button. What's, what else we got? Midsummer thing. I think I did that. Event details. Pretty sure I did that already. Consumption! Oh my god. That felt so good. Dude. Before I reached the, the status of affiliate, I had really wondered... I had wondered why the heck... There's a consume. There's like a there's a hydrate option on people's channels like everywhere, and then it came as the default, and I was just like, I don't know what the purpose of this is. Why would I forget to drink water? You get so enthralled in what's going on over here and what's going on over there and what's going on over here, and then by that I mean game and chat and OBS and things running that you like forget to to hydrate yourself. And it feels so good to drink water when your body needs it. Like, you don't know. You don't know until you feel it how much your body needed that water. At least, I think. And so, it is always very much appreciated. Also, it's fun to consume. And for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Got some more premium gems from that. Go back here. Um, Echoing Tales. Um, if I collect 32 of them... 
then that will be that. Conch Retrospection. Oh, look at this. Oh, I need... Oh, I can re-listen to the conches again. I see. Cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, that's good to know. Might as well take all those things out of the way. I don't like notification dots. They're annoying. Car rewards? Oh, sweet! Gotcha. And gotcha. And gotcha. And got you. I've collected 17, I think, so far. Yes! Awesome. And apparently I get a new outfit for Barbara after that. That's pretty cool. That's all right. Awesome. All right. Well, that's that's it for me today. I'm going to collect this achievement over here. Apparently there's another achievement to claim. If I don't claim them now, I will never claim them. I'll be, just wind up forgetting it. So, uh, yeah. That's all, that's all I got over here, folks. It's been a while since I've played Genshin, but I'll try to play a little bit more of it because I do rather enjoy this, and there's new stuff to discover, and I always am a fan of discovering new things, especially with the people who can teach me the way. I like it when people are able to teach me the way. That's always a very, very good thing. In any case, thank you all for coming along. I believe my buddy Lycos Lore is on right now. Yes, he is. He is currently playing Subnautica Below Zero, so I'm going to pass the baton over to this guy who's, I hope, doing very, very wonderful today. A very good buddy of mine, like us, Lord. Love that man! Anyway, I want to thank everybody so much for coming along. It's been a blast. Genshin time is always fun time, but I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Night, evening, twilight, midnight, sunrise, morning, midday, evening, sun sunset, dusk or twilight. I have a list now, so I don't forget the times of the days that are possible. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy that very much so. In any case, bye-bye for now, y'all. Party on. Until next time. Bye!